Hi, it's Melissa, and I am here with The Groom. It's a reality TV sweet romance that was inspired by some of my favorite reality TV shows that I used to watch, like Amazing Race and The Bachelor, The Bachelorette. So this is kind of, I took my favorite parts of each and I made my own show called Cash Around the Globe. And I paired two people who had met in one show and now are on a second. So I hope you like this romance called The Groom and happy listening. Bye. The Groom. A Keeper at Heart Romance, Book One. Written by Melissa McClone. Text copyright 2020 by Melissa McClone. Production copyright 2023 by Melissa McClone. For Tom, McKenna, Finn, and Rose. Special thanks to Colin Goldstein, Michael Lemming, PortlandHikers.com, Terry Reed, Tiffany Talbot, and Virginia Cantra. Prologue. Two more minutes, Millie. Oh, boy. Millie Kincaid shivered. It was almost time. She glanced at the gilded framed full-length mirror hanging on the wall of an opulent mansion in Pacific Palisades, California. She barely recognized her reflection. The curly updo, the professionally applied makeup, and the elegant gown made her look like a princess, not a schoolteacher, from a small town in central Oregon. She felt a little like Cinderella. Not that Millie needed an invitation to the ball to find her prince charming. She'd already found him on a reality television show, no less. Her heart beat faster. She just had to get through the final episode tonight when the groom, Jace Westfall, a money manager from Philadelphia with his own company, would pick his bride. An aviary's worth of butterflies fluttered in Millie's stomach. She couldn't believe she'd made it to the finale. She'd only attended the audition, so a co-worker wouldn't have to go alone and never expected to be chosen as a contestant. Her father, a successful motivational speaker, who didn't think she was living up to her potential, told her she wasn't ready for a show like this, and she'd wondered if he were right. Until meeting the handsome groom and falling for him. Despite the certainty she'd found the one, she wasn't expecting an engagement ring after only knowing each other a few weeks. What she wanted was time alone with him, away from the cameras, crew, and other contestants. How would they get along when it was only the two of them? Her head told Millie, counting on forever was nothing more than a teenage fantasy. Yet, she couldn't help believing she'd glimpsed her future in his eyes. Millie? Avery, a young production assistant, adjusted her headset. Are you ready? Yes. Millie stepped over cables running along the inlaid wood floor, teetering on the crystal-encrusted high heels they'd given her to wear and ignored the bright lights and cameras focused on her. She straightened. I'm ready. Grinning, Avery clutched a clipboard to her chest. You look so beautiful. Just wait until Jay sees you. He'll love you. Millie hoped so. I never thought I'd find someone like you on this show. Jace's words, murmured in her ear after a goodnight kiss, sent anticipation rippling through her. Well, he knows the real me. Jay saw beyond Mousy Millie, the nickname given by her father when she was an awkward, shy teenager, to the woman she really was inside. Jace asked questions about her job as a special education teacher and listened to her answers. He wanted to know her thoughts, her opinions, her dreams. He talked with her, not at her. As joy overflowed, Millie motioned to her fancy hair and beautiful dress. The rest is window dressing. That's why you were selected as the viewer's bride choice on the show's website. You and Jace are the perfect couple. Right up there with the ultimate reality couples, Trista and Ryan, Amber and Rob and Molly and Jason. Avery sighed. And you are beautiful. So accept the compliment and say thank you. Millie's cheeks warmed. Thank you. She appreciated Avery's kind words, but she couldn't help wondering how stunning her competition, Desiree Delacroix, a mortgage broker from New York, would look. The other bride finalist exuded strength, confidence, and raw sex appeal. If she wanted a new job, she would be the perfect social media influencer. 
Desiree had no problem wearing a string bikini or only a towel in front of Jace and the cameras. Millie would rather face an entire class of kids sick with the stomach flu than wear a swimsuit on television. She'd chosen Whistler, B.C., as her final date destination instead of Cancun, Mexico, to avoid wearing skimpy clothing. Two women couldn't have seemed more different, yet they shared a love of children, a belief in the institution of marriage, and an attraction to Jace Westfall. Thinking about their similarities and differences made Millie squirm. As if someone had hit the mute button, the set went quiet. Avery touched her earpiece. It's time. Millie's nerve endings sprang to life. Excitement surged. She couldn't wait to see Jace. She walked through the mansion, accustomed by now, to ignoring the equipment, the cameras, and the crew. The show's host, who also worked on the network's nightly entertainment news show, gave her the thumbs up. He'd interviewed her when she first arrived. Now only she and Jace would be there. Oh, and the cameras. Rounding the corner to the final set, she saw him standing on a balcony with hundreds of flowers. Her stomach fluttered. Jace wore a black tuxedo with a red rose boutonniere pinned on his lapel. He seemed taller, almost larger than life, all dressed up and his light brown hair neatly styled. This was how he would look on his wedding day. She sucked in a breath. His eyes widened when he saw her. Oh. He looked almost, scared. Her heart went out to him. This was a big moment for both of them. Millie fought the urge to run and reassure him the way he had that first night on the show when the world of reality TV had threatened to overwhelm her. But before she reached him, he smiled. At her. Suddenly, all was right in the world. In Millie's world. The backdrop of the Pacific Ocean stretching to the horizon brought out the blue in Jace's eyes. If they had children, would their babies have his eye color or would they be green like hers? Maybe hazel? No, she was getting ahead of herself. But that was part of his appeal. He might be strong and solid, but he also made her loosen up and want to take chances. When Jace was around, her dreams became possible. She loved that about him. If they had children someday, Millie hoped the kids inherited Jace's smile. She loved his wide, easy grin. Not to mention the determined set of his jaw and the little bump on the center of his nose. He was so handsome, so supportive, so caring. And he was also a family man. He loved his family so much. He'd mentioned to her how close they were. Relatives worked for his firm, and he even supported his mother. So kind. So sweet. Contentment coursed through Millie. The way his gaze never left hers made her feel cherished and adored. She seemed to float, even though she knew that was physically impossible. Unless a fairy godmother had waved a magic wand. Maybe one had. The balcony defined romance, with the elegant flowers and flickering candles everywhere. Music, Pachelbel's Canon in D, played from hidden speakers, while waves crashed against the shore below. A breeze ruffled Jace's hair. A strand fell forward across his forehead, making him seem appealingly real and approachable. Even though the killer setting was as carefully contrived as her appearance tonight, Millie found herself caught up in the mood. The moment. The magic. She moved toward him. The scent of roses, her favorite flower, wafted in the air. She caught a scent of salt, too, blowing off the ocean. Millie wanted to etch every detail on her brain so she wouldn't forget anything. Of course she could watch the scene over and over again. That was one good point of the show, a visual recording of their falling in love. Millie stopped in front of him. Hi. Hi, Freckles. His appreciative gaze started at the top of her head and went down to the tips of her oh-so-out-of-her-budget slingbacks. Though I don't see many freckles tonight. You look amazing. Okay, relenting and allowing the production staff to do her hair, makeup, and clothing for tonight's show had been a good thing. She enjoyed looking and feeling like a princess. Millie wiggled her toes. Stunning, he added. His words wrapped around her heart like a warm hug. Thanks, she said. 
you, too. Gorgeous. I mean, handsome. Millie. Smiling, he reached toward her and his large hands engulfed hers. My sweet Millie. This was it. Her pulse quickened. She wanted to hear him say that he chose her. That he wanted her. Being with you has made these past few weeks fly by. His warm voice, his words, resonated with her. You always had an encouraging word or a smile for me. I don't know how I would have made it through without you. Me, either. We had so much fun together. Remembering all the good times, Millie nodded. Those were only the beginning. They had a lifetime of memories to create together. A lifetime. She nearly sighed. He looked at their linked hands. You became my confidant, my counselor, my good friend. I'll always value our friendship. Friendship? Anxiety spurted through Millie. Okay, don't overreact. A relationship, not to mention marriage, needed a strong foundation that friendship provided. Jay squeezed her hands. The action gave her no comfort. Zero reassurance. She needed him to say she was his choice. His gaze returned to hers. But you deserve someone better than me, Millie. Oh, no. He can't be serious. She searched his face for a sign to contradict his words, but found nothing except for a fleeting look of regret in his eyes. A vice gripped her heart. She couldn't breathe. You need someone who will love you the way you should be loved. Someone who can take care of you the right way. Jace said the words as if he were doing this for her own good. He let go of her hand. I can't do that. I just, can't. Too many people count on me already. Millie heard a gasp. She wasn't sure if it came from her or one of the crew. It didn't matter. She wanted to run away, but her feet remained cemented to the balcony. She opened her mouth to speak, but closed it. What was she going to say? I can't do that. His words reverberated through her body. Her eyes stung, but she was too numb to know if she was crying or not. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Jay said, his eyes dark. I never wanted to do that, Millie. But with my family situation, Desiree is the better choice. But I really do, like you. Like. Not love. He didn't love her. He didn't want her. The truth hit fast and hard, like a javelin aimed right at her heart. Millie wrapped her arms around her stomach, trying to quell a rush of nausea. Jace had never said he loved her. She'd known he'd kissed Desiree, too, but Millie had thought. She'd believed. She had been wrong. About every moment they'd spent together. About every kiss they'd shared. About everything she thought she knew about Jace Westfall. She had been duped. Used. Dumped. And she'd merrily gone along. Innocent. Naive. Stupid. Millie turned away from Jace. She forced her feet to walk off the romantic set. Ignoring the cameras focused on her, she hoped someday to forget the looks of pity on the crew's faces. Never again. Millie left the mansion and stepped into an idling limousine. She would never let someone do this to her again. Chapter 1 One year later. Hadn't Millie learned her lesson the first time? Standing on the granite plaza of San Francisco's Union Square with the statue of the goddess Victory looming over her, Millie couldn't believe she was doing this again. She shifted from foot to foot, trying to tamp down her nervousness. She needed to pay attention to Pete Kenner, producer of Cash Around the Globe, the reality TV show she'd agreed to appear on. Appear? That was what the casting director had called her being a contestant, but if things went Millie's way, she would spend the next 30 days racing around the world with a cameraman and sound guy at her side. Anxiety crept down her spine. If by some miracle you're not eliminated right away, you know they'll want you to jump out of an airplane or climb a mountain. Neither of which you have the courage to do. Her father's words rushed back. 
He'd called her a coward, saying she was too soft and introverted to compete, let alone win. What if he was right? You can only use the credit card for air travel. We'll provide food in between and after each leg of the competition, Pete explained. With his coiffed blonde hair, tanned skin, and smart clothing, he looked more like a fashion model than the head honcho for the network's most promising new show. You will purchase tickets for yourself and your camera crew. You must remain with them at all times, 24-7. Attached at the hip. Unless you're in the restroom or shower. Did rain showers count? Mist pelted her cheeks, the dreary June weather adding to her growing apprehension. Doubts surfaced. Her father had predicted she would be the first one eliminated. She could easily make as big a fool of herself on this show as on. Stop. Think positive. Be confident. She could do this. Millie would prove her dad wrong. So what if she had vowed never to step in front of another television camera again? After the season finale of the show she didn't mention, offers had poured in for her to do public appearances, commercials, and to be the star of The Bride. Her fan base had been nothing but supportive and wanted more of her, but Millie had turned everything down. That was, until someone made an offer she couldn't refuse. For the next 30 days, no one could call her unless it was an emergency. No one could remind her of what happened a year ago. No one could ask if her broken heart had healed. Face it, the idea of being secluded and seeing the world appealed to her in a way she'd never imagined. Her travels would provide interesting tidbits and stories to share with her students. Plus, she couldn't deny how much was at stake. The prize money had pushed her to say yes. Millie wasn't a reality TV contestant junkie. She was only doing the show to help her students at Two Rivers Elementary School. Whatever money she won would go directly to her school to keep upcoming budget cuts from affecting the students. The show's participation fee would save the after-school track and field program she'd founded and coached for special needs students. That alone made up for whatever she faced over the next month. And if she kept saying the words, she might come to believe them. As Millie zipped her fleece-lined blue windbreaker to the top, she tried to remember her cameraman's name. Zach? Zeke? And her sound guy? Ron? Maybe Ryan? Names usually stuck with her, but right now her mind was as blank as a chalkboard on the last day of school. Not a good thing when the two guys would film and record everything she said and did. Bathroom breaks won't give us much privacy, an older woman said. Her jacket resembled Millie's except for the orange color. Each contestant had been assigned a color and given clothes to wear during the race. Even their backpacks, lying on the other side of Union Square, coordinated to their colors. Pete's bright white teeth contrasted with his dark tan. There's no such thing as privacy on a reality television show. Millie caught herself nodding. Even if she was the only former reality TV contestant, she didn't want to appear to be a know-it-all. A passing car honked its horn. Men in three-piece suits and women in raincoats stared at the lights and cameras. A construction worker yelled, asking if they were filming the new season of The Amazing Race. No. Oh, no. She wouldn't want to be on that show. Relying on a partner, a teammate, to win or lose didn't appeal to Millie in the slightest. Cash around the globe would be different. Better. Or she would never have agreed to do it. Any questions? When no one spoke up, Pete clapped his hands. Let's get this show on the road. Millie took a deep breath, the cold June air chilling her lungs. Goosebumps prickled her arms and legs. A red light glowed on the cameras. Showtime. She pasted on a smile, resigning herself to the role she would play until she was eliminated from the race or crossed the finish line. Colt Stewart, with war correspondent good looks and a charming smile, stepped forward. I'll be your host as you race around the globe. Are you ready for the adventure of a lifetime? Yes, Millie said along with the others. I didn't hear you, Colt said in a loud voice. Are you ready for the adventure of a lifetime? The contestants shouted a hearty, yes. 
Colt flashed an even wider toothpaste ad smile at a camera. Welcome to Cash Around the Globe. This is the most exciting, most adventurous, most dangerous race you'll see on television. You won't want to miss a single episode. By the time the show finished airing next season, her life would, she crossed her fingers, be back to normal. No more marriage proposals from strangers. No more early morning phone calls from talk show hosts. No more reality TV. She couldn't wait for the peace and quiet. Fame was something she'd never wanted. Unlike her father. Racers, prepare yourselves. Colt yelled. The contestants around Millie postured themselves for the best possible start. She did the same. A clanging rang out, the sound of a cable car bell. Ding. 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 Go. Colt shouted. Two guys, one in black, the other wearing green, sprinted to the line of backpacks. Millie ran after them, adrenaline rushing through her veins. She would not fall behind. Her last reality TV stint had driven out her softness. She wasn't the naive contestant she'd been. She was ready, more prepared, this time. Ten feet from her blue backpack, she noticed a round zippered pouch with a globe imprinted on the front. Inside, she found $50, a small key on a chain, and a clue card. Make your way to Coit Tower, Millie read, for the camera's sake. You must travel via public transportation. Look for the green and blue flag. There you will find your next clue and something to take with you on the race. Take with her? Her excitement swelled. A GPS unit would be great. Useful. Millie reread the clue. Coit Tower? She'd never been to San Francisco, but had heard of the landmark. Heart pounding, she surveyed the surrounding buildings. High end department stores, boutiques, and hotels. She saw a uniformed security guard and ran to him. Could you please tell me where to catch the bus to Coit Tower? The guard led her to the bus stop. Take the 30 or 45. Grab a transfer ticket when you board. Get off at Washington Square. Take the 39 to the top of Telegraph Hill. You can walk, if you'd rather, but it's a steep climb. Thank you, she said as the 30 bus pulled to the curb with a squeal of brakes. The bus passed through Chinatown and North Beach, also known as Little Italy. At Washington Square, she transferred to bus number 39 and rode to the top of Telegraph Hill. She exited. The camera crew followed her. Tourists milled about the base of Coit Tower, snapping pictures. Not even the overcast skies detracted from the lovely view. Millie searched for a flag but came up empty. She hurried up the steps to the tower's entrance. Inside the circular lobby, she found colorful murals but no clue box. That meant she had to go up. Millie disliked, okay, hated, heights, but that didn't stop her from purchasing three tickets from the gift store. With the camera crew and two students from Brazil, she crammed into a small elevator. At the top, the doors opened. Everyone spilled out. She climbed a winding staircase to the upper viewing area. A breathtaking panoramic view of jutting skyscrapers greeted her through arched windows, but she stayed far away from the edge. For a moment, she felt very much like a small-town girl in the big city. And then Millie remembered, the race. Self-preservation kicked in. She located a blue and green banner flapping in the breeze. There's the clue box. A lock, however, kept her from opening it. Good thing I have a key. Millie stuck her key in the hole, but the lock wouldn't open. She tried again. Why isn't this working? She peered closer. Two holes. Millie inserted her key in the other hole. No luck. Fear pulsed through her veins. If she couldn't open the box to get a clue, she would be eliminated. Over her dead body. Leaving the key in the lock, she examined the clue box. What am I missing? This, a male voice, said from behind her. She turned. A dangling silver key caught her attention. Millie focused on the man holding it. Jace Westfall. 
The air rushed from her lungs. No. He couldn't be here. With her. Now. Millie felt wobbly, off-kilter, as if she were standing on the top of a mountain or a tall tower which she was. She struggled to breathe but managed only a few gasps. Falling. That was all she could think about. She was going to fall. Fail. Again. Millie thought she had prepared for everything. But not for this. For him. What are you doing here? Her voice sounded ragged. Well, she felt ragged. But losing control would only give the show what they wanted. Drama. Obviously they had arranged for Jace to meet her here. He waved the key. Bet this opens the lock, freckles. Millie winced at his use of the endearment. She couldn't answer. She wanted nothing to do with him. If he were the last man on earth, she would gladly die a virgin. She gnawed on the inside of her mouth. A second cameraman, one she didn't recognize, moved closer. She wrapped her arms around her stomach. You okay? Jace asked quietly with a quick, concerned look. Millie wished he'd stop pretending. His compassion was an act. He only cared about how the show portrayed him. She wouldn't be taken in by his good looks and charm again. Yes, she might have been heartbroken the night of the groom finale, but she'd quickly realized everyone had gotten carried away on the show. Nothing, not even her feelings, had been real. I'm fine. She stared at his jacket and his pants. They matched the ones she wore. Why would he be wearing? The answer hit her like a shot put to the head. The clue had said she would find something to take with her on the race. Jace wasn't only here to give her the key. Millie's heart dropped to her tennis shoes and kept going over 200 feet to the ground below. Splat. You're a contestant on Cash Around the Globe? He nodded once, his mouth tight. She cringed, feeling duped. Used. Manipulated. Again. Just seeing Jace once made her nauseous. She couldn't imagine seeing him day after day during the race. I can't believe you did this. You set me up. This wasn't my idea. Jace inserted his key and unlocked the clue box. The producer, Pete, mentioned game twists, but I never expected to see you again. Never wanted to see her again, he meant. She felt a familiar sting. I didn't expect you, either. The words rushed from her mouth. Millie didn't want him to think she played a part in this. She couldn't bear him to suspect she might still harbor feelings for him. I was hoping for a GPS unit. Maybe we're jumping to conclusions. Please, oh please, let them both be wrong. Maybe. He opened the box. There's only one clue pouch in there. So we're in last place, or... They sent racers to different locations. He finished the thought for her. Once she'd taken his ability to complete her sentences as a sign of how close they were, how much in tune. She knew better now. What does the clue say, she asked. Jace pulled out a card from the pouch. Congrats on teaming together to find your second clue. Working with each other will be the key to your continued success in the race. The two of you are now teammates known as the Blue Team, one of eight teams, competing for the cash. Using public transportation, make your way to the Marina Green to find your next clue. You don't want to come in last and go home empty-handed. So much, for maybe. Teammates, she said. A vein twitched at his neck. He nodded. Teammates. Just great. Twelve months later and Millie was right back where she started. Standing in front of Jace Westfall for the world to watch and critique. She bit back a sigh. Whining or moping wouldn't change anything. Unfortunately. So what do we do now, she asked. He consulted the clue. Find a bus. No, I meant, Millie struggled for words, aware of the cameras aimed at her face. She had to get over the intrusive cameras, the way she had on the groom, or she wouldn't survive long. 
At least the network hadn't discovered a way to tap into her mind and broadcast her innermost thoughts. No, they just edited her actions and words so everyone watching assumed they knew everything about her. What she thought, how she felt, who she loved. What do we do about, us, she asked. Jace's eyes were wary. What do you want to do? Quit. But she couldn't. So many children needed her to win this race. She thought about Bonnie, the petite girl with Down syndrome who loved princesses and running the hundred-yard dash, and Samuel, the gentle eight-year-old boy with autism who was also a math whiz and javelin thrower. Each of Millie's students was a special, precious gift. She had learned so much from them, more than she'd taught them. I guess, she straightened her shoulders, I want to win a million dollars. As she climbed down the steps to the elevator, she told herself it was only for 30 days. She could survive anything for a month. Even Jace Westfall. And then she never wanted to see him again. Chapter 2 What do we do about us? Millie's earnest question sliced through Jace's pretense of composure. He jabbed his finger at the elevator button. He only wished he knew. Competing on cash around the globe was supposed to save his company and his family from financial ruin, but now. Jace gazed down at Millie, who rested with her eyes closed against a mural-covered wall. He couldn't believe she was here, but he wasn't dreaming. Not with the subtle changes he couldn't have imagined if he'd tried. Though the ends of her hair still curled in familiar wisps, her trademark ponytail was longer. Her curves were all too visible in her warm-up suit, but she'd lost weight. Her eyes appeared to be a deeper green than before. Some things hadn't changed, like her freckles he'd always wanted to trace with his finger. A part of him was happy to see her. That wasn't good. I want to win a million dollars. He'd never expected to hear those words from sweet, adorable Millie. What was she doing here? Her father was loaded. She didn't need the money. Not the way Jace and his family did. The show's generous participation fee and the $1 million prize had overcome his reluctance to step in front of the camera and be humiliated again. Being on the groom hadn't worked out as he planned after he became the villain for choosing Desiree, but the ambitious independent mortgage broker had similar goals as him, to make as much money as possible after the finale. But with Millie involved, he was rethinking everything. Jace didn't like that. Once he made a decision, he stuck with it. Not her fault, he reminded himself. The sadness and betrayal in her eyes during their final scene still haunted him. A part of him wished he could have chosen her, but Jace knew it would have never worked. Not with a failing business and his mom and two sisters relying on him. He'd hated hurting Millie, but he would make the same decision again because he had no other choice. His family meant everything to him. Do you want some water? Jace asked. Millie's eyelids sprang open. Wounded green eyes stared at him. No. Thanks. I'm fine. Yeah, right. Less than an hour into the race, Millie looked like she'd dragged herself halfway around the globe. Her skewed backpack was ready to send her slender frame toppling over at any moment. She couldn't stand up straight. This race would chew her up and spit her out. He didn't want to see her hurt again. I'll carry your pack, he said. She adjusted the straps, straightening the backpack. I've got it. But she didn't. Not really. That put him in an awkward position. From the first day Jace had met Millie, he'd felt drawn to her. She was kind and insightful and smelled like grapefruit. But the more he got to know her, the more he realized how different their lives were. How different they were. Sure, Millie was an incredible woman, but she wanted more from a relationship than he could offer. Jace had looked at a future with her from every angle, because he'd wanted to see if it could work. In the end, she would never be happy when his life was in such turmoil, with his firm about to go under, and with his other obligations, he couldn't give her what she needed. He'd saved them both a lot of pain by not choosing her at the end of the groom. Still, he liked her and appreciated her wanting to win, but he had to be realistic. She, like his mother and sisters, was the kind of woman who needed to be coddled, cared for, and protected. 
he didn't want to take on vulnerable Millie, too. No, that wasn't right. A part of him had wanted that. But he hadn't had the luxury a year ago, and his situation hadn't changed since then. He would do well to remember that for the next 30 days. Maybe the producers had paired opposites to see if they would get along or not. He could only imagine how this twist would be used once filming finished. Hit reality television shows happened in the editing room. He'd learned that lesson on the groom and wasn't about to make the same mistakes again. That was why Jace wanted, needed, a different partner. He needed a teammate who would meet challenges head-on, never give up, and do whatever it took to win the million-dollar first prize. Jace couldn't afford to lose. He stabbed the down button again. What's with the delay? It hasn't been that long, she murmured. As if on cue, the elevator doors opened. He and Millie entered, followed by the two camera crews. The doors closed, making it a tight fit with the backpacks and production gear, and they descended. Tension filled the static air. Darting glances, unspoken words, an uncertain future. The first two things didn't bother Jace, but the third needed to be dealt with. Now, you know, Freckles, the show will be challenging, he said, mindful of the camera's mere inches from them. You can stop if you think the race will be too much for you. I can handle it, Millie said as if she were discussing a parent-teacher conference and not a race around the world. The clue said working with each other was the key to success. Success wouldn't cut it. Jace had to win. His struggling money management firm needed another influx of cash to keep paying salaries. Things would get better if he could just make it through this rough spot. Not that he had a choice, but to make things work. His family relied on him for their paychecks and pretty much everything else. He wouldn't let them down. I came here to win. She raised her chin. So did I. I won't lose. Neither will I. She still didn't get it. He had to make her understand. Who was he kidding? He needed her to quit. I trained for this. He'd trained as if his life depended on this race. In a way, it did. If he lost and his company went under, his loved ones would pay the price and find themselves unemployed. Success at any cost. That was his motto. Trained hard. So did I. She met his gaze dead on. This pack is lighter than the one I wore when I trained. You wore a backpack when you trained, he asked. Of course, didn't you? Yes, but, he hadn't assumed she would take this so seriously. You said you weren't very organized. Let's get something straight, Jace, she said. I didn't enter this race expecting to be teamed with someone, but I didn't enter to lose, either. I plan to give 110%. I expect the same from my teammate. That's you. Seeing her determination stirred something inside Jace. He'd never thought of Millie Kincaid as competitive. Her words, full of strength and fire, surprised him. Intrigued him. Turned him on. Maybe he'd missed seeing that part of her when they were on the groom. Maybe he'd better forget about that part of her altogether. Maybe this was the time to remember why he hadn't chosen her to be his bride. Jace might still be drawn to Millie, but he wasn't about to put his foot in that trap again. She expected a white picket fence future with 2.3 children, a dog, a cat, and a minivan parked in the driveway. He wasn't the guy to give her all that. He would only end up disappointing and hurting her. Again. Millie pursed her pink lips, accentuating their fullness. So, what do you say? He'd forgotten the question, but he remembered the first time he'd kissed her. A soft, gentle kiss full of promise during a moonlit walk along the beach. He thought the darkness would give them a rare moment of privacy, but watching the show when it aired, he realized the cameras had caught everything. The way they were doing now. Jace? Her voice rose. You can't rely only on your charm this time. Are you willing to give 110%? Yes. He might have deserved her jab, but he sure didn't appreciate it. As long as you won't be distracted. Distracted? Her forehead creased. By what? Her clear green gaze made him shift uncomfortably. 
he was the distracted one. Bye, you know. What happened before? We need to focus on the race to win. I'm focused. She tugged her backpack straps. You're the one who keeps bringing up the past. He cleared his throat. She was right. Let's come up with a strategy, then. What was your strategy before, she asked. Every man for himself, he admitted. Amend that, or we won't get far. She bit her lower lip. I have a game plan we can use. You? Yes, me. Millie drew her brows together. He could imagine her looking like that when she stood in front of the chalkboard to teach her students. Too much is at stake to shoot from the hip. The elevator stopped. What's your plan? he asked. The doors opened, and the camera crews poured out. Run, don't walk, she explained. And whatever we do, never look back. Chase could handle that. Works for me. Chapter 3 Remember the game plan. All Millie had to do was run. Easier said than done, she realized, two blocks from the bus stop at the intersection of Chestnut and Fillmore. Her tennis shoes pounded against the hard pavement as she tried to keep up with Jace, who ran twenty feet ahead of her. He glanced back. Come on. Right behind you. Thank goodness the trendy marina district was pancake flat with rows of well-kept houses, garages on the first floor, and wide, treeless streets. Don't worry about me. She could worry enough for both of them. Running on her school's track was easier than a cement sidewalk in the city, especially with garbage cans in the way, cars pulling out of driveways, a camera crew capturing every jarring step, and her teammate, Jace Westfall, telling her to pick up the pace. You can always stop if you think the race will be too much for you. Millie inhaled sharply, the salty air filling her thirsty lungs. No doubt Jace's words would provide the show a perfect sound bite. Had he said that for her, or for the camera, or both? Not that it mattered. Even if she wanted to quit, she couldn't. Her kids needed her to race. To win. She pushed herself forward, focusing on Jace. She'd had an uninterrupted view of his backside since they leaped off the bus, and he'd been increasing his lead with his long, powerful stride and fluid motion. Any living, breathing female would appreciate how well his warm-up pants fit in all the right places. Millie only wished she hadn't noticed. Be careful, he called over his shoulder. Obstacle ahead. What was she doing leering at him? He was simply her teammate for the duration of the race. Thinking about him in any other way would complicate matters. Millie focused on a thirty-something blonde woman pushing a high-tech stroller toward her. I see them. As he maneuvered between the pair on the sidewalk and a garbage can at the curb, the woman with the baby smiled at him and flipped her hair behind her shoulder. Unbelievable. Even moms weren't immune to Jace Westfall's charms. Millie lengthened her stride to pass the stroller and finally, finally, caught up with him. Running next to Jace, or better yet ahead of him, would be preferable to staying behind him. The cameraman and audio guy ran alongside them. She didn't know how they kept up with the heavy gear. You're doing great, Freckles. He didn't sound the least bit winded. Thanks. She snuck a peek at him. He appeared unaffected by the running or the race or the camera focused on them. Do you think it's much farther? The bus driver said if we stayed on Fillmore Street we couldn't miss the Marina Green. He glanced her way. Why don't we stop for water? She pressed her lips together. Even though she'd love a sip, she didn't need him to make allowances for her. No way would she be the weak link on their team. She was tough enough, smart enough, and determined enough to handle anything cash around the globe threw at her. Including Jace. I'm fine. And Millie was. She just needed to remain focused. So what if her entire world had done a 180, and she felt as if she'd stepped into an opposite town where no meant yes and full meant empty? She could, and would, do this. We can get a drink once we find the clue. If you're sure. I am. A sound caught her attention. I hear a foghorn. 
We must be close. Give me your pack. She ran faster. I've got it. I don't mind. I do. As the sounds of traffic grew louder, Millie sped up. Doing so wasn't easy. A heaviness pressed against her. Not from the forty-pound weight strapped to her back, but from Jace's obvious lack of confidence in her abilities. She would show him. There it is, he said. Across a multi-lane street on a large expanse of green grass, a familiar-looking flag furled in the breeze. They'd found it. Thank goodness. I see it. Two other racers, both wearing black, approached the flag. Her relief vanished. There's another team. Jace took a step off the curb. A yellow car zipped dangerously close. She grabbed at his backpack as he jumped back on the sidewalk. He didn't notice. Frustration crossed his face. So close, yet so far. Close enough. Millie released the breath she hadn't realized she'd been holding. Beating one team isn't worth endangering your life for. Right, he agreed. No risking death unless we see two. Maybe she should have let him take his chances with the traffic. At least then, he couldn't say she'd held him back. Two teams? Okay, freckles. Make that three. The black team huddled over their clue. They ran to the parking lot bordering the water on the far side of the grass. Millie shifted her weight between her feet. We don't know how many teams are ahead of us. Or behind us. Jace's playful smile crinkled the corners of his eyes, softening the chiseled planes of his face. Tingles filled her stomach, the way they had during the groom, but the reaction had as much to do with his upbeat attitude as his grin. She could easily be sucked into the depths of his steady gaze. And a part of her wanted to allow that to happen. Not good. Not good at all. Millie looked into the rushing traffic to break the contact. She tapped her toe against the sidewalk, eager for the light to change. Distance. She needed distance. And a new teammate. Seriously, Jay said. All we have to do is catch up to the team ahead of us, and we'll be fine. Team? She squinted across the lanes of speeding vehicles to search for the black team and any others who had found the clue box but she saw only men playing ultimate frisbee and a dog walker being pulled by five dogs. Don't you mean teams? Think positive, Jace encouraged. Isn't that what your father would say? Millie's insides twisted. Uh, sure. Her father might say those words to an audience at a sold-out manifestation seminar or to a reader of one of his eight best-selling self-help books but Carl Kincaid would never say those words to his only child now that she was all grown up and a disappointment to him. Instead, her father would tell her to give up before she made a fool of herself and dragged their good name through the gossip rags again. He would tell her she was wasting her life teaching special needs students. He would list all the things keeping her from living up to her potential. Millie took a deep breath. How she viewed things was the only thing that mattered not her father. Not Jace. Besides, she'd told herself to think positive. No big deal. The traffic's green light changed to yellow. Jace stepped off the curb. As a florist van ran the red light, Millie held her breath. The walk sign flashed. He grabbed her elbow. Go, go, go. Millie jerked her arm free and sprinted. She crossed the multi-lane boulevard ahead of Jace. All of her energy focused on the flag and the clue box beneath it. The sense of salt and freshly mowed grass replaced the smell of exhaust from the street, but as the traffic picked up, she allowed herself a moment's relief. The light must have changed. Any teams behind them would be stuck for a few minutes. Good. Fueled by adrenaline, she beat Jace to the clue box and grabbed a pouch unless he let her get there first. Her spirits sagged. Five left, he said with satisfaction. She tugged at the zipper to find forty dollars, a twenty, a ten, and two fives, two maps, a credit card, and a clue. What? There are five pouches left. 
we're in third place. Not last. Thank goodness. Despite her training, her pep talks to herself, Millie could hardly believe it. Wow. We're doing great. She nodded. For now. Think positive, he reminded her. What does the card say? She tucked a loose strand of hair behind her ear. It's time to leave the beautiful city, by the bay, so make sure you take all your belongings with you, including your heart. You will find a car, parked nearby. Drive yourself, to the airport, San Francisco airport, and fly to Los Angeles, LAX, where another car is waiting for you. To locate your next clue, search among the cherry blossoms, for the irises, and the apples. Nearby? Jay spun around. That could mean anything. The black team went this way. Millie didn't want to waste a single second. Clutching the clue pouch, she ran to the parking lot, separating the marina green from the water. She found random cars in every make and color imaginable. He scanned the lot in the opposite direction. That doesn't mean they knew where they were going. No his lack of faith annoyed her. But they didn't come back. In the distance, she saw a large building with an American flag and pennant flying overhead. Closer was a small square building at the edge of the water, surrounded by a chain-link fence. And near it, the green and blue banner. Excited, she nudged his arm. There. Without waiting for him, she ran toward the flag and found six black Mercedes SUVs parked side by side. Good eyes, freckles. Jace opened the car door and grabbed keys from above the visor. He removed his backpack, popped the trunk, and dropped his pack inside. I'll take that. Jace tossed Millie's backpack into the trunk. You've got the clue. You navigate. Of course he would want to drive. Wordlessly, she climbed into the back seat. Her cameraman jumped into the passenger seat. The audio guy sat next to her. Jace's crew had said goodbye to them at Coit Tower. He started the engine. You buckled up? Millie fastened her seat belt. Yes. Here we go. As he backed out of the parking spot, she unfolded one of the maps from the clue pouch. She located the San Francisco International Airport. There are two ways to get there. They look about the same distance. The difference will be the traffic we hit. He drove past the building with the flags she'd noticed earlier. The St. Francis Yacht Club. Jace flicked on the blinker. Don't you want directions? she asked. The light changed. He turned left. I know the way. A familiar weight bore down on her. Then why did you ask me to navigate? A thick silence descended on the car as she waited for an answer. Not that she expected one. No, Jace had only been tossing her a bone, a meaningless task, to make her think she was part of this. Too bad, she hadn't let him walk into the yellow car's path. Tight-lipped, Millie followed their direction on the map, occupying her eyes and her hands while she controlled her heart and her emotions. Speaking her mind with the camera rolling wouldn't do anything except make her look like a fool on national television. Again. The car screeched to a stop. Traffic appeared gridlocked. Jay slapped the steering wheel. There must be construction. Or an accident. Millie focused on the map. Turn right. Why? What do you see? His tone was harsh, and his words were rushed. Right, she insisted. Here. At the last second, he turned. Left at the next light. She rattled off directions. A right. Another left. Straight. Jace's face grew increasingly tight, but he followed each direction until the car nosed onto Octavia Street. I know where we are, he blurted. This turns into US 101. Millie held up the map. I know. Great job. She refused to show the satisfaction his words gave her. Only doing my part for the team. Yeah, about that, his words trailed off. Look, Millie. A part of her wanted to avoid confrontation, the way she had during the groom, 
but look where that had gotten her. Because that's what we are. A team, she emphasized the last word. We're supposed to work together. That's the key to success, according to the clue. He glanced in the rearview mirror. Checking for traffic? Or looking at the camera? It's just. You want to win. I need to win. So do I, Jace. She stared at the car window, wondering how this would work or if it even could. So do I. Chapter 4 Sitting in the departure area at San Francisco Airport, Jace counted the cash left over after buying bottles of water and an L.A. guidebook at an airport shop. The money provided with each clue didn't last long. Too bad the show hadn't allowed them to bring their own credit cards and cell phones. Announcements followed one after another, barely audible over the din of the other passengers. A stream of business people, families, and flight crews rode a moving walkway to the many gates in the busy Terminal 3. He placed the money into the clue pouch. I don't see any of the other teams, Millie said, sitting next to him. The worry in her voice made Jace want to reassure her. So far, she'd done everything right. Keeping up with him, finding the car, and navigating their trip to the airport. Her abilities surprised him. He hadn't expected her to be so decisive. Instead, she'd been the better teammate. The realization angered him. If he wasn't careful, he would blow his chance to win. They're here somewhere, he said. Don't worry. Chase could do that himself. This race meant everything, yet he wasn't thinking fast enough. He'd made mistakes. When he stepped off the curb, that car had nearly taken him out. Time to get his act together before they got eliminated. But where, she asked. As Millie stood, Chase watched her. After they'd purchased tickets for the flight to LAX, she disappeared into the bathroom for a few minutes and reappeared with her ponytail redone, her lips glossed, and a t-shirt instead of a windbreaker. Lines creased her forehead. The black team should be at this gate. They might be eating lunch. She had lost weight, but she didn't look weak or soft with her defined arm muscles and flat ABS. He looked away, not wanting the camera to catch him ogling her. She was his teammate, nothing more. Something's wrong. She sat, curling the edge of the clue card. The flight boards in less than ten minutes. The black team and whatever team was ahead of them should be here. The next bank of LAX flights doesn't leave until one o'clock. This was the woman he remembered, the quiet and cautious Millie who had won the hearts of the American television audience with her sweetness and innocence but if she wasn't careful, she would psyche herself out of the race. He couldn't afford to let that happen. At least not until he was on top of his game. Stop worrying about the other teams, he said. We've got our boarding passes. That's all that matters. If they don't make it, we'll have almost an hour and a half lead on them. Unless they are in the air. She tapped her foot against the carpet. A Frontier flight departed at 10.20 and a United flight took off at 10.56. He ran the times in his head. No one could have gotten here that fast. The black team was only a few minutes ahead of us. Maybe they got stuck in the traffic jam or had car trouble. Maybe. He gave her hand a reassuring squeeze. Probably. She stared at their hands. Jace expected her to pull away from him, but she didn't, so he kept his hand on hers. The bustle, the noise, everything around them faded. Touching Millie felt so, good. He didn't want to let go of her. And then the camera guy moved. She slipped her hand away. Regret seeped through him and not only for losing her hand. She'd been ready to give him her heart when he... Stop. The past and strange emotions messed with his insides. Jace opened the guidebook. Talk about old school. An internet search would be so much easier. Any ideas where we should go? Millie asked. Not yet. Well, I don't care if we have to ask every single passenger, we have to know where we are going before we land. He stared at her in amazement. What? she asked. You look the same. Freckles, green eyes, hair pulled back in a ponytail. Same boring Millie? 
Not boring. But not the same, either. The difference surprised him. You've changed. I'm the same as I've always been. He shook his head. There's a different intensity. A competitiveness I've never seen before. You just didn't look hard enough. Hey, I looked plenty. But maybe not hard enough. Not that it mattered. Choosing Desiree had been the safest, the best, choice. For all of them. Until it wasn't. But now wasn't the time or place to think about his mistakes. Jace reached for the clue card, and Millie let him have it. Let's figure this out so we can nap on the flight. Cherry blossoms, irises, and apples. She pursed her full lips. The perfect pucker for kissing. Not that he cared. Or wanted to kiss her. Much. What do those three things have in common? She tapped her chin. They're plants. Good. He needed a task to keep from thinking about Millie. He flipped to the guidebook's index in the back. Maybe they want us to go to a farm or nursery. In Los Angeles? Probably not. Flowers and fruit. What about the farmer's market? That's a big tourist attraction in L.A. Her eyes darkened. Didn't you go there on a date with Desiree? Not Desiree, Charlotte. He didn't want to talk about it. Don't look back. Hadn't that meant Millie wanted to leave the past, especially the show, behind? Still, a secret part of him was flattered she remembered. That she'd cared enough to keep track of what he'd done. Oh, yeah. Millie's eyes twinkled mischievously. I remember Charlotte. Jace could guess what Millie remembered. Charlotte was a stereotypical ditzy blonde from Kalamazoo, Michigan, who preferred kissing to conversation because she could barely string two sentences together. You sent her home after that date. I did. Jace recalled the blonde's collagen enhanced pout when he sent her packing. I should have done it sooner. We were all surprised. Millie admitted. She was beautiful. You were all beautiful. But he'd had certain specifics he'd needed in a spouse. Charlotte had the looks, but not the brain. Desiree had the looks and brain, but not the heart. Only Millie. Not going there. That ship had sailed, and by the venom in her eyes, which was not like Millie, his chances with her had sailed, too. Think race. Think million dollars. He read the travel guide. The farmer's market is on the corner of Third and Fairfax. That's a good one. Millie reread the clue. Do you know what we need? What? She studied the gate area and pointed to an auburn haired woman in her early twenties, working on a laptop. The attractive woman wore a long brown skirt with slouched boots and a turquoise blouse. Her modified bob haircut looked trendy, not dated. Her. Why her? She typifies the groom's target audience, Millie explained. And chances are she's connected to the airport's Wi-Fi. Okay, they needed the internet, but if the woman had watched the show, Chase didn't want another viewer telling him how stupid his bride choice had been. That was all he'd heard since the finale aired, even from his own family. Talk about ironic. When Desiree broke up with him to pursue an acting career, the number of fans telling him via social media he should have picked Millie increased exponentially. What people didn't realize was, he knew picking Desiree had been a mistake, but picking Millie would have been worse. I don't know, Freckles. Trust me on this. Anticipation filled her eyes, and he felt torn. Please. Sure. He owed her this for her earlier efforts. Millie's smile lit up her face. Come on. She approached the woman as if she walked up to strangers to beg a favor every day of her life. Jace's respect inched upward. Excuse me, she said, in a non-threatening parent-teacher conference voice. My name is Millie. Do you have Wi-Fi? The woman glanced up from her laptop. Her mouth gaped. She snapped it closed. Millie. Jace. I don't believe this. I never missed an episode of The Groom. It's my favorite show. Yes. Target audience was dead on. He owed Millie a hug. 
Scratch that, a drink. That's great, Millie said. Isn't that great, Jace? Fantastic. It's nice to meet you. He shook the woman's hand. I'm Jace Westfall, and this is Millie Kincaid. Chelsea McKenna. Her blue eyes twinkled. I knew the thing with Desiree would never last. The two of you are meant to be together. At least Chelsea hadn't called him an idiot. Jace forced a grin. Well, we are together now. Millie glanced at him, a warning in her eyes. We were wondering. Hey, why are we being filmed? Chelsea peered around them to point at the film crew. Millie and I are on another show together. Wow. That's so cool. Chelsea brushed her fingers through her hair and smiled at the camera. It's like when Amber and Rob did The Amazing Race. Is that the show? We aren't allowed to tell you which show we're on, even if you guess the right one, Jace said. Oh, I understand. Chelsea looked at both of them and then back at the camera like a seasoned pro. Websites track spoilers for reality shows. I'm sure it would cause problems if everyone knows who won before the episodes air. Millie nodded. Hey, Chelsea glanced around. How come there aren't any other contestants here? That's what we want to know, Millie admitted. Don't worry, Chelsea said. You guys work too well together not to finish first. Jace put his arm around Millie. He'd forgotten how she fit perfectly against him. That's what I think, too. She jabbed him with her elbow, but he didn't let go. Instead, he held her tighter, closer. Their target viewer was obviously willing to help them. As long as Chelsea thought they were a couple. We're hoping to search for information to figure out where we should go next. Chelsea's purple painted fingernails flew across the keyboard with lightning speed. What do you want to search for? Jace read the clue card. Cherry blossoms, irises, apples, Los Angeles. The woman typed the words in. Okay, that was too easy. What did you find? Millie asked from under his arm. An entire page with links to the Los Angeles Art Center. She hit the return key. Two of the clues are paintings in the museum. Warm satisfaction settled over Jace. Millie had come through again. He gave her a squeeze. Do you need directions? Chelsea asked. He kind of enjoyed pretending to be a couple, but Millie kept pulling away from him. We'd love directions. If you don't mind, Millie added. Mind a handsome man asking for directions? Chelsea pulled a sheet of paper and pen from her laptop case. How did you get so lucky, Millie? She took a breath. I have no idea. Was he the only one who heard the sarcasm in her tone? Chelsea wrote the directions. Here you go. Millie clutched the paper as if it were the holy grail. He didn't blame her. The directions could save them from being sent home. Thank you so much for all your help. Yes, thank you, Chelsea, Jace said. For everything. The woman pulled out another piece of paper. Could I have your autographs? Jace reluctantly let go of Millie, jotted a quick note, and put his signature beneath it. That's the least we can do, isn't that right? Sure. Millie signed her name. Here you go. Thanks. Chelsea's high-voltage smile could power a city for the next three days. So when's the big date? He exchanged a confused glance with Millie. You mean for the show's premiere? No, Chelsea said. For your wedding. Chapter 5 What was Millie going to do? Wedged between Jace next to the aisle and an elderly woman by the window, she leaned her head against seat 12B. Two rows ahead, Zack leaned backward, panning the cabin with his camera. She closed her eyes to shut him out. Run, don't walk, she'd told Jace this morning. And whatever we do, never look back. Too bad her game plan had exploded in her face. Escaping the past, not looking back, wasn't possible. Not when being with him meant others would recognize them and bring up the groom. Bitterness coated her mouth. If only she hadn't asked Chelsea for help. 
But Millie had, breaking the rules she'd set and giving the show's producers a sound bite they could use for an entire season. For your wedding. She cringed. No matter how hard she raced, she couldn't run away from her past with Jace or her responsibility for what had happened on the show. Despite how awkward she felt today, she wasn't the same mousy Millie who had ducked attention in high school. Nor was she the shy Millie who kept her mouth shut during the groom. She needed to talk to Jace. To apologize for suggesting they ask Chelsea for help. She opened her eyes. But not with the camera crew watching them. Impatiently, she waited for the fasten seat belt sign to illuminate on the overhead panel. Once the camera crew strapped in, they couldn't film until the aircraft took off and reached cruising altitude. The light flashed on, but Zach continued facing backward and filming. Ryan kept popping up. Bummer. The plane backed away from the gate. The flight attendant walked down the aisle, pointing out the location of the oxygen masks to each row. When she noticed the camera, she stopped and appeared to argue. Grumbling, Zack turned around and bobbed out of sight. Thank goodness. Millie gripped the safety information card on her lap and leaned toward Jace. That was awkward back there, she whispered into his ear, even though the safety talk going on and the whine of the engines while the plane taxied would make hearing her difficult. But Millie wasn't taking any chances. I'm sorry. For what? She moistened her lips. For approaching Chelsea. Are you kidding? He sounded surprised. She was great. You did great. Millie wanted to believe him. But we. I wasn't supposed to bring up the past. You solved the clue, Freckles, Jay said, his voice warm and encouraging. That's what matters. Yes, but, didn't he realize Chelsea's question put them in an impossible position? Millie crumpled the edge of the safety card. The engines roared, and the plane sped down the runway. Now it sounds like we're getting married. As the aircraft lifted off the ground, he shrugged. I never told her a wedding date. His warm breath against Millie's neck sent a shiver of pleasure flowing through her. She stiffened at her body's betrayal and shoved the plane's safety brochure back into the seat pocket. This wasn't good. But you let her assume. Chelsea believed what she wanted to believe. I'm not blaming you, Millie said. This was my fault for talking to Chelsea. It's not your fault. His deep, rich voice tried worming its way around her better judgment and common sense. We needed help, and you got it. His words did little to reassure her. Look, he continued. Chelsea won't be the only person who recognizes us. And let's be honest, she enjoyed seeing you and me together. That's why you knew she'd help, remember? Millie nodded. He grinned. She sure smiled when I put my arm around you. I, um, didn't notice. Millie had been too stunned with Jace's warm, hard body pressing against her and his earthy scent surrounding her. Well, I did, he said. And having her think we're a couple is easier than explaining why we're racing together. The plane climbed toward altitude. A million dollar prize is reason enough, Millie countered. Not for fans of the groom. You may have a point, she conceded, remembering the full inbox of fan email and messages on her social media accounts. They seem invested in the outcome. Invested? Obsessed is a better word, he said. I received an unbelievable amount of email, most were hate mail for not picking you. It was your choice. A choice she was now grateful he'd made because she'd realized he was fake and fickle. She couldn't believe anything he said. Exactly, but no one seems to realize that. I do. Thank you. The gratitude filling his eyes tugged on her heart. Chelsea's the first fan who's been happy to see me, and that's only because you were with me. Seriously? He nodded once. Don't forget, I'm the stupid bozo. Millie bit back a smile. I never thought being on the groom would help solve a clue, but it has. I say we make the most of us being together. Her heart skipped a beat. Okay, three. 
anything to win, he added. The race. He meant the race. Millie forced herself to breathe. She cleared her dry throat. Anything to win. The aircraft leveled out. Jace peered around the seat in front of him. We're almost at altitude. You know what that means. Smile for the camera. We need to do more than that. We need to get along. He lowered his voice. The show wants to capitalize on each team's conflicts. Intense personal dramas played out during the race will translate into ratings. The less we fight, the less camera time we'll have. The less time, the better. She smiled. So, no conflict. No conflict. Jay smiled back. Her heart fluttered. Oh. Millie swallowed. The real conflict might be between her head and her heart. No conflict appeared to be working. The cameraman, Zach, and sound guy, Ryan, kept sending each other frustrated looks, but Jace couldn't be happier. The plane arrived on time, a car was waiting for them, and the directions to the Los Angeles Art Center were spot on. Most important, he and Millie were making this fledgling partnership work. He only hoped the other teams were providing juicy drama, so the show would leave them alone. Here's some money. She passed him dollar bills over his shoulder. For parking. He paid the fee and parked. Let's grab the packs. I don't think we should take them, Millie said, sounding hesitant. Jace slammed his door. Why not? She moistened her lips. Art museums usually have rules about bringing large bags and stuff inside. Instinct told him to bring the packs, but he only went to museums to attend social events. Backpacks weren't acceptable accessories at soirees like those, so he had no idea if she was correct or not. At least the art museums I've visited, Millie added. The clock was ticking. Each second kept them from finding the next clue. Jay surveyed the parking garage, but saw no one. No other teams, no tourists to tell him whether or not to leave the packs. We might not have to come back to the car, he said. Would you rather have to turn around at the entrance? Millie had a point. But what if they needed to take public transportation or a taxi or a million other possibilities from the museum? How long would a trip to the car take? Enough time to be eliminated? Jace didn't want to think about that. He just had to decide. She bit her lip. No conflict, he remembered, and locked the car. Let's leave the packs. Zack held the camera steady but frowned. The cameraman wanted a fight, anything to up the tension that had disappeared since leaving San Francisco. Jace grinned. Getting along would drive the production crew crazy. That would be worth losing a finishing spot or two on this leg of the race. Of course, if the decision to leave the backpacks in the car turned out to be wrong. Millie ran to the elevator, and Jace followed. As soon as the doors opened, Jace exited. She was right at his heels. Rows of cherry blossom trees stood like sentries, standing watch over the entrance pavilion. She stared at the trees and beyond them the neo-Gothic buildings with shooting fountains. This is incredible. No kidding. But they weren't here to admire the grounds or architecture. I'd love to bring my students. Students? Jace couldn't believe she was thinking about them at a time like this. We need to focus. Wide-eyed, she stared at a large statue. I'm focused. But on the race? That was the question. At the entrance, he paid their admission and grabbed two maps. As he handed one to Millie, his fingers brushed her skin. So soft, so smooth. His hand lingered until the sound of shouting made him realize what he was doing. Two tall, athletic guys in matching green warm-up pants and t-shirts yelled at a female attendant stationed at another entry kiosk about taking their backpacks inside. A camera crew filmed them. The woman remained calm, never raising her voice, but Jace observed a scowling security guard running over. Jace glanced at Millie, who studied the map, not distracted by the yelling or tourists passing by. Good call on the packs, Freckles. Thanks. She waved her map. 
I know where to go. No, I told you so. No demand for compliments or gratitude. At least that much about her hadn't changed. Man, she was sweet. The exhibition with the picture is in the Pacific Building, she said. On the same floor. The clue box has to be there. Jace jerked his mind back to the race. He was the one having trouble focusing now. We need to beat the green team. He tried to speak calmly. Not easy to do with the adrenaline rushing. Keep your eyes open for flags. You never know. What the other teams might pull, she finished for him. She sprinted ahead, zigzagging around tourists as she climbed the grand stairway leading to the museum. He followed her through the courtyard. Two racers, dressed in identical black warm-up suits, skidded to a stop. Hey, blue team. The clue's not here, a blonde surfer type said. We're at the wrong place. Yeah, we searched everywhere. The dark-haired guy gave Millie the once-over. I'm Matt. This is Derek. The blonde guy nodded. Chase noticed a clue card sticking out of his pocket. No doubt the two men were trying to throw them off. The best thing to do was get away from them. Now. Let's. I'm Millie. She gazed shyly up at them through her eyelashes. It's nice to meet you both. You, too, Matt said, never once taking his eyes off her. We wouldn't want you guys to waste time around here. Yeah, right. So why don't you just tell us where you found your clue? Jace wanted to punch the guy. Not only for misleading them, but for leering at Millie. That's so nice of you. She stared up at him as if Matt were the most interesting man she'd ever met. Isn't it, Jace? Millie needed to wise up to the world. And men. Those two guys on the black team were nothing but players. And if she weren't careful, she'd be their next mark. Jace motioned to the clue sticking out of the pocket. A subtle nod of her head told him she'd seen it. Matt chuckled. We're nice guys. Very nice, Derek added. Matt here is a paramedic if you need rescuing. I'm a physical therapist if you have anything that hurts. Thanks, she said. Anytime. Matt cocked a brow. And I mean that. Jace wanted to throw up. Since you're such nice guys, I'd hate for you to forget to check the gardens. Sincerity dripped from her words. Cherry blossoms, apples, and irises are plants. Millie. Jace's voice came out harsher than he'd intended. The gardens. Matt winked at her. Thanks for the tip. Anytime. She batted her eyelashes. And I mean that, too. She'd seen they had the clue. What was she doing? See ya, Millie, Derek said. Bye, Millie's dude. The two men headed toward the garden. Chase grabbed hold of her hand. Come on. As soon as the other teen was out of sight, he let go of her. What was that all about? Playing dumb so they underestimate us, she explained. Do you think they bought it? Yes. He sure had. I nominate you team captain. Good, because I know what we need to do. What's that? Her green eyes twinkled. Find some apples and irises. I'm right with you. And Jace meant it. He couldn't have asked for a more intelligent, worthy teammate than Millie Kincaid. I hope we made the right choice, Millie said on their way to the solo stoppage, a challenge they'd picked up between the paintings at the museum. Each teammate had to complete their separate task to win the next clue. We did. He sounded so confident. Whatever it is, you can do it. His words didn't reassure her. When they were told to choose between restyle or restore before reading the clue, she thought the restyle task would involve decorating. Millie loved watching decorating shows and could handle a task like that, but now she had no idea what was in store for either of them. She reread the clue card. Drive yourself to the Sunset Towers Hotel on Sunset Boulevard where stars of the silver screen such as Errol Flynn, Marilyn Monroe, and John Wayne once lived. Follow the flags to where one of you will be restyled and the other restored. 
insecurity grabbed hold of her like an old friend. Millie didn't want to make a mistake and be the reason they got eliminated. Jace watched her through the rearview mirror. What? she asked. Just remember. Think positive. He nodded. Jace parked the car in front of an art deco building that looked like something out of an old movie. He jumped out of the driver's seat and opened the trunk. We're taking our packs with us. She wasn't about to argue and put on her pack. I see a flag. Outside a door along Sunset Boulevard, the flag fluttered in the breeze. One step inside the elegant salon with high ceilings and a wall of windows, Millie froze. Her stomach did a half-gainer with a twist. Forget interior decorating. A place like this was about redoing a person, not a room. Millie gulped, glancing around the waiting area with a couch, two chairs, and a coffee table with an elaborate, colorful floral arrangement. The mauve and purple decor was probably intended to soothe clients, as was the jazzy music playing, but she only felt out of place. Completely. At least the clue made more sense now. That didn't quell her uncertainty or diminish her unease. What exactly would they do to her? Jace bumped into her backpack, pushing her farther into the salon. Sorry. Welcome. A beautiful woman with flawless makeup and hair greeted them. An additional camera crew was there. Which one of you is Restore and which is Restyle? He stepped forward. I'm Restore. Oh, we have a special treat for you. She hit a button. If you'll have a seat, an attendant will be right with you. Jace removed his backpack and sat on the sofa, not acting or looking out of place. Of course not. He probably had his hair cut at a trendy salon like this. Good luck, Freckles. Too nervous to talk, she gave him the thumbs up. The woman walked around the front desk to Millie. Come with me, please. Millie followed her into the actual salon. Zack and Ryan went with her. Derek from the black team was having his hair washed by a gorgeous woman with amazing highlights while a cameraman filmed him. He didn't seem to notice her. Or maybe he was ignoring her. After all, he and his teammate had tried to pull a fast one on her and Jace. At least they'd beaten the green team here and weren't in last place. A rush of pride made Millie straighten. Please put on a brown smock. The receptionist motioned to a door. Then you can get started. This was a task, part of the race, and Millie should hurry, but she couldn't reach for the door handle. Not when she had no idea what would happen to her when she walked out. On another reality TV show, they'd shaved a female contestant's head. She shivered, hoping that wasn't what restyle meant. What are they going to do to me? she asked. Wash hair and blow dry? Makeup? Manicure? Make me bald? She didn't put much effort into how she looked, but the idea of no more hair made her stomach clench. Our talented stylists will give you a whole new look. Hair, eyebrows, makeup. The works minus hair color. There's not enough time for that, the receptionist explained. Still, you'll leave looking and feeling like a new you. Oh, boy. Good. Millie's hair was safe. Well, maybe not all of it. She wondered how Jace was being restored and hoped he was okay. Just wait. The woman smiled. You'll love it. Conscious of the camera on her, Millie smiled back. She wasn't losing her hair or leaving as a blonde or redhead or rainbow-colored. We serve Malibu family wines, the receptionist said. Would you like a glass? Please. With the way her insides shook, one glass might not be enough. I'll bring some chocolates and cookies, too. Great. Only it wasn't. Millie stepped into the dressing room. The last time she'd had a makeover, albeit a mini one during the groom, disaster and embarrassment had struck. What would happen this time? She wasn't sure she wanted to find out. Chase joined Matt from the black team on the outside terrace. The cushion chaise lounges were the perfect seats to relax after the most amazing massage ever experienced. 
So you found the clue at the museum, Matt said, looking as lazy as Chase felt. We did. No thanks to him and his teammate, dude, but Chase wouldn't air dirty laundry in front of Matt's cameraman. Being a good sport was important. You guys must have found your clue right after we did. Matt sipped his glass of ice water instead of answering. Good. Chase didn't want to talk about the race. The only thing he wanted to do was sleep. He'd never felt so relaxed in his life. All tension had evaporated thanks to their restore task, a hot stone massage. Not a sliver of stress remained after talented hands and heated river rocks worked their magic. How are you and your co-star getting along? Matt asked. Some tension that had been rubbed out of Jace returned. Why do you ask? I didn't know I was racing with Derek. The loser stole my girl. The green team had no idea they'd be paired up, so I'm assuming you and Millie had no idea, either. We didn't, Jace admitted. But it's working out fine. Millie's mighty fine, Matt said. I haven't met many women who I'd say this about, but she's perfect wife material, a keeper. Why didn't you pick her on the groom? Chase deliberately closed his eyes. He wasn't about to get into that discussion with a competitor. On camera. Millie would be a great wife for the right guy. Just not him. Or Matt. The guy whistled. Chase ignored him. Whoa, Matt said. I mean. Wow. I'm finished. Millie sounded shy and vulnerable, and Jace hoped she did well on her task. Not just for the race's sake, either. We can get our clue. He opened his eyes. The most beautiful woman he'd ever seen stood at the entrance to the terrace. Mill, he fell off the chaise, hitting the tiled floor with a thud. She ran to him. Are you okay? No. His tongue felt thick. So did his head. This couldn't be Millie. Where was her trademark ponytail with curly strands sticking out? What was covering up her freckles? Not that she had the stuff caked. She looked natural, with just enough makeup to highlight her best features. But. She reached her arm out. Let me help you up. All he could do was stare. Her shorter, shoulder-length hair fell in soft layers framing her face. Her eyes seemed greener, her lips fuller. Yet the Millie he remembered appeared in her tentative expression. In the way she held her hand out waiting for him to meet her halfway. And that somehow made things, worse. Perfect wife material? Most definitely. A keeper? Yes. Why didn't you pick her? Chase knew the reason, but he couldn't remember what it was. Chapter 6 as Millie pulled Jace to his feet, she struggled not to jerk her hand from his. The way he stared made her feel exposed, vulnerable, naked. But she couldn't tell whether or not he liked her new look. She wanted to know. Badly. She let go before lowering her arm to her side. Are you okay? I'm fine. His gaze remained locked on hers, and she swallowed around the blow dryer sized lump in her throat. The hot stone massage left me feeling like overcooked pasta. At least you're no longer stressed. Something Millie wished she could say about herself. She waited for him to mention her makeover. The way he kept looking at her had to be a good sign. Right? Being restored worked for you. He nodded. Hmm. Maybe she needed to be more direct. Not that she was fishing for a compliment. Okay. Maybe she was. So what do you think? We should get the clue. Millie wanted to scream. Forget the clue. She wanted his opinion. Now. She'd never considered herself to be the foot-stomping, pouty type, but if anyone could drive her to such actions, Jace Westfall could. She didn't get him. That wasn't a new development, she realized with a pang of regret. So why was she disappointed? Derek had called her hot. Matt had whistled when he first saw her. Who cared what Jace thought? Except. He acted as if she were still the same old mousy Millie, not magnificently sexy Millie, as her hair designer had deemed her. 
And though she didn't feel magnificently sexy, she sure didn't feel mousy. A newfound confidence pulsed through her veins. She felt as if she could take on the world. Or at least she had, until Jace's non-reaction. It was the exact response, or lack of one, her father would give her, no matter how good she felt about herself. What's the holdup, he asked. She glanced at Matt, who was practically panting at her. That reaction would have to do. She flipped her hair behind her shoulder, the way she'd seen the other contestants on the groom do. Obviously Jace was immune to whatever magic the stylists had worked on her. She wouldn't allow him to ruin this moment for her. Millie pursed her lips. She didn't need his approval or his compliments. She didn't want them. Nothing's holding me up, she said finally. Then come on. We may have the lead. She nodded, but this wasn't the time to get cocky. The green team's here, too. One was having his hair washed when I finished. Jace placed his hand on the small of her back, and she nearly gasped from the unexpected contact. Let's grab the clue and our packs. As they hurried to the front desk, he kept his hand on her. His touch was light but burned through the waistband of her pants. She ignored the heat emanating from the spot. It meant nothing. She'd found him good-looking during the groom. She'd kissed him, but who cared? A trace of the chemistry, some half-life of attraction, must still exist. That was all. As the receptionist handed him a clue, Jace lowered his hand. Good. Except now she felt a little, cold. Which meant Millie was losing it. Big time. Her inability to stay focused with him around could not become an issue. Otherwise, she might fumble and threaten their finishing, make that winning, the race. Reality show equaled make-believe. She couldn't lose herself in that fantasy again. She shook the thoughts from her head. What does the clue say? Drive to LAX. Fly to La Aurora International Airport. Once there, take a taxi to the National Palace of Culture to locate your next clue. You have $100 for this leg of the race. They grabbed their packs. Outside the salon, the sun hung low in the golden red and pink sky. They ran toward their car with Zach and Ryan. La Aurora International Airport, Millie repeated. Where is that? Mexico? Central or South America? He put on his backpack. We can find out when we get to the airport. Every nerve ending stiffened. The uncertainty of what they faced surrounded her like the smog hanging over Los Angeles. Not knowing bothers me. He studied her for a moment. Me, too. But we're doing great, Freckles. We could be in first place. She nodded, wanting to believe him. We'll figure out where to go. He opened the trunk and tossed her backpack inside. Don't worry. How did you know I was worrying? Jace dropped his pack in. You're tugging on a piece of hair. I, Millie wanted to disagree until she realized she held several strands. She let go of them as if the hair were dynamite. How did you figure that out? When we rode the glass elevator to the restaurant at the top of the downtown skyscraper on our second date, you did that. The candle at dinner with a strolling violin player rushed back. A chocolate souffle served with two spoons. The show had perfectly orchestrated everything with the exception of the location. Heights aren't my favorite thing. You could have told me that. You didn't pick the place. No, I didn't. He handed her the car keys. You drive. She stared at the keys on her open palm. Me? The massage left me too relaxed. I shouldn't drive. Is that a problem? And no problem. So what if she was used to driving in Two Rivers, Oregon, a small town with three stoplights, a McDonald's, corner market, cafe, and feed store? It wasn't as if he'd asked her to climb a mountain or jump from an airplane. She curled her fingers around the keys, the metal digging into her skin. She had drunk only two sips of wine, so that wasn't an issue. I drive every day. At the airport, 
Jace couldn't take his eyes off Millie. She looked so different. So good. But it wasn't only the makeover. She seemed more excited and happier than before. She practically sparkled. Any sign of the pink team? Millie asked, glancing up from a map of Guatemala City. Oh. She'd caught him staring at her. Again. Maybe she hadn't noticed. And maybe UFOs would land in Hollywood tonight. No. I hope they're okay. That was so like her. To be concerned about two strangers who were competing against her for a million dollars. Zack moved closer with the camera. Jace clenched his jaw. No doubt the camera had caught him staring at Millie. Don't worry, Freckles, he said. They have a crew with them. They'll be fine. With the late night flights to Guatemala City leaving within an hour of each other, no team would have a large lead to fall back on. That was why Chase clutched their boarding passes for the flight departing at 11 o'clock as if they were golden tickets. In a way, they were. Thanks to Millie's driving and his navigating, they'd arrived first at the airport. Who would have thought she could pass cars like a NASCAR cup driver at Daytona? He smiled, thinking about her wearing a one-piece racing suit. She would look sexy. Sexy. The adjective seemed incongruous to the Millie he'd known during the groom, yet it now fit her. Chase shifted in his seat. She looked around. Everyone else is here. Yes. Two teams, blue and black, would be on the 11 o'clock departure. The green and purple teams had tickets for the 11.45 flight. Yellow, orange, and red teams had seats on the 11.55 flight. That means nothing. It does if the pink team has been eliminated. They probably got lost, Jace said. Remember, we don't care who's behind us. Then let's figure out where we need to go once we arrive. As she leaned toward him, the strong citrus scent of her new shampoo surrounded him. He caught himself wanting another sniff. Enough was enough. He was here to win a race, not find a girlfriend. Jace backed away from her. It's okay, Millie said. Okay? My restyle. Staring at the map, she ran her finger along a crease on the paper. The hair and makeup might have changed, but I'm the same person inside. I know, he mumbled. That's the problem. Problem? Her forehead wrinkled. It's not a problem you don't like my new look. You think I don't like it? You don't. His gaze raked over her. The blush to Millie's cheeks only made her more attractive. Jace wanted to take her in his arms and show her exactly what he thought of her new look. But he couldn't. Not with the camera filming them. Not when he had to win this race. I like it, he said finally. But. But what? He hated the uncertainty in her voice and eyes. You look beautiful, gorgeous, perfect, great. Thanks. I feel great. The corners of her mouth curved upward. And I think we have a shot at the million. The camera continued to film them. No matter where they went, Zack and Ryan were standing next to them. Chase stared at her. Attracted not only by what he saw, but what he heard, too. You're right. Millie's grin brightened her face. Of course, I'm right. Her increased confidence hit like an arrow piercing his heart. What was going on? Being attracted to his teammate wasn't a good idea. It had to stop. Now. The landing gear hit the runway with a thud. The jolt woke Millie. She opened her eyes and found herself staring at Jace. His chest to be exact. Her head rested against his shoulder, and her hand was on his thigh. She jerked her arm away and straightened. She waited for him to say something, to laugh, but she heard nothing. A sideways glance showed he was asleep. Thank goodness. She'd avoided that embarrassment. Still, this wasn't how she wanted to start the second day of the race. She caught sight of the red recording light and noticed Zack's camera focused on her. Oh, no. First, the wedding talk. Now, her using Jace as a pillow. What would go wrong next? 
As if on cue, Jace, his eyes still closed, turned toward her. He nuzzled his head against her neck. You smell so good. The air whooshed from her lungs. He was asleep. He didn't know what he was saying, but the words sent a warm and tingly feeling rushing through her. Not good. She jabbed him with her elbow. Wah. Good morning. With a forced smile on her face, Millie motioned to the camera with her head. She wasn't sure how she felt or what she wanted to do about it. But she wouldn't have that decided for her in the cutting room and discussed over office water coolers for the next six months. Welcome to Guatemala. We're here. He glanced around, looking half asleep and dazed and adorable. I feel like I just closed my eyes. She fought the urge to ruffle his hair and tell him to go back to sleep. That would be a bad move on camera. Teammates shouldn't, nor want to, touch each other's hair. Well, there's no time to rest now. She tried mustering enthusiasm. Difficult with the film rolling. Not until we reach the check-in point. That has to be sometime soon. I hope so. Guatemala City was their third stop and second country in less than 24 hours. Somehow she'd survived being attached at the hip to Jace. Not literally, but that was how it felt. Otherwise, they might have to retitle the show Crash Around the Globe. He laughed. The rich, warm sound surrounded her. She wet her lips. Hungry. She must be hungry for breakfast. Outside the terminal, Millie flagged down a white taxi, and Jace negotiated a price with the driver since the cab had no meter. She noticed how they used their individual strengths to find transportation. At the Palace of Culture, the next clue sent them on a quest. They ran through hallways decorated with wood carvings and artwork, looking for the Espacio de Trano. Glimpses of other contestants, purple, yellow, and green, told them they weren't alone. We can't lose any more time, Jay said. The teams are too packed together. Let me find help. Millie asked a tourist who spoke English to translate the clue. We need to go to the throne room. Jace checked a map, ran, and found a clue pouch. We're getting this teamwork down. A tingling sensation erupted in her stomach, but that had more to do with her increased confidence and working well with him than anything else. Two heads were better than one. Yes, we are. He handed her the clue. You can read it. Take a bus to the market at Chicacastenango. Find the stand selling fabric with this pattern. She held up the colorful striped pattern against a bright orange background attached to the card. Once you find the match, you will be given your next clue. A warning, the market only operates on Thursday and Sunday. If you don't arrive before closing time, you'll have a long wait. As her muscles nodded, Millie realized she was pulling on her hair. She let go and then clasped the other side of the card with her free hand, digging her fingers into the thick paper. Jace glanced at his watch. It's early. We'll make it. She appreciated his reassurance and his confidence. He was right. They could do this. Let's find the bus. Outside, Millie took a deep breath. Acclimating to the almost 5,000-foot altitude and equally high humidity wouldn't be easy. She raised her hair off the back of her sweaty neck. Which way should we go? The fastest. Okay. She looked around the crowded street. Let's find someone who can help us. An American student, participating in a language immersion program, recognized them from the groom. Millie couldn't believe how being on the show might help them win the million dollars. The student escorted them to a bus stop, suggesting they take a tourist bus, not a chicken bus. A chicken bus probably won't be as bad as a cattle car. The thought of the cheaper transportation mode was less than appealing, but she wouldn't say no. It will save us money, too. True, Jay said. But are you up for a three-and-a-half-hour ride on a chicken bus? I was trying to think positively. Good for you, but anything with the word chicken that has wheels demands realistic thinking. So you want to spend the extra money? Yes. Relief seeped through her. 
Okay. But way to go on being positive. His compliment made her stand taller. Until she saw children wearing bright colored clothing playing on the sidewalk. Some were barefoot. Millie sucked in a breath. What's wrong, Freckles? Jace asked. Those kids. She rubbed her watery eyes. They are the same age as my students, but these ones have so little compared to those at my school. The children laughed and ran around the corner. A lone rail-thin boy kicked a faded, peeling, deflated soccer ball. It looks like his ball got run over, Jace said. He needs a new one. And some food. He reached into his pocket and handed her money. Why don't you give him this? She stared at the bills and coins in her hand. Not much, but more, a lot more, than she would have expected from him. Jace's generosity tugged at her heart. A quiet thanks was all she could manage. Emotion clogged her throat. Once again, he had surprised her, only this time in a good way. She couldn't help but wonder what he would do next. And if she'd be ready for it. Chapter 7 On the road to Chickacastenango, Jace closed his eyes. He hadn't slept much on the flight. How could he rest with Millie sleeping against him? Her soft, warm breath brushing his arm like a kiss. The intoxicating scent of her shampoo and ambrosia surrounding him. He could smell her now. Jace opened his eyes. No way could he sleep. The crowded bus hit a rut on the road. Sitting on the aisle, she grabbed onto the seat in front of her. I think my spleen and liver may have changed places. Ouch, he said, noting the pained expression on her face. Zack and Ryan smiled. The camera crew might not be seeing the conflict they wanted, but they appeared happy with the shots and sound bites between being bounced around themselves. Good thing they hadn't ridden the chicken bus. The tourist bus hit another hole. Millie flew up off the seat. Jace grabbed her, his hands circling her thin waist and pulling her down. Where do you think you're going? She moistened her lip. I, I don't know. That made two of them. Time seemed to stop. Her warmth seeped through her t-shirt, and his palms grew hot. He didn't want to let go of her. A dog barked behind them. A baby cried in front of them. He should stop holding her. But they might hit another pothole. If he thought hard enough, he could probably come up with more reasons to keep touching her. Which gave him a good reason to remove his hands. Millie scooted away from him. Well, as far as the bus seat allowed her to remain seated. She glanced at the family sitting behind them. The children sang a song. The faraway look in her eyes intrigued Jace. Do they remind you of your students? Yes. Her lips curved in a soft smile. It's hard not to think about them since they're the reason I'm here. What do you mean? Whatever money I win goes to my school. Because of budget problems, programs are being cut, and that hurts all students, not only those with special needs. I had no idea you were doing this for your school. Okay, now things were making sense. Millie had mentioned her dad wanted her to work for him, not teach. No wonder she wanted to win the money, but to go through all this for a bunch of kids who probably didn't want to be in school, anyway. That's generous of you. Not really, she said humbly. We each have our reasons for wanting the money. He thought about his own. Jace? The camera was taping. He wanted to press his lips together and not mention how his firm was failing, and that without the prize money he might lose everything. But he had to say something. An influx of capital would take my business to the next level. Your family works with you, right? For me. His mother was the receptionist. She handled her responsibilities fine, but his sisters struggled to do their jobs, no matter what training he provided, which made things harder. Yes, they do. So you're racing for them. Your family. Nodding, he stared at the ground. He couldn't have answered even if he tried. Not just his awareness of the cameras, but his surprise at how Millie had figured it out. That shows how much you love them, she said, her voice full of compassion. He raised his gaze until it met hers. 
They must be so proud of you, she continued. He thought of his mother and his two sisters. They will be if I win. Oh, sure. Millie laughed. Only if you win. They love me. But the situation was serious and heading toward dire. His family needed him to come through for them or he wouldn't be the only one losing everything. They counted on him for their salaries and keeping the family together. He couldn't let them down. If you knew them, you'd understand. I'm sorry I never met them, she said softly. He was suddenly sorry, too. I have their picture. Her expressive eyes widened. You brought your family's photograph on the race? Chase nodded. My memento. That's sweet. He was embarrassed. Pleased. What memento did you bring? Millie glanced at the kids in the back. A report card. My students made it for me during Teacher Appreciation Week. They graded me in different subject areas. Did you get straight A's? he asked. No, she chuckled. I got a lot of F's. He raised a brow. You? They used their own grading system. The look in her eyes softened and took Jace back to their last date, to a hotel suite in Whistler where he and Millie had cozied up in front of the fireplace with mugs of hot chocolate and a plate of freshly baked cookies while a blizzard raged outside. They'd talked about her family and his. About what they wanted out of life. That was the most relaxing evening he'd ever spent, but the time together had shown him their differences. Millie was a quiet, easygoing teacher who enjoyed small-town living, had carved a life out for herself there, and wanted to have a family of her own. Jace, on the other hand, was trying to build his life in the city. He wasn't sure whether or not he wanted kids. His priority was to make things better for his mom and sisters, and he was driven to succeed. He couldn't see how they could mesh their lives together. He hadn't wanted to deal with the likely consequences of trying, with Millie or himself getting their hearts bruised or worse, broken. So he'd chosen Desiree, who wouldn't have minded pursuing the endorsements the show had dangled like carrots or dating in the public eye for extra exposure. Only that hadn't worked, either. People hated him for hurting Millie, and sponsors cancelled their contracts as soon as the season finale aired. He'd walked away with a six-figure check from the show and a fiancé who didn't love him. Jace took a sharp breath. Millie's questioning gaze met his. He struggled to think of something to say. What did F stand for? F for fun. Her face lit up, the way it always did when she talked about her students. Even with smudges of dirt on her cheeks and circles under her eyes, she was so beautiful. Of course, it took me a few minutes to figure that out. He laughed. That must have been a long few minutes. You have no idea. Oh, he might have a clue. Every minute he spent with her, his attraction grew, weakening his resolve. And unfortunately, no end was in sight. The end was in sight. For today, at least. Millie saw the flag. Colt, the host of the show, stood on a mat signifying the checkpoint for this leg of the race. Relief flowed through her exhausted body. A long, hot afternoon searching the many market stalls for the exact pattern match of their swatch had her running on fumes. She'd rummaged through so many colorful fabrics, her hands ached. She could still hear the fireworks exploding from homemade rockets, the smell mixing with the scents of the market foods and incense burning nearby on the steps of an old church. They then made their way to Panajackal, where they scoured the town, on the shore of the gorgeous Lake Atitlan, for their final clue for this leg of the race. Jace lengthened his stride. Run. Her entire body hurt. She felt lightheaded. She needed water and to hibernate for the rest of the summer. I can't. One hundred percent. He flashed a big smile. You've done it all day long. You can do it now for the kids. He was right. She could do this. Not for him. Not for her. But for the kids. Millie dug deep, past the dirt, the hunger, the exhaustion, for an extra boost of energy. Using all her willpower, she picked up her pace and passed him. He quickly caught up with her. Told you so. 
his tone suggested he was smiling. Yes, you did. There. The flag fluttered in the hot breeze. She could taste dirt from the trail, but it didn't matter. The checkpoint was only a hundred feet away. She had made it. She and Jace had both made it. Heart pounding, feet thudding, she stared at a picture of the globe on the green and blue mat. Yellow stars highlighted the cities they'd visited. Red lines marked the path they'd traveled. Millie pounced on the mat, jumping with both feet like her students did playing hopscotch at recess. Sweat dampened the hair around her face. Her leg muscles burned from the workout. Her stomach tingled with anticipation. Millie and Jace, Colt said with a deadpan expression. She held her breath. They weren't last. They couldn't be the last to arrive at the layover. You are team number three. The rush of relief overshadowed the wave of excitement. Tension evaporated from her body. Tears welled in her eyes. Jace picked her up off the ground and hugged her. Tight. We did it, Freckles. We did. His strong arms pulled her closer against his solid body. Her feet dangled in the air. He was hot. Sweaty. Just like her. And she'd never felt better in her entire life. His heart beat against her chest. She stared up at him, her mouth mere inches away from his. A kiss. She wanted him to kiss her. On the lips. But wait. She and Jace weren't alone. Colt, Zack, Ryan, and the camera were here, too. Panic shot through her. Okay, Jace was only hugging her. So what if he had held her tight and her feet hadn't touched the ground for 60 seconds? The embrace had nothing to do with physical attraction and everything to do with appreciation for a job well done. Not desire. Not delight. Simple relief they had made it this far. Together. She and Jace. The fact she'd wanted him to kiss her had absolutely nothing to do with anything, either. Too much exertion explained that irrational thought. They'd been racing for so long without a real meal or enough water or a decent night's sleep to think straight. So what do you think about having a teammate for the rest of the race, Jace? Colt asked. Jace placed her on the ground but still looked at her. Millie's pulse skittered. He hadn't thought she'd bring much to the team when they'd met up at Coit Tower, but she'd proven herself since then. Kept up, too. Surely he'd had a change of heart or he wouldn't have been so encouraging during that final push before the check-in point. It's worked out so far, he said finally. What about you, Millie? Colt asked. Clearing her dry throat, she thought of various sound bites the show probably wanted. We work well together. That was all they would get from her today. Great. Colt smiled. Enjoy your layover. There are showers, food, and cots. A shower would be good, Jace said, resting his arm around Millie's shoulder. Not trusting her voice, she nodded. She couldn't wait to take a shower and not only to get clean. The bathroom was the one place he and the camera couldn't follow her. Chapter 8 Eleven and a half hours later, rays of sunlight peeked through the horizon. Not used to being up this early, Millie stood in the bathroom and splashed cold water on her face. She felt better physically. She'd filled her stomach with delicious food from an overflowing buffet of local dishes, washed the dirt and sweat away in a not-so-hot shower, and slept ten hours on a more comfortable-than-it-looked cot in a lodge on Lake Atitlan, but emotionally she was a wreck. Not about the race itself, but being with Jace. Reliving what happened during the groom was one thing, but this unexpected, unwanted, attraction to him was another. Millie shivered, knowing her reaction had nothing to do with the cool morning air and high elevation. She didn't blame him for rejecting her in the past. They wanted different things out of life. His choosing Desiree had been for the best. And, boy, was Millie glad to have missed out on the media circus that would have followed their engagement and wedding. But she blamed herself for falling for him all over again. Thinking about him. Watching him fall asleep. Wanting him to kiss her. Millie grimaced. 
She was being swept up in a fantasy also known as reality television, and she knew better. The locations they visited might be real, but nothing else was. Not her feelings. Not even Jace. Sure, he felt real. Not only his strong arms and solid body, but also his encouragement, confidence, and humor. Yet, the real Jace Westfall was a driven, image-conscious competitor. She couldn't allow herself to forget he would do anything to win. Even, her insecurities whispered, sweet talk a woman he once rejected into racing to win. Well, Millie straightened, she didn't need his encouragement to want to win. She didn't need him. With her resolve firmly in place, she dried her face and rubbed on moisturizer. The last thing she wanted to put on was makeup, but she'd promised the cosmetic expert at the salon she'd attempt to replicate his magic during the race. Thank goodness he'd supplied her with an overflowing travel bag since she usually only wore sunscreen and a fruity-tasting lip gloss. An older woman in an orange t-shirt and warm-up pants entered the restroom. Good morning. Millie pulled out the container of mineral powder foundation and a stubby round brush and tried to remember how to apply it. Hi. You're from the groom. Millie wondered if a six-week reality television experience would forever identify her. No one seemed to care she'd lived 26 years before and continued to have a life now. Still, she nodded. I'm Millie. Constance Sutherland. Friends call me Connie. Nice to meet you, Connie. The woman's curious brown eyes softened. How are you holding up? Here, in the bathroom, with no cameras around, Millie allowed herself to relax. To be herself with another competitor who might also need a break from the intense race. I've had better days, but I've had worse ones, too. Same here. Connie smiled. Are you and that groom fellow getting along? Yes, we are, Millie admitted, feeling strangely at ease around Connie, who reminded Millie of her favorite teacher, Mrs. Cooper. What about you and your teammate? Connie grimaced. Well, we haven't killed each other yet. That doesn't sound too good. It's not, especially since we're family. In-laws, actually. Her son married my daughter four years ago. So why aren't you getting along? Millie asked. Connie frowned. Ava, my teammate, thinks her son could have done better than my daughter. She's made life difficult for everyone. Ava sounded like Millie's father. I'm so sorry. It's Ava's loss, but it hurts my daughter. I can't stand that. Especially with grandkids involved. I don't blame you, Millie said. It's never easy doing your best only to be told you're not good enough. Connie sighed. A woman her age should know better. Some people are set in their ways. Like Millie's father. I tell my girl a leopard can't change its spots, and neither can Ava. Millie wondered if her father would ever change. One can still hope. That's true. Connie glanced around as if on a secret mission and trying to remain undercover. Between you and me, I will do everything in my power to make sure Ava doesn't win. You plan to lose on purpose? Millie whispered. To keep her from a million dollars? You betcha. But that keeps you from winning the money. I'd rather see her lose than see me win. Connie winked. Seriously, I've got an adoring husband, a lovely, smart daughter, a great son-in-law, and two beautiful grandchildren. That's all I need. What about money to pay for your grandchildren's college? Millie asked, not wanting Connie to regret her actions later. The lines around the woman's mouth deepened. I never thought about that. Think about it. I will. Thanks. You're welcome. You know. Connie combed her hair with an orange comb. I enjoyed watching you on the groom. You were different than the other women. I hope you do better this time around. Thanks. Millie grinned. I hope I win. Well, you'll have to be on top of your game, given your partner. That groom fellow was an idiot for picking Desiree over you. She was a better pick for him than I would have been, Millie explained. 
What you see on television isn't a true representation of what's happening. Sometimes what she'd experienced during filming hadn't been, either. Just like during this race. The lines between reality and fantasy blurred with a camera capturing the action. The realization made Millie feel a little better. That's probably true. Connie pulled out her orange toothbrush. The show had gone overboard trying to make everything coordinate with team colors. Just be careful. Your teammate can turn on the charm as easily as you can turn on that faucet there. He is charming. I won't deny that. Thinking about Jay's handing over money to give to the little boy on the street filled Millie with warmth. But he's also a nice guy, one who's smart, caring, and dedicated to his family. Do you still like him? He's my teammate. The words rushed from her mouth like water from a broken dam. Well, take away team, Connie said with a mischievous glint in her eyes. And you've got mates. Trust me. Millie half laughed. Where Jace Westfall is concerned, the team will never leave mates. Never say never, Connie cautioned with age-old wisdom. In this case, I know for a fact it will never happen. The alarm on Jace's watch beeped. Keeping his eyes closed, he hit the snooze button. The dream with Millie was too good to stop now. And then he remembered. The race. One million dollars. Why was he dreaming about her when his goal was to win the money? Jace bolted upright, aware of the unfamiliar scents and sounds around him. The cot hadn't been the worst place he'd slept, but he'd been sleeping in a room with all the competitors and more than one snored. We're up for whatever they throw at us, said an athletic-looking guy from the green team. We don't get along and our mother loves him more than me, but we're brothers and share the same blood. And let's be honest, a million bucks can sweep a lot of problems under the rug. I was hoping to escape my wife's nagging for a month, a jovial fellow wearing red, who looked like he watched sports rather than took part in them, said. But now we'll either save our marriage or end up on divorce court. A buxom blonde with collagen injected lips and dressed in purple smiled. My teammate beat me. She won the title of Miss Galaxy USA, and I was runner up, but I'm not holding any grudges. You can't beat the exposure, and if we win, Jace listened to the various tales. The casting director had done her job. All the contestants had been set up. Each person had a story, and each was making the best of the situation. He wasn't sure which team had it worse being stuck with an unexpected partner, but he and Millie had an advantage over the other pairs. They'd been through this before. That should make the race easier for them. Then Jace remembered. He'd rejected Millie. On national television. Her look of betrayal and disbelief was etched on his brain. The collar of his t-shirt tightened around his throat. Millie had said she was over what happened, but was she really? He'd seen the hesitation in her eyes. More than once, she'd acted as if she didn't trust him. That would make the race harder. He would have to fix that. Jace glanced at the cot next to his. Empty. No sleeping bag. Nothing. His stomach clenched. She didn't need him to take care of her like his mother and sisters, but the thought of her leaving without a word. Or worse, disappearing. He noticed her sleeping bag and backpack on the floor near the foot of her cot. She wasn't gone. Jace blew out his breath. Not that he'd been worried about her. He hadn't. Okay, maybe a little. She was his teammate. He couldn't race without her. That was the only reason he'd been concerned. Jace knew better than to let Millie get to him. He wanted her at his side, not under his skin. Trying to develop a relationship in the middle of the race could be a deadly distraction. Not to mention a camera capturing every moment. What if things didn't work out? Again. He could lose more than a million dollars. Good morning, Jace, Millie said behind him. At the sound of her voice, heat flowed through his veins. He blew off the reaction. The outside temperature must be rising. Turning and seeing her, his voice caught in his throat. Jace coughed. Hard. Man, she looked good. 
Her short-sleeved shirt and quilted vest showed off her firm arms. Her blue shorts made her legs appear longer. And what was up with her tousled hair? Millie didn't seem the type to want to look like some sex kitten. Not that he cared, Jace reminded himself. She was only his teammate. T-A-M-M-A-T-E. He focused on her running shoes. Sturdy. Good arch support. Double knotted ties. His gaze drifted upward to her thin ankles and smooth calves. Did you sleep well? She asked, her voice soft compared to the others in the large room sizing each other up. Jace nodded. You? Yes. She shoved her zippered toiletry bag into her backpack. I spoke with Derek and Matt. No doubt the two guys must have loved that. They'd been flirting with Millie since meeting again in the gate area at LAX. Did they give you any trouble? They're harmless. As harmless as a herd of hippos. They want to distract you so you'll lose focus on the game. Maybe. She didn't sound convinced. But been there. Done that. I'm immune to charms. Besides, they only talked to me about the pink team who quit in San Francisco. Everyone had been wondering about the two women. Chase remembered, a thin brunette in her thirties who looked a bit desperate. What happened? No one knows, but it must have been bad for them to quit. Guilt lodged in his throat. Jace had wanted Millie to quit. He was relieved she'd stayed. Must have been. I guess we'll find out when we watch the show. The finale airs in December, so you know what that means? Millie zipped her pack. What? Christmas in July. You're probably right. She tugged on a backpack strap. Each pull tightened the strap matching the tension in the muscles across her upper back. There will be more pressure on today's race leg since no one wants to be the first team eliminated. Don't you mean cancelled? The show's producers use travel terms for different parts of the race. Instead of being eliminated, teams were cancelled as if they were airline flights. The time between check-in and departure was a layover. Tasks to earn clues were called delays. Cancelled, eliminated. She hoisted on her pack. Who cares as long as it's not us? It won't be us. I'm ready. She adjusted the straps. I'll meet you outside. As she walked away, Jace noticed the bounce of hair and the sway of her hips. He admired her determination as much as the way she looked. She was ready to race before him. That was, in itself, amazing. She stopped at the doorway, turned, and smiled at him. His mouth went dry. Forget about Millie getting under his skin. He plopped onto his cot. She was already there. And he wanted, needed, her out. Out of his thoughts. Out of his sight. Out of his life. Oh. Jace had a problem. A really big problem. Chapter 9 It won't be a problem, Jace told Millie on the bus ride from the remote town El Caliphate in Patagonia. They'd flown two and a half hours from Buenos Aires without incident. Millie's stomach in her throat, she stared out the window at the pine trees and the snow-capped mountain peaks of the Argentina Glacier National Park. She shivered. I'm sorry, but I find the thought of trekking across a humongous piece of ice a bit overwhelming. It's the eighth wonder of the world, freckles. That's what the guy at the airport said. Chances are, it's no big deal. Jace tugged on the edge of her blue ski hat. Even if it is, you won't be out there on your own. You're stuck with me, remember? I know. She remained surprisingly thankful for that. Millie zipped up her jacket. It's different having a teammate. Cash Around the Globe is a different show than the groom. She crossed her fingers. A better one. Much better, he said. That whole dating setup. The disgust in his voice surprised her. Not what you expected? Not at all, he admitted. I don't know how you competed against those other women, living together, but not able to trust each other. That couldn't have been easy. Especially with him as the sole judge and jury. Millie tamped down a rush of insecurity. I made it through. 
and you'll make it through today, too. His eyes, as blue as the waters of Lake Argentine, met hers. Only, you won't have to do it alone. Her throat thick with emotion, she nodded. This time around was different. The challenges she and Jace faced together were real, but they were still only participating on a reality television show. Millie couldn't forget that. She didn't dare. The bus slowed. She glimpsed a wall of blue-white ice stretching as far as she could see out her window. The Perito Moreno Glacier. Her pulse picked up speed. We don't know where any of the other teams are. Jace was on his feet with his pack strapped on his back, before the bus stopped. We have to cross quickly. I know. All seven pairs had flown from Guatemala City, to Panama City, to Buenos Aires. But there, the teams had scattered to arrange flights, to El Caliphate. The green and red teams had been on their plane, but they hadn't caught the same bus. That didn't mean they weren't on a different bus. Or already on the glacier. Millie pulled on her pack, and by the time she exited with the other passengers, Jace held tickets for the boat ride that would take them to the glacier. Holding on to the straps, she ran to the Bajo de las Sombras Pier. The strong wind chilled her cheeks. She climbed aboard a ship with other tourists, who kept looking at Zach and Ryan with their equipment. A few people waved at the camera. As the ship set sail, Jace gave her a thumbs up. We made it. Millie's heart bumped. Reality show, she reminded herself. The day's only beginning. And that was after traveling some twenty hours to get here. The ship maneuvered around bobbing icebergs. She trembled, either from the cold robbing her body heat or fear at the enormity of the fifteen-story tower of blue ice in front of her. Talk about massive. Ah filled Jace's voice. I wonder how large that sucker is under the water. I thought you said the glacier wasn't a big deal, she teased. He raised a shoulder, smiling. I may have been wrong. You? she asked. Wrong? Jay stared at the milky blue water surrounding the ship. It's happened once or twice. A smile tugged on her lips. That often? Twenty minutes later, Millie disembarked behind Zack and Ryan. Jace followed. A race flag led them to an Argentine park guide, who walked them around the bank of the lake and through a pine-scented forest to the glacier itself. The temperature dropped, and the air felt wet. Are you warm enough? Jace asked. Yes. The guide lectured them on glacier formation before fitting them with crampons, spiked footwear that went over shoes to assist crossing the ice. He instructed them how to walk your clue is waiting for you on the glacier. Her stomach dropped. Jay stepped onto the ice. How are you doing, freckles? The crampons weighted her feet as the metal spikes on the toe and heel cut into the ice. She padded forward, carefully, to avoid ripping a hole in her pant leg or cutting herself. I feel like a duck walking in these things, she confessed to both Jace and the camera. But at least we won't fall. Right. Up and down they traveled, seeing every imaginable shade of blue. The ice was dirtier than she imagined it would be with rocks, pebbles, and pools of water in some places. She felt like an ant who found itself on a strange, blue-shaded ice sculpture. The cracking of a glacier piece breaking off and falling into the lake rumbled like thunder. A chill inched along Millie's spine. She glanced up at Jace. Do you think it's safe? Lots of tourists do this. We'll be fine. He gracefully made his way across the uneven surface. The glacier groaned, and a piece the size of a house crumbled into the water. The birth of another iceberg. He showed no hesitation, continuing forward. I won't let anything happen to you. His confidence chipped away at her fear, and soon she was enjoying the trek, awed by the ice formations and spectacular scenery surrounding her. You're doing great, Jay said. Thanks. She wished she could catch up to him, but she would be the tortoise to his hair today. A few minutes later, he glanced over his shoulder, his wide smile like a little boy attending his first professional baseball game. Isn't this incredible? 
I don't know how we'll top this one. As Millie stared at him, an iceberg-sized lump lodged in her throat. Jace looked so comfortable and strong out here on this massive slab of blue ice, she had to look away before she did or said something stupid. Me, either, he admitted. Their guide pointed out a crevasse in the ice, something she'd rather not have seen. Still, Millie continued on. A staircase had been hacked out of the ice. She followed Jace up the steps and found herself on the top of the glacier. Hey, somebody's waving a race flag, he shouted back. They must have the clue pouches. I'll be right there. He'd been ahead of her since they hit the ice, and she expected him to run and grab the pouch, but Jace waited until she caught up to him. Why didn't you get the clue, she asked. I wanted to wait for you. He stuck a strand of hair back into her ski hat. Teammates, right? His words and actions were strictly platonic. That was what Millie wanted, but she couldn't deny a twinge of disappointment. She smiled wanly. Yes, teammates. Let's go. She took a step. Her right crampon caught on her left pant leg, and she tripped. Gasped. Strong arms grabbed her before she hit the ice. I've gotcha, freckles. Jace. She stared up at him. His body hard. His breath hot. Th thanks. You okay? No. Her heart raced. She couldn't breathe. Millie nodded, ignoring Zack and Ryan, who filmed the entire exchange. As the guide examined her leg to make sure she hadn't cut herself, Jace held on to her. Sure. You're pale. That was better than blushing like a teenager with a crush on the most popular guy in school. I'm okay. Really. All good, the guide said. Vamos. Millie hesitated. Jace laced his gloved fingers with hers, and her heart bumped. Come on. Together, they received their clue pouch. He pulled out a delay card. You read it. She took the card. The tango is a matter of national pride for residents of Buenos Aires. Fly back to Buenos Aires and find Casa Las Tangerias on Avenida Balcars, where you will learn the steps to this expressive, passionate dance. As you perform with your teammate, a panel of expert tango dancers will judge your dance and determine whether you have earned your clue. If not, you must practice before trying again. Do you dance? Jace asked. Millie's stomach dropped. I've taken dance lessons, but the tango wasn't one I learned. What dances did you do? She cleared her dry throat. All the proper dances young women should do at a cotillion. You were a debutante? No, she said. For once, my father listened to me and agreed I would have only made a fool of myself. And by default, him. Jace tapped the tip of her nose. You would have been a cute Deb. She shrugged off his words, but the compliment warmed her cold insides. I took a ballroom dance class in college, but that was a long time ago, he said. Though I can see the all-guy teams needing extra practice. Dancing's not really a guy thing. Millie laughed. But women love a man who can dance. He drew his brows together. All women? Pretty much. Jace thought for a moment. Even you? She raised her chin. What do you think? He tucked the card into his jacket pocket. We need to get off this giant ice cube and tango. I'm sorry, a tango judge said in accented English. You did not earn the clue. Millie clutched Jace's hand tighter. He squeezed back reassuringly. Sure, we did. Okay, fine, the first time they'd danced, they'd both messed up, but this time. He ran the steps through his head. El Paseo. La Cadencia. Salida. La Resolution. They'd walked, turned, stopped, and added an embellishment, a zarendio also known as a shake. No stumbles, no stepping on toes, no mistakes. We did everything we were taught including traveling counterclockwise on the dance floor. 
The beautiful female judge stood and tossed her long black hair. The tango is not about steps. It's a dance of improvisation. She sashayed toward them. You must take what you learned from the instructors and make the dance your own. Our own, he asked. See. His gaze collided with Millie's. She didn't appear to understand any better than he did. Next door, he heard two teams practicing. They had to get out of here. But. How do we make the dance our own? Millie asked. Feel the music. Experience the emotion. The two male judges nodded their agreement. The woman closed her eyes, swaying. Let your steps express those feelings. Only then will you discover El Alma del Tango. The soul of the tango. That sounded. Impossible, Millie mumbled. The woman shook her head. Not impossible. Can you be a little more specific? Millie asked. How about a lot more specific, Jace muttered. Hold your partner closer. Her chest pressed to yours. Some of Jace's frustration seeped away as he admired the fit of Millie's low-cut dress. I can do that. You also need to loosen up. The woman unbuttoned his blue silk shirt. This might help. Great. He grimaced. With the silk and billowy sleeves and open neck, all he needed were hair gel and gold chains around his neck to look like a gigolo. Millie smiled. It looks better. And you. The woman faced her. You look beautiful. Jace agreed. Millie wore high heels and a sexy shimmering blue dress. The slits up the side swirled around her legs and provided welcome glimpses of her thighs. But like your partner, you are too stiff, the woman continued. Loosen up. Move to the music. Not just your feet and hips, but your entire body. Let the beat match, to Corazon. My heart, Millie repeated. Allow your heart to be your guide, the judge said. Understand? Millie nodded. Attitude is everything in the tango. If you believe you're a good dancer, you'll be good. The man uses his machismo and sets the tone. The woman pulled one of the male judges from his chair. You, Chica, follow his lead. Watch. The woman cued the music. The pair danced around the floor of the dark and smoky tango bar, and Jace understood what she'd been trying to say. The two stopped in the center of the dance floor. The few patrons sitting at round tables clapped. According to their dance instructors, the place didn't fill up until after midnight, and it was only eleven now. The tango is a conversation without words, the woman judge said. Let your movements communicate. Communicate what? Millie asked. Emotion, the woman purred. Passion. Sex. Sex, huh? Jace could handle that. Except Millie didn't seem too keen on the idea. She blushed. Um, thanks. Go practice. The woman smoothed her skirt. Buena suerte. Jace opened the door to the practice room. They would need more than luck to pull this off. Millie seemed to limp. She leaned her back against a wall, her right foot not touching the floor. What's wrong with your foot? He asked. Blisters. From their trek across the glacier? Or the hours they'd put in practicing the dance? Let me see. Straightening, she didn't put weight on her foot. It's fine. They have a first aid kit, he said. Don't be a martyr. We have a long way to go. I won't slow you down. I don't want you to hurt. She removed her shoe. There's one on my heel and one on the ball of my foot. Kneeling, he held on to her ankle. Her skin felt so soft. He was eye level to a slit in her dress. He followed it up. Such long legs. Nice legs. Smooth. Millie lost her balance and grabbed onto his shoulder. Sorry. He released her ankle, stood, and picked her up in his arms. Her eyes widened. What are you doing? Jace placed her on a chair. 
you'll be more comfortable. And he wouldn't be in a position to leer at her legs. He placed moleskin and a bandage on each of her blisters. This will get you through the practice and performance. Thanks, but, she hung her head. I don't know if I can do all the things she said. He raised her chin with his fingertip. We have to give this our best shot. I've been trying my hardest. I know. Jace knew she was tired and hurting. He didn't blame Millie for her doubts. He was exhausted himself. Not to mention feeling like an idiot in his costume. That gave him an idea. So what if you don't do them? Her forehead wrinkled. You just said. Let's not be Millie and Jace dancing, but Evita and Rico. She laughed. Good. He'd wanted that reaction. Seriously, Freckles, you're dressed to the nines, and I could give Rico Suave a run for his money in my getup, he explained. Trust me. A beat passed. And another. Millie pursed her lips with a haughtiness he'd never seen before. One that hit him low and hard, promising things he could only imagine. She flipped her hair back. Don't you mean Evita? Third time's the charm, Jace, make that Rico, murmured, as he placed his hand on her back. Chapter 10 Millie hoped the third time worked. She clasped her right hand with Jace's. Dancing in front of the judges and camera had been difficult enough the first two times. Now with patrons, people who knew how to tango, in the bar sipping drinks and watching them, and her foot throbbing with pain, she didn't know if she could do this. Except she didn't have to. Evita did. Evita could. Millie took a deep breath, something hard to do, in the tight dress she wore. The plunging neckline and slits on both sides left little to the imagination. Not that the men staring at her seemed to mind. Or Jace. She gazed up at him, handsome in his flowing blue silk shirt, black slacks, and shoes. Let's show em what we've got, Evita. He pulled her close, her chest pressing against his. He might look cool and calm, but the rapid staccato of his heart told Millie he was nervous, too. She took comfort she wasn't the only one. Remember what the judge said. Feel the music. Follow his moves. Communicate emotion with motion. Listening to the opening strains of the song, she focused on Jace. Something shattered near the bar. Millie bit her lip. He winked. She forced a smile. Remember, it takes two to tango, he whispered in her ear. His warm breath, a caress against her neck, sent tingles racing through her. He stared at her as if she were the only woman in the world, and he wanted her. Bad. She gulped. Evita wouldn't gulp. She would. Millie raised her chin, puckered her lips, and kissed the air next to his cheek. For luck. His eyes darkened. His jaw tensed. She sensed the tightness in his arms. Evita wouldn't make it easy for him. She would taunt, tantalize, tease. She lifted her chin, arching her back to align her hips with his. Her chest thrust forward, pressing closer against him. How badly do you want it, Rico, she whispered. At his sharp intake of breath, she turned her head quickly away from him. The show had begun. He stepped forward with his left foot. She went back with her right. Around the floor they moved. He stalked like a panther on the hunt for his prey. Aggression, power, passion. The music seeped inside of her, the rhythm flowing through her body like the blood in her veins. As emotion took control of the motion, the steps melded. His fiery gaze locked on her. She shimmied, turned, and twisted away from him. He would have to work harder if he wanted to catch her. Pulling her to him again, he rocked back so her chest lay across his. Heat burned between them. She pressed her cheek against his. Time stopped for an instant. Then she was on her feet, moving away. His confidence and strength were contagious. But he didn't let her get far from him. He pulled her close. She went willingly, wrapping her right leg around his hips and leg. He spun them around. 
closer and closer. Triumph filled his eyes. He thought he had her. Not yet. She turned her head away sharply and moved away from him. The chase continued around and around the dance floor until the music came to an end. Slowly, he lowered her into a dip until she was practically horizontal. His face was mere inches from hers. Sweat beaded on his forehead. Her breath quickened. Millie parted her lips to thank him, but Jace covered her open mouth with his. And kissed her. She tasted salt and heat. The way he moved his mouth over hers sent fire rushing through her veins. His beard rubbed against her face. His strong hands held her in place. A good thing, too, because her legs, as solid as melted butter, could have never supported her. But that didn't stop her from kissing him back. Her left hand splayed across his hip. She arched to meet him, eager to taste more of him. Her response made him deepen the kiss more. Pleasure exploded through her body like the grand finale of a fireworks display. Only this wasn't the end. If anything, his kiss felt like the beginning, the start of something, lasting. He'd never kissed her like this before. No man had. He kissed her as if he couldn't get enough of her, as if she were the air he needed to breathe. Millie didn't want the kiss to stop. Forget about protecting her heart. She would risk everything for more kisses. She wanted him to feel how she felt. Pressing closer against him, she moved her lips over his with an eagerness she'd never experienced before. Clapping and cheering erupted, breaking the mood. Jace raised his head to look at their audience. Straightening, he pulled Millie to her feet and twirled her to take their bow. Flushed and embarrassed, she clutched his hand, seeking reassurance in his eyes. Her insides shook, but she kept a smile on her face. For the patrons. For the judges. For the camera. Oh, no. They'd kissed in front of the camera. Great performance, Freckles, Jay said, not meeting her eyes. Her lips bruised, her breathing ragged, and her resolve shattered, she felt as if someone had dumped a container of ice water on her, jolting her awake from a deep sleep. Her smile wobbled. You, too. That had to be why he kissed her performing for the camera, to earn the clue. Part of the show. Evita and Rico. No different from the groom and his brides the last time around. Unfortunately, that realization didn't make her feel any better. His previous kisses hadn't affected her this way. They'd been more like pecks, compared to the way he'd devoured her on the dance floor. Why had his kisses changed? Millie fought the urge to touch her throbbing lips. That was what she needed to understand. Nothing had changed between them. Unless, unless he'd kissed her on the rebound. And if that were true. All three judges stood and clapped. A standing ovation, but Millie didn't care. She was more concerned with protecting herself and her suddenly vulnerable heart. The gorgeous female judge handed Jace a familiar-looking clue pouch. Her red-glossed lips curved into a sexy smile. Now that's how to communicate emotion. I felt your passion, her closed fist pounded her heart, here. Millie felt it, too. Like a knife. And she never wanted to feel that way again. Sitting in a famous steakhouse, a converted warehouse with wood-paneled walls and an open fire grill, Jace stared across the table at Millie. His temperature shot up at the memory of his lips against hers. He sipped from his water glass. It was just a kiss. It wasn't even the first time he'd kissed her. But those kisses during the groom had been tentative, almost polite. He'd been careful with Millie on that show, trying to act the part of a gentleman, knowing how nervous she was, not wanting to hurt her. This time, all he could think about was really kissing her and tasting her lips. He'd never expected her response. Talk about a spin his world off its axis kiss. Jace shook it off. He couldn't get sidetracked from saving his family. The moment. That was all it had been. He'd gotten wrapped up in the dance. Besides, he hadn't been kissing Millie. He'd been kissing Evita. Thirsty? Millie asked. 
he nodded. Long day. True, but you might not want to drink too much. She fiddled with her white napkin. We don't know what they'll make us eat. To get their next clue, he and Millie would have to eat whatever was served. As long as it's not crawling off the plate. He watched Sack circle the table with his camera. I'll be fine. Me, too. Millie's gaze met his, and then she stared at the table. Fine, that is. Chase tried reconciling the woman across from him to the one he danced with earlier. In her blue warm-up suit that covered every inch of skin except her face, neck, and hands, Millie looked nothing like Evita at the tango bar. She acted nothing like her, either. Paraladas. A uniformed waiter placed the biggest platter of barbecued meat Jace had ever seen in the center of the table. Next came a bowl of sauce. Chimichurri. Gracias, Millie said. As soon as the waiters left, she bit her lip. How will we eat all this? One bite at a time. Suddenly eating a 72-ounce sirloin in an hour for a free meal at Big Texan Steak Ranch in Amarillo seemed more like snacking. At least it's cooked and smells good. But not as good as Millie. Stop. Now. Jace had to think of her only as his teammate, not a beautiful, desirable woman who'd shocked him tonight. She was an Evita. The sooner we start this, Millie placed a slab of meat on her plate, the sooner we get the clue and get out of here. He did the same. Don't forget the chimichurri. Sauce might help. Do you recognize everything? Jace stared on the platter. Sweetbreads, kidneys, udders. Maybe even a bull testicle or two. He gulped. I don't think we're supposed to recognize all of it. Millie ate her first piece. The meat's good. So is the sauce. It has a bite to it. You like spicy things? He thought back to the tango bar. Yeah, I do. She spooned sauce onto her plate. Me, too. He speared another piece of meat and dropped the chunk on his plate. They ate in silence. One by one, teams joined them at the steakhouse. The purple beauties. The red marrieds. The orange grannies. None of the guys are here, Millie said. Good. Jace wiped his mouth. The male teams will be our toughest physical competition. Except for the yellow team. She held her water glass in midair. The two brainy guys? You mean geeks? Millie sighed. Liking Star Wars doesn't make you a geek. Reciting lines from the movies and professing your religion to be Jedi does. They are nice. Chase took another piece from the platter. I wonder what caused their friendship to splinter. Did someone cross over to the dark side? Close, Millie said. An authentic Darth Vader helmet was up for auction, and one beat the other for it. Jace laughed. You're kidding. I'm not. She wiped her hands on her napkin. It's still a point of contention between them, and they're worried it'll affect how they do in the race. Well, if you ever want something that badly, just tell me and I'll let you have it. I will. Thanks. Smiling, she spooned more sauce on her plate and if you want to eat the rest of the meat, feel free. He laughed. What do you know about the other teams? Well, the red team has been having marriage trouble. They're separated. Karen thinks this race will make or break them. She's really worried. Yeah, I talked to her husband. He's worried, too. That's sad. I hope they make it. Divorce had to hurt a million times more than a breakup. They have to work together in the race. Maybe being put under pressure will help solidify things. No marriage should go south because of doubts. A contemplative expression formed on Millie's face. Is that why? He sipped his water. What? Did you have doubts with Desiree? Jace got the feeling that wasn't her original question, but he answered anyway. Desiree had doubts about me and my feelings toward her and she'd hated that he went from fan favorite to hated villain after breaking up with Millie. Desiree didn't want his lack of appeal to hurt her burgeoning career in the spotlight. Millie wiped her mouth with a napkin. 
probably best to change the subject. What's the situation with the blondes? They want to be actresses or models, she said. They hope the show is their big break. Like Desiree. Sounds familiar. Millie reached over the table and touched his arm. I'm so sorry. You must miss her. Miss who? Desiree. No, the odd thing was, he didn't. She'd hurt his pride. She hadn't touched his heart. What about the orange team? Millie's brows wrinkled. She pulled back her hand and picked up her water. I like Connie. She's decided to put whatever money she wins in a college fund for her grandkids. What about the other orange granny? Millie bit into another piece of meat and didn't respond. Interesting. Jace had sized up the other teams as threats or nothing to worry about. He hadn't given much thought to them as people or their motivation for entering. Not the way she had. Jace realized he'd done the same with the women on the groom. He'd sized up each as having the qualities he'd wanted in a wife or not. He hadn't gotten to know them as individuals. Not really. Millie wiped sauce from her fingers. If she was Evita, he could reach across the table and suck the sauce off her fingers for her. Millie, however, would misinterpret the action, thinking it meant more than it did. What? She asked. Nothing. Ready for another piece? Slowly, the pile of meat disappeared. Jace had never felt so full in his life. He leaned back in his chair, his stomach full and bloated. For the first time in his life, he saw the appeal of being a vegetarian. Despite his physical discomfort, the tension between him and Millie had eased. She groaned. I don't think I can eat another bite. Four pieces remained. We're almost finished. Almost being the operative word. She took an odd-shaped piece of meat. I don't think I want to know what this is. Jay sighed it. Testicles. No, you don't. She chewed anyway. What a woman. Teammate, he corrected, and bit into another piece himself. You have sauce on your cheek, Millie said. He wiped his face with a napkin. It's still there. Where? She pointed to her right cheek. He raised the napkin back to his face. Other side. Jace rubbed his left cheek. Better. You missed it. Try an inch from where you were. He did. Over to the left. My left. Now down. A little more. How could they dance together, but not be able to get sauce off his face? He tossed the napkin on his lap. Forget about it. She leaned over the table and wiped his cheek with her own napkin. It's gone. Thanks. He concentrated on the remaining pieces of meat, the ache in his belly matching the pain in his temple. He enjoyed being touched like that. If only Evita were touching him. She was the kind of woman who came with no strings. Unlike Millie, who came with so many strings she could tie him up like a Christmas present. Jace wasn't ready for that. He didn't know if he ever would be. He had too much on his plate with his mother, sisters, and business to give Millie what she needed. What she deserved. He would only end up disappointing her. Hurting her. Again. Jace couldn't let that happen. He wouldn't. The clue from the restaurant sent them to the airport's international terminal. Sleep-deprived and overfed, Millie needed to concentrate on the task at hand, but she kept thinking about Jace. At the restaurant, she'd almost asked if doubts had kept him from picking her. Part of her wanted to know whether or not he'd been oblivious to her feelings. Thankfully, she'd caught herself and asked about Desiree instead. He didn't miss Desiree. That meant he hadn't kissed Millie on the rebound. The kiss had been an act, a way to complete the tango delay. She could accept that. Because by going that extra step, the two of them had become a real team, not two people put together by a ratings-hungry television show. They were stronger together than apart. Even Jace had to see that now. Outside in the pitch blackness of three o'clock in the morning, Millie scrambled out of the cab and ran inside the international terminal. 
She saw the Aerolinius Argentina sign and heard the noise from a vacuum or floor polisher, but that was it. No workers. No other teams. No race banners. Jace grabbed her hand and started running. Wah, she saw the race banner, the mat with a red line, following their path into South America and Colt standing there with one of his habitual deadpan expression. A check-in at the airport? Millie hadn't been expecting that. She ran faster. Each step hurt her blistered foot, but she didn't care. She hit the mat at the same time as Jace. Millie and Jace, Colt said with no emotion to his voice. You are team number one. Yes. She jumped and caught Jace's gaze with her own. Something passed between them. An electrical surge. A static charge. A memory of what had happened at the tango bar. A sudden urge to hug him was strong, but she slapped both of his hands with hers instead. We did it. Good job, Freckles. You, too. Colt grinned as if he already knew the show would be a top ten hit. They don't call this show cash around the globe for nothing. Your team has won $20,000 for placing first on the second leg of the race. Millie gasped. $20,000. Jace gave her a quick hug. She missed his warmth and his scent when he let go of her. Boy, she must be more tired than she thought. There is no layover between legs two and three. You can rest here at the airport and sleep on the flight, Colt explained, handing her a clue pouch. Good luck. Luck? What they needed was a shower, clean clothes, and sleep. Still, she'd just won $10,000 for her school. She really couldn't complain. Millie unzipped the pouch and pulled out the clue card. Say adios to Buenos Aires and fly to Cape Town, South Africa, she read. Take a taxi to the tabletop cableway station. Ride the cable car to the top where you will follow the flags to your next task. Be ready for the thrill of a lifetime. You have $50 for this leg of the race. We might have a long wait ahead of us. Jace moved in front of a closed ticket counter and removed his backpack. I'll stay here and you can wash up. Then we can switch. Thank you. For what? The corners of her mouth lifted. For being a really great teammate. Chapter 11 So much for arriving in Cape Town with a lead, Jace said. After napping on an airport floor in Buenos Aires for a few hours, they'd flown to Sao Paulo, Brazil, with three teams, red, orange, and purple. Now, eight racers waited to board the same flight to Johannesburg. From first place to a tie for fourth. Funny, but Millie didn't seem to mind that others had caught up to them. Based on her smile, she enjoyed the interaction with the other contestants, especially the woman from the orange team, sitting next to her. It could be worse, the woman in orange said. All the teams could be here. The others laughed. Good point. At least he and Millie had twenty grand to show for their efforts in Argentina. A chunk of the money would go to taxes, but what remained would help his business and Millie's students. He stared at her. Curly hair stuck out from beneath her blue baseball cap. She looked cute. Sweeter. More innocent. An urge to protect her swelled inside of him. Nah. Most guys would feel that way. He'd spent most of his life watching out for his mom and sisters. Same old instinct. Nothing new. Except his feelings weren't the least bit brotherly. Millie glanced around. I wonder where the other teams are. The boys had trouble dancing. The woman in orange sounded amused. Nicole, one of the blondes from the purple team, nodded. We were the last to leave the steakhouse, and none of them had shown up. We're here now, a male voice announced. Matt and Derek, both dressed in black, strutted over. The green team, Brothers Bay and Lake, followed them. No more yellow team, Millie said, sadness filling her voice. Those geeks never made it to the restaurant. Lake, a big, tall, jock type who owned a sports bar, snickered. They got cancelled right in the middle of their dance. Millie sighed. 
they were so nice. Crystal, the other blonde from the purple team, agreed. They were nice guys, and they tried. Matt pushed his way through the group and squeezed in beside Millie and the woman wearing orange. But they never could find the beat. And without the right beat. You can't get it done, Derek finished for him. Millie retied her tennis shoes and double knotted them. Jace wondered how her blisters were doing, but asking would betray a possible weakness to the other teams. Beat or not, learning to tango was hard, she said. We danced three times to earn the clue. We took three tries, too, Crystal said. Four for us, the red team wife said. I couldn't believe how difficult dancing the tango was. It was harder for two geeks with no rhythm. Not even the force could help them tango, Lake said, mockingly. The green and black teams laughed, but no one else joined in. Maybe if they'd been dancing to the Imperial Death March, they could have done it. They hummed a few bars of the famous movie theme. Or the cantina song. The men continued laughing and poking fun at the yellow team. Her mouth tight, Millie stared at the carpet. Jace wanted the guys to shut up. He might have called the yellow team geeks, but they didn't deserve to be humiliated on national television or poked fun at by these bozos. It wasn't as if either green or black had finished in the top of the pack. So how was dancing the tango together, guys, he asked. Who wore the dress? The appreciative gleam in Millie's eyes was worth more than whatever payback his questions would bring. All four men glared at him. We got the clue. Lake's jaw jutted forward. That's what matters. Lou, the husband from the red team, released a laugh loud enough to echo through the waiting area. Guess we know who wore the pants on your team. Ignoring the play-by-play, -play, Matt scooted closer to Millie. I wish I could have seen you in one of those sexy dresses. I bet you looked hot. Gorgeous, the orange teen woman said. Millie blushed. Thanks. I wish I could have kept my dress, Nicole said wistfully. A bartender said you and the groom dude danced well, Matt added. Groom dude? Jace's teeth clenched. I have a name. Matt didn't seem to hear him. The guy was focused on Millie. Not that Jace blamed him, but seeing other men flirt with his, his teammate, was weird. She stretched her arms over her head and rolled her shoulders. Tired or sore? Jace wondered. Probably both after the past 24 hours they'd had. Shoulders hurt? Derek asked. From running with the backpack, I think. She patted the floor. And sleeping on this. Derek stepped between the contestants and sat behind a surprised-looking Millie. I'll fix you right up. Much to the dismay of a peeved Matt and the surprise of an unhappy Jace, she leaned forward. Thanks. With a smug grin, Derek massaged her shoulders. How does that feel? The look of pure pleasure on Millie's face hit Jace right in the solar plexus. She moaned. Perfect. He would show her perfection. Right after he punched Derek, whose hands were all over Millie's back. Not just her shoulders. Every muscle in Jace's body tensed. Derek whispered something in her ear. Millie giggled. What was going on? Why was she letting some random guy get so close to her? Good question. Jace inched forward in his chair. He'd never touched her like that on the groom. Not that he'd tried. Maybe he should have offered to rub her shoulders himself. Except she was anxious and unconfident with men. She seemed oblivious to games men and women played with each other. She was a nice girl. Yet she hadn't danced like a nice girl when she'd been playing Evita. She hadn't kissed like a nice girl, either. Forget about it. A massage in front of the teams, cameramen, audio guys, and other passengers meant nothing. Still, it bugged him. So much so he couldn't look away. Do your shoulders hurt, Jace? Crystal asked. At least he thought that was her name. The two beauty pageant contestants with California bleach blonde good looks and made for bikini bodies seemed interchangeable. No, thanks. Crystal pressed her shoulders back so her chest stuck out further. Mine do. Try stretching. 
he flicked his gaze to her face. Rolling your shoulders might help, too. Crystal pouted. Jace glanced at Millie to see if she noticed. She had her eyes half-closed and an expression of pure contentment on her face. She'd never looked like that around him. Want me to rub your shoulders, Crystal? Lake asked. That would be wonderful. The blonde flashed the man in green a wide smile. Making her way to Lake, she stared down her nose at Jace. Just because you were raised with a silver spoon doesn't make you better than any of us. Eyes open, Millie sat ramrod straight. Jace looked at Crystal. Is that what you think? The blonde beauty queen nodded. You know, daddy's portfolio and a mansion in the nicest area in town. No. Penthouse apartment overlooking Central Park? Sorry. Try Shady Oaks Trailer Park. The sudden silence was deafening. Trying not to react, he stood. Anyone want something to drink? People said no, except for a yes from Millie's friend on the orange team. The older woman handed him a $5 bill. I'd like a bottle of water, Jace. Sure thing, he tried to remember her name. Connie. The other orange granny is Ava. Ava rolled her eyes. How many times do I have to tell you, we are not the orange grannies? Water it is, Connie, Jace said. As he made his way to a nearby shop, footsteps sounded behind him. A random passenger he hoped. Jace. Wait. Millie caught up to him. Zack followed with a camera in hand. I'll go with you. I can get you water. I want the exercise. She walked next to him. Suit yourself. She went inside with him. You never told me where you grew up. Grabbing two bottles from the shelf, he shrugged, aware of the camera on them. Millie had grown up rich. Even if she didn't live that lifestyle now, she was used to the finer things in life. She couldn't understand. So, what else haven't you told me about yourself, Jace Westfall? Her tone teased, but her eyes were serious. He didn't want her pity, but he couldn't afford to have his upbringing come between them, either. Not with the race at stake. Nothing I'll admit on camera. Later? Ugh. He recognized that curious glint in her eyes and tone. She wasn't going to let it drop. Jace didn't want to admit weakness. He never wanted to go back to that time. Not ever. Jace, she pressed. Later. The camera's off. As the airplane taxied down the runway, Millie double-checked her seat belt before turning her attention on Jace. Will you talk to me now? What do you want to know? Everything. She would bet growing up in Shady Oaks Trailer Park was only a small piece of a larger puzzle. Whatever you care to tell me. Can I ask you a question first? Millie covered herself with a blanket. What? What's going on with you and the black team? Nothing. A vein twitched at his neck. Matt didn't look too happy about you and Derek. Me and Derek? You two seemed cozy back there. Cozy. Millie laughed, both embarrassed and touched by Jace's, concern. You sound almost jealous? Why would I be jealous? Jace answered quickly. No reason. She brushed aside a twinge of disappointment. I mean, we're just teammates. That's right. Still, tension built between them. She didn't want that. Nothing is going on with me and the black team. Matt's like a big, cute puppy. Cute? Not as cute as Jace. Well, if you're attracted to the dark, athletic, paramedic type. And you are? His one question was turning into several. Millie didn't know whether to be flattered or annoyed. She was supposed to be learning about him. Sometimes. Jace's nostrils flared. What about Derek? My shoulders hurt. He's a physical therapist. He made me feel better. End of story. So what did you want me to tell you? I'd like to hear more about your childhood. He stared at the seat pocket in front of him. My dad left us when I was eight. 
he took everything worth anything. As soon as they signed divorce papers, we never saw him again. My mom never received a penny of child support, either. Millie's heart ached for him. No wonder he felt such a huge responsibility to his family. What did you all do? We sold whatever was left, but couldn't make the rent. No emotion entered his voice. He spoke as if everyone had grown up like this, or the experience had happened to someone else. We got evicted and were living in an old Buick when my uncle gave my mom the trailer. Welcome to Shady Oaks Trailer Park. I remember the weathered sign. There was a giant oak tree with two robins on it. That wasn't what Millie expected to hear. She felt as if she'd been hit over the head with a big stick. You lived in a car? He winced. It wasn't by choice. I know that, but I want to know more. Telling her about his past had to be hard on Jace. Millie was angry with herself for putting him through this. She was also upset with herself for fantasizing during the groom about a future with a man she knew nothing about. One who hadn't trusted her with the truth about how he'd grown up. Not that she blamed him. Not at all. You do what you have to do, he explained. My mom got a job at a company's cafeteria and worked her way up to executive secretary. Why didn't you say anything? Why would I? It's irrelevant, he grumbled under his breath. And not something you broadcast to the world. Pride. He'd kept the truth hidden from her on purpose. He hadn't been playing a role for the camera, he'd been playing a role his whole life. The big protector of his family, the big success with his own business. He couldn't be seen as less than a good man, someone who couldn't care for his family, someone like his father. Look how far you've come, she reassured him. You started with nothing and became a success. A success might be pushing it. It's not. She respected what he'd accomplished and knew others would, too. You're a great role model. Especially for kids in similar situations. You should become a mentor. If I save my company, I'll think about that. Wait. She angled toward him. What do you mean, save? He grimaced before scrubbing his hand over his face. Things haven't been going well, for almost two years. I'd hoped being on the groom would give my firm exposure and bring in new clients, but it had the opposite effect. After seeing me on the show, people closed their accounts, claiming they no longer trusted my judgment. If I can't turn things around, and by that I mean put whatever I win into the business until I get more clients, it'll go under. And then? She remembered what he'd said about his mom and sisters. Your family will be out of jobs. He nodded. That explained his distance and underlying panic. Not to mention the desire not to look back on his past. The aircraft's engines roared, preparing for takeoff. Soon the plane lifted off the runway, climbing toward its cruising altitude. Time to sleep. With that, he closed his eyes. Millie stared at him as if seeing him for the first time. And she was. He'd trusted her with himself. She couldn't have been happier. Even if it was only so they could win the race. That was enough. Chapter 12 In Cape Town, Millie hopped out of the cab at Table Mountain's lower cableway station on Tafelberg Road. Jace followed at her heels. Exactly as they'd planned. Zach cursed as he carried the camera. Ryan struggled to catch up to them. What's gotten into you guys? Millie exchanged a secret smile with Jace. Teamwork, she said, glancing back. She'd thought they'd been working as a team, but a new rapport had developed, a new level of trust. What he'd told her had changed everything. For the better. They'd left the red and orange teams in the dust. They were in the lead and not about to lose first place. The four of them entered the cable car with 30 others before being whisked to the summit, rotating as it ascended to provide passengers a full view of the city below. Hanging from wires didn't give her a warm and fuzzy feeling, so she stared at the floor instead of gazing out the large glass windows. Jace leaned forward. We're almost at the top. I'm ready. And she was. 
Outside, Millie zipped her fleece-lined jacket to combat the cold breeze. Standing on solid ground, she could finally enjoy the panorama of the city sprawl, jutting peaks of stone, and an island in the middle of a carpet of blue water. Jason hailed deeply. We're 3,000 feet up. That's nothing compared to where we've been. He laughed. The race marker is over here. They ran past tourists and hikers toward the spot where a banner blew. Several people stood around. This is it, he said. Millie looked at the harnesses, rope, and helmets. If by some miracle you're not eliminated right away, they'll want you to jump out of an airplane or climb a mountain. Neither of which you have the courage to do. Her father's words and the sinking feeling in her stomach amounted to nothing compared to what lay below her, a pure vertical drop to waves crashing against rocks. She swallowed. Who wants to abseil first, asked a guide with a distinct accent that wasn't quite British. Abseil? What was that? Hope filled her. Maybe she wouldn't have to go over the edge. What does abseil mean? Rappel, love, the man explained. You'll wear a harness that attaches to a rope and descend to the bottom where you'll find the next clue. The blood rushed from her head. She felt lightheaded. She closed her eyes. Oh, boy. Jace touched her shoulder. You can do this. My father said I was a coward. Your father's wrong. Jace stared at her steadily. You're one of the bravest people I know. Thank you. His words gave her strength. She opened her eyes. That sure was a long way down. But I'm not into, um, extreme stuff. I prefer both feet on the ground. Unless surrounded by lots of metal and strapped securely in a seat with a flotation device nearby. You mentioned you don't like heights. Understatement of the year, she muttered. He gave her a reassuring squeeze. She wished he'd hold her instead. You've got more heart than anyone I know. Millie waited for his compliment to give her a boost of confidence. It didn't happen. Thanks, but my heart and I are addicted to breathing. He laughed. We all are. A little fear is natural. The guide held out a harness. It's a pure adrenaline rush. The thrill of a lifetime, but the descent is controlled. Very safe. Jay stepped forward. I'll go first. Does that mean you'll catch me if I fall? Millie tried to sound light-hearted, but she wasn't sure if she succeeded. I'll do my best. The guide outfitted him with a harness, gloves, and a helmet. A few instructions, and the man walked Jace around boulders where he clipped him onto a rope. He stood on the edge, looking like a model from an outdoor magazine. If only this were for a photo shoot and not the real thing. See. Jace held his gloved hands palms up in the air. Nothing to it. Her stomach churned. Good luck, she croaked. As Zack and his camera stayed on top with her, Jace disappeared. No doubt, the show had other cameras set up along the route. The guide shouted out instructions. Millie stared into the distance, past the city below and its outstretched suburbs, to what must be Cape Point, sticking out into the expanse of blue water. Only the sight wasn't as intoxicating as before knowing Jace hung from a rope down a sheer rock face. Thinking of him somewhere below made her legs wobble. Let's get you set up, the guide said. Let's not. He laughed and put her into a harness anyway, instructing her on how to make the abseil. Okay, the rappel didn't sound too difficult, but talking and doing were different. She looked at the camera. I'm not sure about this. The harness will attach to a rope like this. The rope looks too thin, given how much we ate in Buenos Aires. The guide grinned. Don't worry. It's strong. The minutes ticked by. Your teammate is doing fantastic, the guide said. He's almost at the bottom. Great. She cleared her dry throat. Or not so great depending on your perspective. Millie. She turned toward the sound of her name. Karen, Lou's wife, waved at her. Oh, no. The red team had caught up with them. 
Millie nodded in acknowledgement, trying to hide her surprise. Your turn, the guide said. Millie forced herself to breathe. She thought about the students at her school. She had to do this for them if she wanted to continue in the race and win. The guide attached her harness to the rope. Her only consolation was Jace had arrived at the bottom safely. I know you're frightened, the guide said in a soothing voice. But it's only 112 meters down. She did a quick mental calculation. Oh, boy. A little over 360 feet. If she fell. You can do this, the guide continued. He sounded like Jace. Did my teammate tell you to say that? He did. The guide smiled. Nice chap. He is. Standing on the edge of the cliff, Millie thought about Jace's determination to get out of the trailer park. That had to be a hundred times more difficult than abseiling down this, um, mountain. Karen and Lou pulled on their gloves. One of them would start soon. That meant Millie had to go. Now. Still, she hesitated. An image of the cowardly lion from the Wizard of Oz appeared in her mind. You're one of the bravest people I know. Jace was right. She could be brave. Courageous. Nothing was stopping Millie from doing this, except herself. If they wanted the clue, if they wanted to win the million dollars, she had to do this. Even if the task killed her. Heart pounding, she ignored her trembling legs and took the first step down. She glanced up at the guide. You control the descent. He stood on the edge. You won't go anywhere unless you want to. You don't need to hold on. Let go. No way. Let me see your hands, he said. With a deep breath, she let go. The rope attached to her harness held her in place. She didn't move. See. The guide grinned. Now go. Millie continued down, walking backward. Slowly. Carefully. The descent felt controlled. Soon the top seemed non-existent. The noise faded. So did the rock she'd been walking on. Held only by a rope, she hung over Cape Town. Don't think. Just do it. She lowered herself down with the rope. Down, down, she went. Scary, yes, but fun, too. You're doing great, Freckles. Jace. The sound of his voice filled her with relief. Wanting to see him safe, she glanced down. White foam sprayed from the waves crashing below. If the rocks didn't kill her, the pounding water would. She gulped. Don't look down, he said. Just keep going. I can't. Come on. You can do it. Jace encouraged her until she could finally descend again. She reached a point where gravity seemed to take over. Her feet hit the ground, and a person handed her a clue pouch. Satisfaction filled her. She'd made it. I did it. Pride flowed through her. Adrenaline, too. She'd overcome her fear, proving her dad wrong by trusting Jace. A satisfied smile spread across her face. Who was she kidding? Her entire body must be smiling. I really did it. Good job, Freckles. He wrapped his arms around her, squashing the clue bag between them. I know how hard that was for you. I'm so proud of you. Millie was proud, too, but she wanted to sink into Jace's hug. Being in his embrace felt so good. Too good. She backed out of his arms. The red team is right behind us. Lou's halfway down. She took off the harness. Let's get out of here. Thanks. You're welcome. Millie might have told herself she'd done the abseil for her students, but that wasn't 100% true. She'd done it for Jace, too. She hadn't wanted to disappoint him. But I couldn't have made it down without you. Jace didn't know what he would have done without Millie. She showed a map to an older man on a bike to see if he knew where to catch the boat to Robin Island. 
She laughed, the friendly sound lingering in the air and complimenting the music of a street musician at the Victoria and Alfred waterfront, a dock with restaurants, shops, and galleries. The smiling man pointed at the map and said something. No doubt Millie's easygoing manner had put him at ease. The way she'd done time after time asking people for directions. Amazing. Intelligent, strong, friendly, and beautiful, too. He couldn't ask for anything more in a woman. Teammate, he corrected, but each day he spent with Millie made his growing affection for her harder to ignore. Not affection. Attraction. Who wouldn't be physically attracted to an incredibly gorgeous woman? That was all he felt for her. Well, that and respect. Who wouldn't admire a person who overcame her fears every single day? Looking around, the paradox of this beautiful place and the level of poverty he'd seen earlier in one township struck him. Guilt crept down his spine. He never thought he had enough. He always wanted more, but these people had so little. Sometimes, almost nothing. A street peddler, a young boy selling flowers, caught Jace's attention. The boy's clothes were dark, like his skin. His pants too short. His jacket too big. He held a bucket full of ornamental flowers made out of some sort of metal, tin, perhaps, and painted bright colors. He offered a flower to everyone who passed by him. No one had said yes yet, but the boy hadn't given up. He tried harder. Chase watched him. The yearning in the child's eyes probably matched the hunger in his belly. Just like the boy in Guatemala Millie had given money to. Just like Jace twenty years ago. He went toward the boy. Flower, mister, the child said. How much? The boy raised his chin. How much you give me? Jace gave him money left over from this morning's tasks. The kid's big eyes grew wider. Sold, mister. Jace regretted not having more to give him. Grinning, the boy handed him a stem. Danky. As the boy went to his next customer, Jace walked back to Millie. He handed her the flower. For you. Her eyes glistened. Thank you. He shrugged, uncomfortable with the emotion shining in her eyes. It's just a flower. I'm not talking about the flower. Chase shifted from foot to foot. Did you get directions? Don't change the subject. What you just did. Anyone would do the same. No, they wouldn't. She stared at him as if she could see right through him. Chase didn't like that. He felt exposed, vulnerable. He rocked back on his heels. Anything to put distance between them. You might not be so happy after you find out I gave him a bunch of our money. A light shone from her eyes as a grin broke out. I don't mind. And he knew she wouldn't. Millie would rather go hungry than let a child skip a meal. Look what she was willing to do for her students. Jace. It's nothing, he explained, feeling like a fraud. He just reminded me of someone I used to know. She looked at him for a long moment. You. Every single time they spoke, she connected the dots and pegged him. Not that difficult in this case with what he'd told her earlier, but no one he knew did that as well as she did where he was concerned. He wasn't sure he liked it. But he should have learned by now not to try and get away with something around her. Let's go find our next clue. The clue on Robin Island instructed them to drive 30 minutes to a winery in Stellenbosch. A check-in point or another delay, Millie had no idea. As Jace drove on the wrong side of the road through the rolling hills, covered with grapevines, she held the flower he'd given her. Even though it was made of tin, no blossom had smelled sweeter to her. She wanted to add the stem to the report card from her students so she could keep all her mementos together. The car drifted to the right-hand side of the road. Drive on the left, Millie reminded. Thanks, Freckles. He glanced back. Next time, you take the wheel. Warmth settled in the center of her chest. Okay. She'd learned so much about him in the past 24 hours. More puzzle pieces fell into place. She hadn't finished putting all the parts together, but she felt, closer. 
Jace pulled to a stop in front of a winery and scrambled out of the car. There's the clue box. Millie slid from the back seat. Ryan followed her. She grabbed a pouch and unzipped it. A delay card was tucked inside. Welcome to Stellenbosch. South Africa is the eighth largest producer of wines in the world, producing over 1 billion liters annually. You will help a vintner with his harvest. To earn the next clue, each team must stomp enough grape juice to fill a case of wine bottles. Good luck! Millie followed the markers to the stomping area and then removed her socks and shoes. She washed her legs and feet before climbing into a large half barrel. The grape squished under her feet. A sweet fragrance filled the air. Jace joined her. This isn't so bad. She raised her knees higher as she marched. Purple stained her feet and toenails. I feel like I'm at a winery in Tuscany. Have you been to Tuscany? he asked. Not yet, but I'd like to visit someday. Ciao, Bella. Grazie, she replied. Buongiorno. She tried to think of a word. Arrivederci. That's all I know, Jace admitted. Me, too. Unless we name pasta dishes and gelato flavors. He raised a brow. Gelato, huh? My favorite. What flavor do you like best? He asked. You. Um, Basio. What's that? Chocolate hazelnut, she said. I also like Straxiatella. What? Chocolate chip. And here, I thought you were so well versed in official Italian gelato. Jace tossed a grape at her. Be careful, she teased. We might need that one. He smiled. So did she. It felt good to lighten up and have fun. They were no longer role-playing, but she kept glimpsing new sides to him. He wasn't Prince Charming. He also wasn't Rico Suave. Nor was he the heartless groom the media accused him of being after the show ended. Jace Westfall was simply a man doing his best to put his past behind him. The red team arrived. Suddenly the race was on. Karen quickly found her rhythm stomping grapes. She glanced at her husband. Remember our honeymoon in Venice? Lou laughed. I serenaded you. Even though the woman was over twenty feet away from Millie, Karen's hard eyes were clear for all to see, including her estranged husband. And then we danced. Lou took her hand. Maybe if we dance, we'll go faster. Karen smiled at him. I'm game. Millie and Jace exchanged a worried glance. She was happy the couple was getting along better, but she didn't want that to keep them from winning this leg of the race. She glanced at Jace. How many is that? Eleven. One more to go. Done. Lou shouted as Karen hopped out of the barrel. Jace blew out a frustrated breath. Millie touched his forearm. We're almost finished. A minute later, the vintner filled the last blue bottle and handed Jace a clue pouch. He ripped it apart. Check in. Grape juice dripped down their legs. A shower would have been nice, but there was no time. They towed off their purple feet, slipped on their socks and shoes, and left their packs behind. Lou and Karen ran hard, but as the path angled abruptly uphill, Jace and Millie passed them. Running side by side, they increased their distance from the red team. The check-in point was so close. Adrenaline surged. We did it. Excitement filled Jace's voice. Millie felt like skipping. Told you so. You did. He hit the mat first. Yes. As soon as she joined him on it, he laced his fingers with hers. Millie and Jace. Colt didn't hide a smile this time. You are the first team to arrive. You win $30,000. Jace picked Millie up and spun her around. She giggled. He placed her on the ground, and the two of them faced Colt. She bounced from foot to foot. She couldn't believe they'd won another leg and more money. She had $25,000 for her school. And Jace. He shot her a quick grin. 
Jace had won 25000 for his business and his family. Not bad for the boy from the trailer park. You now have a 12-hour layover, Colt said. So rest up. Jace nodded. We will. Millie's mind kept racing. I've figured out the layover. Ten minutes to shower. Twenty minutes to eat. And eleven and a half hours to sleep. His mouth slanted. Sleep, huh? She nodded. I keep daydreaming about a full night's sleep. Do you plan to sleep alone? Jace asked in a heavily accented voice. She laughed. I thought we left Rico, swap back in Buenos Aires. Does that mean Evita will never make another appearance? Millie stared down her nose at him. Never say never. She wouldn't mind dancing the tango with Jace or even kissing him again. Not as Evita, but as herself. Chapter 13 The white sand beach on Maha Island in the Seychelles was breathtaking. Millie never imagined seeing the Indian Ocean. If only she could enjoy her time here. Maybe someday she could return. Now she had to find something better to wear for her next solo stoppage. Kneeling on the cabana floor, she dug through her pack. Nerves threatened to overwhelm her. She forced herself not to glance at the blue bikini she'd removed two minutes ago. Perhaps a production assistant had taken pity when stuffing Millie's backpack full of clothing and tossed in a one-piece, too. Please be in here. The race was going so well. She and Jace had been working flawlessly together since South Africa. They'd remained at the top of the pack. The team to beat. She was pleased, except now they would separate to complete their solo stoppage challenges. Her task? Photograph six specific types of fish while snorkeling. Which was why she needed to find a one-piece swimsuit. The teeny, tiny blue bikini wouldn't work. Are you ready? Jace asked from outside. Of course, he was ready. He didn't need any special clothing to go fishing, but his voice didn't sound impatient. She glanced at the bikini. Almost. If only she'd chosen the bottom solo stoppage task instead of top, then she would be the one bottom fishing and swimwear wouldn't be an issue. Hurry, Jace called from outside. Give me another minute. Millie could make up that amount of time. She searched the inner zipped pockets. She couldn't imagine the show packing only bikinis for the female contestants, especially the orange grannies. Connie. Millie's heart tightened. The orange team had been cancelled after Ava refused to stomp grapes, leaving Connie to do the task on her own. The black and green teams passed them and they were sent home. If Millie didn't hurry, her team would be next. She picked up the two wisps of fabric. Okay, she'd never worn a bikini. Not on the groom. Not even as a teenager. Modest? Yes. But mostly she was afraid of being inadequate. Too flat. Too fat. Too unattractive. Her own litany inspired by her father's constant criticism. And now. The black team is here. The impatience in Jace's voice prodded her. She couldn't wait any longer. Millie stripped out of her shorts, t-shirt, and undergarments, hopping around on one foot. Wearing the bikini wouldn't be as scary as abseiling or as frustrating as leading an ox cart on the picturesque island of La Diga. She sprayed on sunscreen. If Jace made fun of her. Millie gritted her teeth. No, he wouldn't do that. He'd enjoyed Evita's plunging neckline and the thigh-high slits in her skirt, hadn't he? He would like this. At least she hoped so. Millie tugged the bikini bottom up over her hips and tied the top. She inhaled sharply. The small blue pieces didn't cover much. Don't think about it. Here goes nothing. Freckles, he called out. She ran out of the cabana with her water socks in her hand. Here I am. Jace, wearing blue shorts and a matching t-shirt, stood with whiter-than-white sand beach under his water sandals, swaying palm trees to his right and crystal blue water to his left. A breeze rustled the fronds. Talk about a picturesque sight. 
Millie inhaled deeply, filling her lungs with the sea air. She would definitely return someday. Jace, however, wasn't admiring the beautiful scenery. He stared at her. So did Ryan. Even Zack peered around the camera eyepiece at her. The appreciative gleam in their eyes made her shrink for a moment before she stood taller. Maybe wearing the bikini had been a good idea. Not that Millie had a choice. Jace cleared his throat. His gaze lingered, practically caressed. A slow heat burned its way through her. She'd never felt so desirable in her life. Ready? For what? Hitting the bottom, she reminded. I'm all set to be on top. So am I, babe. Derek clapped his hands together as he walked out of the other cabana in black swim trunks with Matt, in black shorts and a t-shirt, at his heels. Wow, Millie, you look hot. Matt whistled. Totally hot. Hot. Millie wiggled her toes in the warm sand. She wasn't used to being called that. Idiots, Jace muttered. He was only looking out for her, the way he did with his mom and sisters, but Millie didn't want to be yet another responsibility to him. He didn't need that. They're harmless, she said, nonchalantly. Anyway, I can take care of myself. Especially with these two. Derek was a dude, and Matt was a cutie. Outrageous flirts, yes, but their over-the-top compliments and silly innuendos boosted her confidence. I have these two under control. Hear that, groom dude? Under control. Derek checked out her backside. Man, Millie. I knew you had a nice bod, but not one so, sweet. She laughed. I'll miss you when this is over. Jace's gaze hardened. If we don't get started, the race will be over sooner than we'd like. Millie flushed. Right. Let's go. As they jogged to the snorkeling and fishing guides, she was conscious of the bikini providing little support and coverage. The fishing guide led Jace away. With a wave, she hurried to the snorkeling site as Derek fell in step with her. You chose top? I chose top, too, he said. I've started relationships with less in common. Do those lines ever work? she asked. He grinned. You'd be surprised. Millie could imagine women falling for his easygoing charm. Just not her. A phone rang. Only once, but the sound cut through the air. A strange noise to hear on a nearly deserted beach. The film crew had cell phones, but contestants had given Pete's number to their families to use in case of an emergency. She'd left the contact info with her father's assistant, but she knew he'd never call her. Still, she glanced over her shoulder. The camera crews and production assistants crowded around Pete. Oh. Millie hoped nothing was wrong. Wonder what's up? Derek asked. Her, too, but she needed to focus. All I know is I plan on finishing before you. She sprinted ahead, kicking up sand as she ran. Derek chased after her. That groom dude is one lucky guy. He could have ruined everything today. That evening, Jace stood on the veranda of the hotel in Seychelles with a drink in hand. The show was throwing the contestants a party later, but he appreciated this rare moment of solitude. The temperature had cooled slightly but was still comfortable. A far cry from the cold temperatures on that South American glacier. If Jace had his choice, he would rather be where they'd experienced success than here where they'd, he'd, almost let them lose. Below, waves rolled to shore. Insects buzzed. Birds cawed. A perfect tropical setting, complete with a soundtrack. Setting was the correct word. The colonial-style architecture of the hotel resembled a movie set. Jace wasn't sure what was real or not anymore. He leaned against the railing. Did you hear? Millie asked from behind him. The camera crews have the night off. Do you know what that means? Feeling guilty, he didn't look back at her. We won't have to smile at the party? Exactly. That's great, he said. Did you say goodbye to Karen and Lou? Yes. 
Millie joined him at the railing. They weren't surprised to finish last. It could have been them. Jace forced himself to look at her. What he saw didn't disappoint him. The sexy off-the-shoulder style and above the knee hem of her blue cocktail dress, however, shocked him. She'd never worn dresses like that during the groom. Then again, he'd never seen her in a swimsuit let alone a bikini until today, either. He liked what he saw. They ran a solid race. The ends of Millie's wavy hair bounced with each nod of her head. Her eyes were clear and bright. I think they'll make it. Their marriage, I mean. Good for them. At least the show had stopped a divorce. That had to count for something. He took a sip from his drink. Will everything be okay? Concern filled her voice. I mean, with your business and family? The questions in her eyes when they'd checked in for this leg of the race had told him she would ask. A quick rundown about his youngest sister's call had been met with nothing but understanding. Still, Millie deserved to know more. Everything. But that didn't make telling her any easier. Taking another drink, he watched a bird soar over the Indian Ocean, swoop down, and snag dinner. He felt like the fish, with talons dug into its skin. Might as well get this over with. Yes. He'd put out a major fire with a client thanks to Pete who had allowed the conversation with Jace's sister to happen. That had given him the opportunity to keep his largest client from taking his assets to another firm. But talking to his sister and then the client had delayed Jace from getting on the fishing boat, jeopardizing the race for him and Millie. I'm sorry, Freckles. There's no reason to apologize. We could have been eliminated. We finished fourth. Out of five teams, he said, feeling like a useless jerk. You completed our task first and had to wait. Four hours. Not knowing what had happened on my end. She shrugged a bare shoulder. Her soft, smooth skin shimmered in the moonlight. I was relieved nothing bad had happened to you. That might have made this easier to deal with. Don't say that. Your family needed you, Jace, she said. I respect how you kept your priorities straight in the middle of all this. That's not an easy thing to do. How could she make him feel so good when moments ago he'd felt like a complete loser? Millie had become the one constant he could rely on during both shows. Not once had she let him down, before or now. She always gave her total support and understanding. He felt humbled and grateful. Thank you. She smiled at him. You'd do the same for me. Jace hoped so, not wanting to disappoint her. Again. He stared at the moon, its crescent shape identical to the lagoon below. No matter what happens, don't forget we've won $50,000, she said with an upbeat tone. That's nothing to hang our heads about. No kidding. Teaming with Millie had shown Jace he'd never known the real her. On the groom, he'd only seen a quiet woman who made him feel comfortable in his role as protector and caretaker. He hadn't realized she had her own strengths. During this race, she not only pulled her own weight, but had taken care of him, too. He stared at her. Proud. You're amazing. Millie's confidence sparkled in her green eyes. She practically glowed, and he found her irresistible. Why are you staring? she asked. I can't help myself, Freckles. She twirled around. Like the dress? Yes, but that's not why I can't keep my eyes off you. He set his drink on a nearby table. You're the sexiest woman I've ever known, Millie Kincaid. That's not true, Desiree. Knew she was sexy, he finished for Millie. In that kind of confidence, well, it's attractive. But you aren't that confident. You're not conceited, he countered. And that is very, very sexy. Thank you, she said softly, staring at him through her eyelashes, which only made her more beautiful. Her silhouette against the tropical setting took his breath away. No, thank you. He leaned toward her and brushed his lips over hers. A taste was all he wanted. And he got it. Sweet, warm, Millie. Completely intoxicating. Utterly addicting. 
One taste, however, would never be enough. He kept his lips against hers and kissed her again. Her scent, a mix of citrus and sunscreen, surrounded him. He should stop, but what did logic know? It might matter later, but he had only one thought on his mind now. Millie. And more kisses. Was that more than one thing? Jace wrapped his arms around her, deepening the kiss. She willingly followed, leaning into him until she couldn't move any closer. His hands splayed across the smooth skin on her back. Her chest pressed against his. Blood rushed through his veins. He wanted more of her. Who was he kidding? He wanted all of her. Hunger took over, but she didn't seem to mind. Her lips eagerly moved over his, taking all he offered, giving all she could. Millie tilted her head back. Jace accepted her invitation, trailing kisses up and down her neck. He nibbled on her earlobe. She moaned. The sensual sound pushed him to the edge. Common sense told him to stop, but Millie apparently hadn't heard. Or seemed to care if she had. Her lips pressed harder against his. Searching, seeking, finding. The same as his did. Except Jace knew what he'd found. Paradise. And that had nothing to do with the white sand beaches, the blue-green waters, rustling palm trees, and the sliver of moon hanging over the star-filled sky, but everything to do with the woman he kissed. He'd felt incomplete his entire life, but with Millie in his arms, with her lips against his, he felt, whole. That scared him. Okay, it terrified him. Jace dragged his lips from hers. Wow, she said. Wow was right. And that was very bad. He wasn't kissing Evita in the tango bar. This was Millie standing in this tropical Shangri-La, sweet, capable, sexy Millie who stared at him with eyes full of emotion, eyes full of desire, eyes full of hope. His chest tightened. What had he done now? Jace sucked in a breath. And how in the world would he fix it? Where was Jace going? As Millie stared at him walking toward the door, she tried to steady her uneven breaths, calm her speeding pulse. Don't run away. He stopped and turned. I'm not running away. Then where are you going? A beat passed. The party's starting. Who cares about the party? She didn't. Not when her lips throbbed and her insides quivered from his kiss. We need to talk. His mouth slanted. He didn't want to talk, but she wouldn't let him escape that easily. Too much was at stake. And not only the race. Just for a minute. Please, she added. He nodded once. Uncertainty washed over her. Millie knew what she'd felt in his arms with his lips on hers. She didn't want to lose that. In his kiss, she found the acceptance she'd been searching for all her life. In his arms, she found the security she hadn't known she'd been seeking. In his life. No, she couldn't get ahead of herself. Especially when his back-and-forth behavior was enough to give her whiplash. She wet her lips. What just happened? Was a mistake. His tone was determined. His eyes dark. I'm sorry. Jace didn't want her. The words pierced her heart like a flaming arrow. Old insecurities threatened to overwhelm her until she thought about their kiss. He hadn't kissed Millie like a man who had no feelings for her. His kiss told her he cared about her. So, what was going on with this hot and cold routine? She needed to find out before this affected not only the two of them but also the outcome of the race. You're sorry? For giving her a taste of heaven or calling the kiss a mistake? Or both? Millie tilted her chin. For what? He pressed his lips together. If you want to take your time to answer, that's fine. She sat on one of the comfortable chairs, sunk into the plush pillows, and stared at the lagoon below. I'm not in any rush. He started to speak and then stopped himself. Millie felt his gaze on her, but she wouldn't glance his way. She couldn't waver. This wasn't only about the kiss or the race. This was about her. How she'd kept up with him, held her own, and kissed him back. 
more was at stake than money. Sorry for kissing you, he said finally. She studied him. You didn't enjoy it? He flinched. Surprised? She hoped so. Or did you enjoy the kiss too much? Millie continued, even though she wasn't one who normally pressed. His jaw tensed. We're trying to win a million dollars. We need to concentrate on the race. Kisses would be too distracting. Yes. The word shot out. Completely distracting. His words pleased her. Flattered her, too. Okay, this she could deal with. She couldn't deny he made a good point. Kisses would be a distraction, she admitted. We've got a strong team. We don't want to jeopardize that. And risk losing the million dollars, she added. Your family needs it. And your students. But that wasn't all. At least not for Millie. Her feelings for Jace were more grounded this time because of what they'd experienced and achieved together during the race. She'd gotten to know him better, seeing past his perfect, charming image to the real man underneath, a man she wanted to know better. Fear of embarrassment wasn't holding her back. Fear of not having her feelings returned, however, was. She couldn't forget what had happened on the other show. Now Jace wanted to win at any cost. He'd never attempted to hide that. What if kissing her was only a way to keep their team together? Even if it wasn't, a reality television show wasn't the place for a relationship to bloom. She'd learned that lesson on the first show. Which meant. Getting together in front of a television audience wouldn't be a good idea, either. Nope. So we agree, she asked. No more kisses. No more kisses, during the race. Interesting wording. During the race. Millie hoped that meant more kisses after they crossed the finish line. Anticipation burst through her. A lot more kisses. Chapter 14. Not kissing Millie was easy. Even without the cameras rolling, it wasn't difficult for Jace to avoid putting his lips on hers. The party at the hotel was too loud. Too public. The flight from Seychelles to Rome was too long with Zach pointing his stupid camera over the back of his seat at them. Even during takeoff and landing. Ditto the train ride from Rome to Milan. So, okay, maybe Jace had spent a minute, or two, or twenty, watching Millie sleep, her dark lashes in stark contrast to her pale face and light freckles, her hand curled under her cheek, but he hadn't thought about kissing her. Not that much, anyway. Besides, who had time for kissing when they were solving a puzzle challenge at Il Duomo di Milano or hunting clues among the bustling shops of Via Monte Napoleon? No, Chase didn't need to kiss Millie. He wouldn't kiss her. Except now, watching her drive a race car at Autodromo Nazionale di Monza, he couldn't think about anything else. It was the car. Hot, tight, fast. Any guy would fantasize watching a Ferrari being put through its paces and roaring by him only yards away. It was the track. What red-blooded man's heart wouldn't skip a beat at the home of the Formula One Italian Grand Prix? The park setting with big trees shading the infield. The smell of oil and fuel, burning rubber, and exhaust fumes perfuming the air. It was. Wee! Derek hooped. Look at how the sweet thing handles that car. She thundered through the Cava Parabolica, a long 180-degree corner, and poured on the speed through the main straightaway. Who was Jace kidding? It was Millie. Her confidence. Her competence. Her joy. Well, and the way she looked in her form-fitting race suit didn't suck. She drove a perfect line through the chicane, a serpentine curve. Pride filled him. He only hoped this task and everything else she'd accomplished so far would finally make her father take a long, hard look at his courageous daughter. Go, freckles! Chase shouted. If she kept it up, they would post the best qualifying time of the four teams. The fastest team won the right to stand on the podium that protruded over the pit lane and straightaway and received the first clue pouch. But this task was as much for Millie as it was about the time. Derek leaned forward. Man, that girl is good. 
she was good, in her heart, in her soul. She was one of the truly nicest people Jace had ever met. And she could drive. Fast. She's just getting started, Jace said with confidence. He had zero doubt in her abilities. That's as fast as the instructor sitting next to you will let you go. Matt, who'd driven first, still wore his black driver's suit, but he'd pulled the top portion down and tied the sleeves around his waist. The teams were stuck at the track until all four drove. Clues would be distributed based on qualifying time. Any faster, you'll go off the course or into the wall. Hitting the wall. Spinning off into the infield. Jace's gut tightened. Hold it together, Freckles. Why aren't you driving, Jace? Matt asked, challenge in his voice. It wouldn't have been fair if I drove. Matt sneered. Yeah, right. You've raced before, groom dude? Derek asked. Jace nodded. Ever heard of SCCA solo or autocross? Realization dawned on Matt's face. Seriously? He nodded again. Man Matt shook his head. It must kill you not to be out there. It did, but this had been Millie's turn to drive. Jace might have wanted the chance, but he hadn't been willing to take the opportunity away from her. Together, they'd made it this far. Together, they would finish the race. She's hauling, Derek said. Matt jabbed his teammate in the arm. Not as fast as me. She's faster, dude, Derek said. Jace nodded. A lot faster. Derek laughed. Your girl is going to beat you, Matt O. His girl? As the muscles in Jace's shoulders tensed, his gaze darted between the other two men. She's not beating my time. Matt sounded more like a young kid than a twenty-something man. And she's not mine, yet. He slapped hands with Derek in a high-five gesture. Juvenile morons. Jace gritted his teeth. Knock it off. You haven't scored. And he wouldn't, either. Not with sweet Millie. His Millie. Matt glanced at Jace. She said you guys were just friends. I figured the door was open. Time to slam it shut. We are friends, Jace said. Close friends since the race started. Matt motioned to Derek. Us, too. You know it, dude, Derek said. In a totally I may have to sleep with you but no funny stuff way, I mean. Totally. Jace thought again of how Millie looked sleeping on the train and smiled. So how close have you and Millie gotten? Matt asked suspiciously. Like you said, no funny stuff. Whoa, Derek said. You haven't slept with her yet? Jace wanted to discourage Matt but she would never forgive him if he implied they were having sex on national television. Millie's a great teammate. Under different circumstances, I'd love to take it to the next level. But? But what? Matt leaned forward. Spill, man. Jace hesitated. What could he say to keep Matt away? Millie Kincaid is high maintenance, Jace said finally. Not in the money way but she expects a lot from a relationship. She's a forever kind of girl. Not the fling type. Which is what made her so special. Derek snickered and elbowed Matt. Told you so. What makes you think I'm looking for a fling? Matt asked. Because you're a paramedic, Derek said. A firefighter. Chicks dig that. Why settle for one when you could have many? Exactly. Jace couldn't believe he agreed with Derek on something. Millie won't settle for being anything but a man's number one. She deserved no less. Which was why it would be impossible for Jace to give her what she needed. The realization left him feeling, unsettled. Derek shivered. Scary. Very. Jace's feelings about her confused him more than they had during the groom. Millie loves her job and the small town where she lives. She won't leave her comfort zone. Each word coming out of his mouth sounded so wrong. All Millie had done since they started the race was step out of her comfort zone. You're wrong, man. That doesn't sound like the Millie I know, Matt said. 
It didn't sound like the woman Jace knew, either. He'd pigeonholed her. During the groom and cash around the globe. Sweet, unworldly, small-town Millie. He had no idea what she was like at home or what home meant to her or what home even looked like to her. He hadn't wanted to know. Thinking of Millie so simplistically had made walking away easier for Jace. He could pretend he was doing the right thing for her, when really he was only protecting himself. I'm still going for it. Her, Matt said, sounding determined. Like I said before, she's a keeper. She wants the entire package. Jace figured Millie's dream would dead bolt the door on the paramedic. A devoted husband, a minivan in the driveway of a house with a picket fence, a couple kids, and a dog. A chocolate lab named Hershey. She told me, Matt interrupted. Me, too. I want all of that. This guy knew what she wanted to name her dog. Jace hadn't known that. He shifted his weight to the other foot. Not good. Especially when Matt had more to offer. A steady paycheck and benefits. No struggling business to save. No needy family to care for. As Jace stared at the blue car racing around the track, a weight pressed down on his chest. His heart might as well be the accelerator pedal beneath Millie's foot. Matt could give her all the things she wanted. All the things she deserved. What Jace couldn't. Don't get ahead of yourself, dude. Derek snickered. You haven't even been alone together. A determined expression formed on Matt's face. I've seen enough during the race to know she's perfect for me. The words race and perfect told Jace what he needed to know. Don't get swept up in the fantasy of reality television, he cautioned. Emotions are exaggerated. People seem different. But once the cameras stop filming, real life crashes down on you. Listen to the groom dude, Matto, Derek said. Millie deserves a happily ever after. Jace watched the blue car stop. Ask yourself if you can deliver one or not. Matt's eyes brightened. So that's why you chose Desiree. It wasn't a question. Good, because Jace didn't, couldn't, answer. I'd have chosen Desiree, too. Derek blew on the tips of his fingers. She was hot. Hot, yes. But she was also driven and ambitious. A romantic relationship hadn't interested her, not at the expense of her acting career. She'd only gone on the show for the exposure. Which meant, Jace winced, Desiree was just like him. Would you choose Desiree? Or Millie? Matt asked. If you had to choose over again. Millie exited the car, a mixture of grace and athleticism. Her driving instructor helped her remove the blue helmet. Damp hair plastered to her head, she waved. Desire hit him low and hard, but his feelings for her went deeper than physical attraction. She was smart, caring, funny, loyal. Everything about her, from her freckles to her dedication to her students, had endeared her to him. She wasn't perfect, but she was close. His heart knew what choice to make. Millie. As his throat worked mechanically, he forced himself to breathe. Choosing Millie, then or now, would change everything and throw his life into a tailspin. Just the thought left Jace feeling as if he'd crashed into a wall going 180 miles an hour. He would never walk away in one piece. And that was the bottom line. With Millie, he had no control over his heart, his emotions, his life. He'd known it from the beginning. Desiree had been a safer choice. Desiree's a better match. Safer, not better. Millie headed his way with a bounce to her step and a beaming smile on her face. We're in first place. Great job. Jace fought the urge to pull her into his arms. He shook her hand instead. Her skin was soft and smooth, but the action felt wrong and awkward and he couldn't wait to let go. You'll be hard to beat. Her eyes sparkled. Don't you mean we'll be hard to beat? We. He wet his lips. Yeah, sorry. The groom dude sorry. Derek snickered. But not as sorry as he'll be when Millie hears who he'd choose all over again. When I hear what? She asked. Chase clenched his teeth. Shut up. 
Mad hummed a tune. Isn't that the song Desiree by Keith Urban? Millie asked. Derek laughed. And with that we're out of here. The two men walked away, leaving Jace with a confused-looking Millie and an eager cameraman filming every word. What's going on, Jace? Her forehead creased. And what does it have to do with Desiree? Are you going to tell me, Jace? Millie didn't care that Zack and Ryan stood next to them. Who knew when she would have Jace alone? Jace stared at the car on the track being driven by Crystal from the Purple Team. The guys asked me if I would choose Desiree if I had to do it all over again. And you said. I said she was a better match for me. Oh. The word popped out of Millie's mouth. She didn't know what else to say. Not when everything she thought she knew about Jace, about their future together, had suddenly blown up in a matter of seconds. You said choosing Desiree had been a mistake. Because I wasn't in love with her. Good answer. But not, unfortunately, the one Millie was hoping for. Waiting for. She wanted to hear Jace tell her that he was in love with her. That not choosing her had been a mistake, one he hoped to rectify as soon as the race was over. She would forgive him. She'd already forgiven him. But he didn't say a word. He hadn't been able to express his real feelings at the hotel when the cameras weren't rolling. She'd been content to wait on the promise of something more, but no longer. She didn't think of herself as quiet and anxious. She wanted to know the truth. Why would you say Desiree is the better match? Millie asked, impatience getting the best of her. We have the same priorities and want the same things out of life. Baloney. Excuse me? I don't believe you. Millie wasn't about to listen to this. I watched the groom. Each episode killed me, but I paid attention. You never kissed Desiree the way you kiss me. He flinched. Millie wasn't sorry for challenging him on camera. Not when she needed to pin him down. Jace wet his lips. Okay, but. You never talked to her the way you talked to me. True, but. So stop the bull and tell me what's going on? Jace flinched. What's gotten into you? You. I want to know where I stand. He smiled at her, warm and charming as ever. After the way you drove, you'll be standing on the winner's podium. This time, Millie wouldn't allow him to deflect her with a compliment and a joke. She swallowed. I'm not talking about the race. Has everything you've said to me, everything you've done, been part of the show? A ploy to win? He rubbed his neck. You're not pulling your punches today. Answer my question, please. Her voice came out harsher than she intended. You kissed me. Are you telling me that didn't mean anything? When I kissed you. Something was there when we kissed. Thank goodness. And afterward. He hesitated. Well. She couldn't let up. Do you think we're getting caught up in the fantasy again? That what's happening is, because we've been thrown together in the race? Jace didn't answer. Not okay, but she had another question for him. Is this all an act, or do we have something real we can build on? He took a breath and then another. Whether or not it's real, I have other commitments, Millie. To my work. To my family. I can't give you the life you want. She let the words sink in. I like you, freckles. Like, not love. A sense of deja vu overcame her. Her heart went numb. I really do, he continued earnestly. But I'm not in a position to be a husband or father. Because of your business and family. Among other things, he said. You deserve more than I can give you. She listened to his words, half stunned, half outraged. We're better off as only teammates, he added. Tears stung her eyes, but she blinked them away. You know what, Jace? What? You're right. She squared her shoulders. We are better off as teammates. You're a wonderful person, he said, his expressive blue eyes sincere. And a great competitor. 
you deserve to win and have that happily ever after. He was breaking her heart. Again. But she'd learned something valuable this time. Millie raised her chin. I deserve more than that. I deserve a man who isn't afraid to go after what he wants in life. Or me. Jay stiffened. Who's afraid? Not me. Disappointed and humiliated and miserable, yes. But. I won't be afraid any longer. Holding her head high, she walked away. The urge to glance over her shoulder was strong, but she couldn't. Wouldn't. And she didn't. Chapter 15 Teammates? Millie thought miserably two days later. Great competitors? Ha. Huh. They avoided fighting on camera. In fact, they barely spoke to each other at all. Their lack of communication, the tension seething below the surface, was taking its toll. They'd been lucky to get out of Helsinki on the same flight as the other three teams. How much farther? Jace asked as he drove from a reindeer farm outside Rovaniemi, the capital of Lapland in northern Finland. She checked the map again. Three kilometers. I thought you said three kilometers two kilometers ago. I might have misread the distance. She crinkled the edge of the map. Sorry. We can't afford to make mistakes. I'm doing my best. Millie hoped she sounded cheerful and not angry. Or exhausted. The show must have assumed, since the sun never dipped below the horizon in the Arctic Circle in July the racers didn't need to sleep, but the so-called endless night was catching up to them. Well, her. Figuring out a map in a language I don't read when I haven't slept in 24 hours isn't easy. He attempted a smile. You should have tried reindeer lassoing. I had my hands full feeding the herd. Millie yawned. The tiredness had increased the tension between them. Italy had only been a stop on the race to Finland. At least no sleep meant no dreams about Jace. She hated her subconscious betraying her resolve to put him out of her mind and heart once and for all. He glanced back. Do you want to take a nap? No, thanks. She sat straighter. A check-in point has to be coming up unless they want the top three teams to fade during the final leg. You're probably right. Though Jace didn't sound totally convinced. This Santa visit has everything to do with the December finale air date, so there's a good chance the layover will be in Lapland. He was attempting to talk to her. To recapture the easy communication they'd enjoyed before. Before she'd practically begged him to tell her they had a future, and he'd told her he wanted to be friends. Millie clasped her hands. Christmas in July, remember? Yes. That's why we're on our way to Santa's place. He didn't sound too pleased about it, but he hadn't sounded happy since Monza. Neither of them had. Let's just hope they don't stick us in red suits and ask us to play Santa. Despite her misery, the prospect of Jace in costume made her smile. Want to practice your ho, ho, hoes just in case? Zack and Ryan nodded enthusiastically. No, Jace said. But you can. Ryan mouthed a heartfelt please. Millie didn't want to, but she forced a smile at the camera, anyway. Ho, ho, ho. Weak. Jay scoffed. Very weak. At least I'm not afraid to try, she snapped. He stared out the windshield. The camera continued to roll. Oops. She tried again. Ho, ho, ho. Good job, Jay said, his voice sounding forced. Zack gave her a thumbs-up sign. Ryan blew her a kiss. At least the film crew was happy. That made two out of the four. She sighed. Santa's place is on the right. Jace parked. They entered a quaint-looking facility that made Christmas in July seem like a real possibility. An elf, complete with pointed hat, ears, and shoes, led them into Santa's office. The big man will be here soon. A large wooden chair sat by a fireplace with a giant black pot hanging in front of it. The fire crackled and popped, 
reminding Millie of the cold winters in central Oregon, except she'd never felt so far away from home. Two benches flanked each side of the chair. Take a seat. The elf walked out, the bells on his shoes jingling. Jay sat on the bench closest to the fireplace. Millie sat on the opposite one. A tense silence filled the air. Forget being teammates. They were more like strangers now. Ho, ho, ho. Santa wore a red vest over a white long-sleeved shirt, green pants, and brown boots. Only his pointy red hat, rosy cheeks, wire-rimmed glasses, and long white beard were like the Santa she'd known as a child. He sat between them. It's never too early to plan for Christmas. What would you like Santa to bring you? Jace raised his eyebrows. How about a shiny new bike? Santa didn't smile at his joke. Not many men would be content with that. What do most people want, she asked. Fame. Santa adjusted his glasses. Wealth. Love. Health. We've had enough fame, Jace muttered. Santa's eyes were shrewd. Then, wealth? Or love? Millie's heart constricted. Wealth, Jace said, as she expected he would, even if she'd hoped for a different request. Bring me two decent financial statements for my business, and I'll handle the rest. Santa pulled at his beard. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Jay said. And what would you like this year? Santa asked Millie. Love. But not the one-sided love she felt for Jace. She remembered what she'd said to him. I deserve a man who isn't afraid to go after what he wants in life. Or me. I want. She lowered her voice slightly. A happily ever after. Jace inhaled sharply. Not surprising. He didn't want that from life. Or with her. Can you be more specific? Santa asked. Millie leaned toward him, his curly white beard tickling her chin, and whispered so only he could hear. I want a husband who loves me, healthy children, a house of our own, and a dog. Santa's mouth quirked. That's a tall order. She sighed. I know. But she didn't want to settle for less. I'll do my best. Santa thought for a moment. Anything else you want in case I run into problems? How about the dog, she suggested loud enough so Jace and the film crew could hear. A puppy, that is. A chocolate lab puppy, Jace added. Named Hershey. Her gaze jerked toward him. How did you know? He shrugged. Lucky guess. It didn't matter. He didn't matter. Santa's blue eyes twinkled. He released a booming ho, ho, ho. I might be able to pull this off after all. A puppy wouldn't be so bad. A puppy would keep her company. A puppy would love her back. No more unrequited love. That was her new motto. Thank you, Santa. Santa smiled. Be good, and you'll get what you want. Millie's heart ached. Being good had gotten her nowhere. It hadn't been enough to get her Jace's love. Then again, nothing would do that. Be good, and you'll get what you want. Jace didn't know what else he wanted anymore, except to win. And he was afraid that wouldn't happen now. He paced the length of the lodge where the teams had spent an extended layover. He and Millie had lost their edge, their teamwork, everything. She was all he could think about. In Italy, he'd watched her walk away from him. Forever. Since then, he'd fought a growing panic. He'd tried to control his thoughts and the unfamiliar emotions but couldn't. He didn't know what to try next or how to fix things. She put her toiletry bag into her backpack. Her face was pale. Even though they'd slept in beds, dark circles were under her eyes as if she'd stayed awake all night. Maybe she had. If not for the purple team taking a wrong turn, they would have been the ones sent home instead of finishing in third place. Dumb luck. No skill required. Their performance, or lack of it, had been weighing on him, too. Which meant he needed to fix this. 
Jace only hoped he could. We need to regroup. The red light on the camera mocked him. He deserved it. We could have been cancelled. I know. She stared at the floor. I'm sorry. I've been a little distracted. And upset ever since. Monza. She nodded. Me, too. He took a deep breath. Want to start over? Her gaze jerked up to meet his. Can we? Yes. He wanted to return to how things had been between them before everything fell apart. Maybe then the hole inside of him would disappear. It might be the only way to stay in the race. Okay, it's just. Not liking the sound of her voice, he leaned toward her. What is it, Freckles? I know I'm racing for my school, but I'm, I'm ready for this to end. Jace had agreed to be on the show with one goal in mind, to win. Taking care of his family had consumed his life. He strived to be successful for them, to make up for what his father had stolen from them, stability. But now, thanks to Millie, he wondered if he was missing out on more of what life offered. Maybe he had been afraid. Maybe once his life got on track, when his business no longer struggled and his family was self-sufficient, he would have more to give, someone. Have you considered what happens if we don't win? She asked. Every single day. I'm trying not to. Me, too, but today as we were heading to the check-in point, I believed we were last. She zipped her pack. I came up with a contingency plan in case we, well, were sent home. He admired her for thinking ahead. Smart idea. She eyed him wearily. I thought you would say to think positively. No at the beginning he had, but not now. He was the last person to say that when he'd been anything but positive himself. Tell me your plan. I can raise the money myself, she explained. I've never put myself out there, but after this race, I think I could do it. She made him proud. That's the spirit, Freckles. But I'd rather not, she admitted. You won't have to. We will win. She smiled at him. Together. Jace forced an answering smile. He had no other choice. Together. From Finland, they flew to Canada. Horseback riding in Calgary. White water rafting near Banff National Park. And now, together they would either succeed or fail. The thought of failing had flitted through Jace's brain during the race, but they always pulled through. Somehow. Would that continue? Heart pounding, he reread the delay card. Each team member must do a tandem skydive jump with a professional instructor to receive the next clue. Only one team per plane. If one or both members choose not to jump, a three-hour penalty will be assessed. Millie tugged on a strand of hair. There are so many other things we could do in Canada, you think they could come up with something more original than skydiving. Her casual words might have masked her fear to anyone else, but he knew better. She was afraid of heights. Just because she'd abseil didn't mean she was ready to skydive. If one or both members choose not to jump, a three-hour penalty would kill any chances they had of winning. What do you want to do? he asked. She stared up at the cloudless blue sky. I want to get in that plane before the other teams arrive. His heart swelled with pride. You're really something, you know that? Her smile trembled. I told you I wouldn't be afraid anymore, but... He touched her shoulder. But what? Let's get up there before I change my mind. Jace knew how frightened Millie must be, but she didn't show an ounce of fear. He longed to kiss her. Who was he kidding? He wanted to hold her in his arms and never let go. Instead, he squeezed gently before lowering his arm. Thank you. Don't thank me yet, she said. I haven't jumped. She wouldn't let him down. He grabbed his blue jumpsuit, helmet, and goggles. You'll do it. Right. She picked up her equipment. Even if I'm sure it'll kill me. You won't die. How do you know? The producers would never allow it to happen. He hoped to ease her concern with a joke. Death cells, but they'd never be able to top those ratings next season. 
She grinned wryly. Gee, thanks. He shrugged. That's what teammates are for. Chapter 16 Standing on an airplane at 13,000 feet somewhere above British Columbia felt wrong on so many different levels. So did being strapped to an instructor named Thor. Millie didn't care how many successful jumps the guy had made. One bad jump would negate the others. Her insides twisted. Her eyes squeezed shut. She had no doubt she was going to die. Her life passed quickly in her mind. Except for teaching her students and being Jace's partner in this race, she had little to show for the past 26 years. Well, anything she wanted to remember. Talk about depressing. Pathetic, really. At least she'd have an exciting cause of death in her otherwise boring obituary. Not to mention her demise being caught on film. How many people could say that? Her father could no longer call her a coward, so there was that, too. Her instructor moved closer to the opening. A cameraman kneeled by the large hole. No way would she call that a door. She wanted to go to Jace, who stood behind them. He didn't love her, but he believed in her. He was proud of her. He wouldn't let anything happen to her. And right now, that had to be enough. And then she peered down. All that blue. And then the ground. So far, far away. Fear lodged in her throat. Are you ready to skydive? Thor asked. The plane's engine and wind made it difficult to hear. I, uh. You're really something. Millie clung to Jace's words like a lifeline. She was doing this as much for him as herself. Thor scooted forward. Her feet dangled from the plane. Before she could say stop or goodbye, they tumbled away hurling into nothingness. Loud, cold, windy. As the air exerted pressure against her body, she screamed, clutching her harness. Seconds later, they seemed to stabilize. Okay, they weren't exactly stable, but Thor appeared to have more control, as if they were flying, not falling. This portion of the free fall wasn't the plummeting to earth, where is her stomach amusement park ride sensation. This was, different. Less scary. More exhilarating. Was this how birds felt when they flew? The air seemed to support her, almost holding her up. It was surreal. She wondered how Jace was doing, but she knew he'd love every minute of the ride to the ground. Something jolted her. The parachute. Suddenly she floated under a canopy on a gentle ride down. She flashed the thumbs-up sign to a cameraman who had jumped at the same time. The descent was amazingly peaceful. She enjoyed seeing the landscape below and gave a cheer when Thor made loops and spins on the peaceful ride to the ground. The landing was softer than she could have imagined, smoother than reaching the bottom of the abseil at Table Mountain in Cape Town. Zack and Ryan were waiting for her. Wow, she said to the camera. That wasn't what I thought it would be like. Ryan and Zack did a mini version of the wave. As soon as she was out of the harness, Millie watched Jace and his instructor make a perfect landing. She ran over to him. How did you do? he asked, taking off his goggles and helmet. She laughed. I'm alive. So you enjoyed it? It wasn't a question. I, yes. You? I wish we could jump again. His smile crinkled the corners of his eyes, and her heart bumped. I loved skydiving. If only he loved her. Feeling a pang in her heart, she removed her goggles and helmet. I know what you mean. I've never felt such a rush. And now that I've done this, I know I can do anything myself. Jay stared at her with a strange look in his eyes. What? she asked. Come on, he said. Let's get the clue. Millie ran to the box, grabbed a pouch, and opened it. Welcome back to Earth. No kidding. After the adrenaline rush, she'd been plopped headfirst into the race. Take the path from the airport, she continued reading. Root flags will mark the direction you are to follow. Hurry. You never know what is waiting for you around the bend. 
Jace frowned. I don't like the sound of that. She stepped out of the jumpsuit and put on her backpack. Maybe the clue riders are tired like us. Maybe. After a half mile of running, Millie came to a bend. This might be it. He glanced backward. I hope so. A team is on our tail, but I don't know if it's black or green. She ran faster, rounding the bend. Fifty yards away, Colt stood on a mat. What was he doing here? Her pulse quickened. This can't be a check-in point, Jace said. Millie had no idea, but that didn't stop her from sprinting to the mat. Jace beat her by three steps. She bent over to catch her breath, and he held on to the top of her back until she stood upright. Jace and Millie, Colt deadpanned. You are team number one. This is an official check-in point? Jace asked. Yes, Colt answered. We said there would be twists to the race. True, but Millie hadn't been expecting this. She exchanged a surprised look with Jace. Okay, they'd regrouped and come in first, but what did that mean for the two teams behind them? And the rest of the race? For finishing first on this leg, your team wins $60,000. Millie covered her mouth with her hands. Jace looked as shocked as she felt. Altogether, they had won $110,000. That was $55,000 each. I don't believe it, she said. Believe it. Jace picked her up and swung her around. After he placed her on the ground, he hugged her. He nuzzled against her neck. His warm breath was like a forbidden caress. Heat pulled deep within her. Being held by him shouldn't feel so good, shouldn't make her want to kiss him so badly. She forced herself not to lean into him. Please wait for the other teams to finish so we can review a few things, Colt said. Eager for distance, Millie stepped out of his embrace. Before she could get too far away, he whispered, looks like another twist. She nodded. Not that it mattered much. The race was almost over. And they'd won more prize money. Except instead of feeling happy and wanting to celebrate, the moment felt bittersweet because once they crossed the finish line, she wouldn't see Jace again. Sweat dampened Jace's hairline. The thought of a game twist tied his stomach in knots. He wanted to freeze everything so the next leg didn't start because once the race was over, he and Millie would no longer be teammates. He wouldn't have a reason to see her. Listen up. Colt stood next to Pete the green team is out. The four of you now have a choice. You can vote to keep your same partner, or you can vote to disband your team and compete alone during the final leg of the race for the million dollars. The final tally affects both teams. What about the money we've won so far? Millie, ever practical, asked. You split whatever you want as a team, Pete answered. One team member will keep the original film crew. A new crew will be assigned to the other. Bummer, Derek said. One more rule, if you split, there can be no alliances, Pete added. You must work on your own, or you will be disqualified. The grand prize can only be won by one contestant. More for me, Derek said. Matt winced. Colt handed each of them paper and a pen. Right split if you want to disband your team and compete separately. Right team if you want to stay together until the end. Majority vote wins. Millie scribbled on her paper. So did Derek and Matt. Chase stared at the blank page in his hand. He hesitated. Yes, he'd planned a race alone, but then things changed. They'd vowed to win together. But together meant more than this race. Much more than teammates. And that, scared him. Suddenly this decision wasn't about the race. It was about everything else. Jace had spent most of his life taking care of his family. He'd been the protector and the provider. With Millie, it was different. She was his equal. She'd conquered her final fear and jumped out of an airplane. She was the most amazing woman he'd ever known. He could end up hurting her, but she could just as easily hurt him. I deserve more than that. I deserve a man who isn't afraid to go after what he wants in life. 
or me. He feared she would never see him as that man. A man who loved her. A man who would be worthy of her. What if she left him, the way his father had left him, his sisters, and mother? Millie said she was eager for the race to be over. Did that mean she'd abandoned all thoughts of a future with him? What did she want? I know I can do anything myself. Millie didn't need him. She could take care of herself better than he could take care of her. Jace saw that now. And so had she. That left him one choice. He wrote a word and passed the paper to Colt. Colt read the first slip. Split so. Derek smiled. Colt opened the second one. Split. That's two votes for splitting the teams. What if it's a tie? Millie asked. Let's see what this third paper says first. Colt unfolded it. Team. She smiled confidently at Jace. As his heart lodged in his throat, he tried to keep himself from showing any emotion, but his insides twisted and turned. And the final vote is for Colt held the paper in his hand for a long moment. Split. Derek and Matt pumped their fists and shouted. Millie's shoulders drooped. Her eyes glistened, and she blinked. You said we would finish together. I'm sorry. Sorry, she asked. Sorry doesn't cut it. We were supposed to be teammates. We are teammates. You mean, we were. His act of self-preservation had exploded in his face. I thought you wanted, Jace had been caught up in his own head. He'd been too afraid. I wasn't thinking straight. I knew you were only interested in winning. Her nostrils flared. I just didn't know it meant everything to you. No. She had it wrong. He had to fix this. Millie, please. Save it, Jace. Her harsh voice slashed into him. You're the last man on earth I want to talk to right now. Upset, Millie didn't touch the barbecue dinner. She toyed with her napkin on her lap. You need to eat, Freckles, Jace said, motioning to her full plate. Her stomach lurched. She could barely look at him, let alone eat. Teammates, he'd said, and she had believed him. She was a fool. You're not my teammate, so don't worry whether I eat. She rubbed her forehead. I can't think about food. Not with the game twist. Don't think, he urged. Just run your race. Is that what you plan to do? He nodded. Derek and Matt won't lose any sleep over this game twist. Millie didn't care about the black team, the former black team. Even though she shouldn't, she cared about Jace. How about you? I would rather we finish together, but that won't happen now. Because of your vote, she said bitterly. About that, Freckles. His lips narrowed into a thin line. I made a mistake. Your second one. Or are we up to three now? That's not fair. Fair? Her blood pressure spiraled. Her voice was heated. Nothing about this situation has been fair. Teammates, remember? You said we'd finish together. I believed you. I trusted you. He stared at his plate of food. I said I was sorry. That's not good enough. And it wasn't. She deserved better from him. How many times will you let me down in front of the camera, Jace? Never again. Those are just words. Her eyes prickled. She couldn't put herself through this any longer. After everything that's happened, how can I trust you again? Chapter 17 Weeks ago in San Francisco, Millie had started the race on her own. She would end it on her own, wherever the finish line turned out to be. Not that she was truly on her own. Her new film crew, she'd dubbed them Bert and Ernie, joined her on the flight to Seattle. The two men followed her to Pike's Market, where she tossed fish as the sun came up and to the famous coffee franchise, where she prepared drinks for the early morning rush of customers. They rode with her on a helicopter ride to the Mount St. Helens Recreation Area, she closed her eyes for over half the trip, maybe more 
and now they sat in the car as she drove around the volcanic crater. The rules prevented Bert and Ernie from helping her, of course, but Millie didn't need their assistance. Or Jace's. As the car vibrated on the road, she gripped the steering wheel tighter. She didn't need Mr. Just Run Your Race to read the map, to pillow her head against his strong shoulder, or to wink at her when the going got tough. Nor to encourage her with a warm smile or quiet praise. No, she didn't need Jace Westfall. But, oh, how she missed him. For now, at least. On the bright side, he could never let her down again. At the trailhead, Millie parked the car, turned off the ignition, and reread the clue aloud for the sake of the camera. On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted. A powerful explosion decimated hundreds of square miles of lush, beautiful landscape. Hike the Boundary Trail, from Norway Pass, to the Johnston Ridge Observatory. The winner will be the first to cross the finish line on the lower observatory deck. Good luck! One other car was in the parking lot for the trailhead. Second place. Her heart tripped faster. She still had a chance to win. On her own. She could show her students what a person could achieve when they set their mind to something. She could show her father how wrong he'd been about her all these years. Winning, however, would be a hollow victory. All the prize money in the world wouldn't buy her the one thing she had longed for her entire life, unconditional love. But it was time to forget that and focus. Millie put on a blue day pack. Inside were water bottles, a blue hat, sunscreen, her memento, the report card from the students, and the tin flower Jace had given her in Cape Town. She hurried to the trailhead. The uphill climb wasn't too hard and provided beautiful views. The new growth pine trees, shrubs, and colorful flowers surprised her. She'd expected to see a moonlike landscape, but didn't dare stop and enjoy the scenery. The hike appeared to be over ten miles long. The key to this final challenge was pacing herself. Along the way, she pointed out a scurrying chipmunk to the camera. Steam rose from the crater only a few miles away. Sun-bleached down trees and stumps dotted the hillside, new pine trees sprouting up among them. Bert and Ernie seemed to be dragging. She sure missed Zack and Ryan. But not nearly as much as she missed. No, she wouldn't go there again. It didn't matter if she missed Jace. He didn't want her, and she was stronger than that. Deserved more than that. Even if she had to suffer the heartbreak of it all, she would survive, overcome, and find what she wanted. Someday. Millie saw Spirit Lake. One end was full of logs. Similar dead trees littered the mountainside, as if a child had tossed a can of pickup sticks everywhere. Large or small, the trees hadn't stood a chance against the powerful force of the eruption. The trail followed the geography of the land, rising and falling. Mountain peaks appeared in the distance. Wooden signs marked the boundary trail and pointed to other paths, such as the lake trail and the way back to Norway Pass, and kept her headed in the right direction. As she traveled farther, the vegetation became sparse. She noticed more down trees. Grayer dirt. A sense of desolation. The vast wasteland of volcanic destruction was more of what she expected. Each step sent a small cloud of ash soil mixture into the air. Put one foot in front of the other and stay away from the edge. Somewhere at the end of the trail lay Johnston Ridge Observatory and the finish line. The end. She was so close to reaching her goal. The hot July sun beat down. Millie's thighs burned. Her lungs protested. Her heart ached. Because of exertion. Not Jace. Stop thinking about him. They were no longer a team. They probably never had been one, but that didn't change the way she felt about him. Her overused muscles, her sore back, would all heal. But her heart. She wasn't sure how long that would take given the organ felt like the grey barren landscape surrounding her. Jace had told her he wanted to be friends. He'd told her he wanted to be teammates. And then he'd dumped her duped her. Again. 
he'd chosen the chance to compete and win on his own rather than risk sharing the prize with her. He'd put his responsibility to his company and his family first. Millie understood that. But for once in her life, she longed for someone to choose her. To share her dreams. To put her first. Jace hadn't. And he wouldn't. The realization was a fresh cut to her wounded heart. But this wasn't the worst thing that could happen to her. She wouldn't always feel this way. As parts of the once decimated landscape she'd passed through on the trail showed signs of new life and growth, healing, so would she. Millie glanced back. Only Bernie, the sound guy, was there. No sign of another racer. Still, she picked up the pace. She needed to pass whoever was in front of her. Her right foot slid on the dirt. Small rocks tumbled over the side. The trail wasn't narrow, but the path bordered a steep drop-off. More like a cliff. Panic ricocheted through her. She reached for something to hold on to and grazed her palm on a large rock, but she righted herself. Didn't stumble. Millie clenched her hand tight and breathed deeply, trying to calm her rapid pulse. She needed to clear her mind. She would have time, the rest of her life, to analyze the fiasco with Jace after she reached the finish line. Right now, she needed to race. Raising her chin, she glimpsed puffs of ash hanging in the air. Another racer was ahead of her. A runner in black and his crew. Matt, tearing up the trail. She was so tired, hot, and sore. You can do it, freckles, she imagined Jace saying. You're fast. Don't give up. She wanted him out of her head and out of her life, but his encouraging words helped. Millie pushed harder, quickening her steps. Soon she could taste the dirt and ash floating in the air from Matt and his crew. That provided her the boost she needed. Just a little farther. Faster. Ahead of her, Matt stumbled, his running shoes scraping on gravel. Her heart caught in hope. And then in fear. He flung out his arms, fighting for balance. Dirt and ash and pebbles flew into the air. He grunted. His feet slid over the edge. She cried out, reaching toward him, but he was too far away. Rocks slid and crashed into each other. And then he disappeared. Adrenaline shot through her veins. She sprinted to his camera crew. Where is he? His new camera guy panned the cliff. I'm looking for him. Matt, she yelled. Matt? Where are you? No answer. Sweating, she leaned over the edge, hugging the trail. He couldn't have fallen too far away. She followed the skid marks down the ravine. Matt lay against a rock on a steep incline. A nasty gash bled on his forehead. We've got to get down to him. Matt's audio guy waved his cell phone. I'll call for help. And in the meantime, do the rest of you just plan to stand around and wait, she asked. If only she had Zach and Ryan with her. They would help. Ernie shrugged. The race is still going, Millie. You're in first place. First place. That was what she'd wanted, to win the race. It was what she'd set out to do for the students at her school. All she had to do was continue up the path, step on the mat, and collect her check. And she'd do that knowing Matt was alone and injured. What if he didn't wake up? What if he woke up and moved the wrong way? He could fall farther down the steep slope. A groan sounded. Matt, she called out. Down here. There was no other choice to make. I'm coming down. No, Millie. Matt yelled. The race. You could pass out again. I won't. His voice sounded weak. Run, Millie. Win. She glanced at the trail, at her dream waiting for her at the finish line. But that wasn't her dream, her goal, any longer. Winning wouldn't change who she was. Running the race had done that. I already won. But your plans. Your kids. I've come far since San Francisco. 
Cautiously, Millie stepped off the trail, grasping at rocks and fallen trees, to slow her descent. I'll raise the money another way. My students will understand I had to make the right choice. The only choice she could make and still live with herself. As she scrambled down the steep incline, her boots slid on the rocks and slippery soil, but she made it to Matt. Hey. The corners of his mouth curved. I knew you had a thing for me, sweet Millie. Otherwise, why would you give up your chance at a million dollars? What can I say? She surveyed him from head to toe, to assess his injuries. I'm a sucker for a pretty face. Me, too. He blinked. That's why I like you. He had cuts on his cheeks, forehead, and arms. No bones protruded, but Millie couldn't tell if he'd broken anything. What hurts? My head. I really blew it. Don't worry about the race. She studied him again. Does anything else hurt? Nope. He straightened. Help me up. Millie's first aid training kicked in. So did common sense. Are you sure that's a good idea? Nothing's broken. Probably a concussion. Matt blinked. I'm a paramedic, remember? I remember. His brown eyes pleaded with her. I gotta finish the race. I know. She placed her arm around him and helped him up. He weighed more than she imagined. All that muscle, no doubt. He stood for a moment before sitting, pulling her down with him. Matt? His eyelids closed. Give me a minute. Open your eyes. She used her harshest I will send you to the principal's office tone. Now. He opened them. Thank goodness. But now what? Millie couldn't get him out of here, by herself. She yelled to Matt's camera crew. Bert and Ernie were there, too. The four argued. Hey, she yelled. Can you give us a hand down here? The men paused. Shuffled. Helps on the way, one of them shouted, finally. Millie smiled at Matt, trying to hide her irritation for his sake. Hear that? Help is coming. I don't need help, he said softly. I have you. She appreciated his confidence in her, but what she wouldn't give for someone big and strong to come down the side of the hill before Matt lost consciousness again. Yo, dudes. Derek yelled. What are you doing down there? Making out? She glanced up to see Derek and now three film crews peering down from the trail. Matt fell. Help us up. Help you. Please, Derek. He shook his head slowly. No can do, Millie babe. But, Matt's your friend. He was my teammate, Derek said, taking a step back. He hasn't been my friend in years. But I'm glad he's yours because that just earned me a million bucks even with this bum knee. I fell, too, and no one helped me. Sorry, Millie, Matt whispered, his voice raw. Don't be sorry, she said. I'm right where I should be. Winning a million dollars would have helped the students at her school, but she had to live with the choices she made during the race. There was always, plan B. As for her father, well. Pleasing him might never happen, and that was finally okay. She'd done her best. That was all she could do. Millie defined success differently, and if he couldn't accept her as she was, so be it. She was proud of what she was doing with her life, what she'd accomplished so far. She wouldn't let him make her feel bad about herself again. More steam poured from Mount St. Helens. She sat next to Matt. I don't think I can pull you up myself. He grimaced. I've got to keep going, Millie. With a concussion? I won't run. But I need to get up this cliff. If they haul me out of here, I'm disqualified. The race isn't as important as your health. It is to me. I've come this far. I need to finish. His eyes met hers with a determination equaling her own. Help me. She drew a deep breath. She wanted to, but... Millie. Jace's voice, sharp with fear, 
carried down the side of the mountain. Are you all right? Relief flooded her. She stood, craning her neck, to look up the cliff. Jace leaned over the edge, staring at her with intense, dark eyes. I'm fine. What are you doing down there, he asked. Matt fell, she explained. He hit his head. Is he okay? Yes, she answered. His camera crew called for help. But. What? He wants to finish the race. I can't get him back to the trail by myself. Where's Derek? Jace asked. She sighed. All Jace cared about was the race. No reason to be disappointed. He had his priorities, and she had hers. They didn't match. Still, she felt like one of the broken, battered sunbleached trees had hit her stomach. He's got about a two-minute lead on you, but don't forget his bum knee, Millie called up, proud of the steadiness of her voice. You can catch him and win. Run, Jace. She looked at the dirt. It's what you're good at, anyway. With that, she sat, her heart aching more than she thought possible. Matt regarded her with deep, sympathetic eyes. You okay? No. She forced a smile anyway. Yes, we just need to figure out how to get you up to the trail. Chapter 18 You can catch him and win. The words reverberated in Jace's head. He wanted to win. Derek was injured. All Jace had to do was run. Millie was fine. Matt was okay, or he would be once help arrived. Jace had no reason to stay. She'd sacrificed her chance to help Matt. The realization sat in Jace's stomach like lead, weighing his feet to the ground. He glared at the production crew standing around filming. Why aren't you getting them out of there? Matt's hurt. And Millie, who deserved to win, was stuck with him. But she would have been down there no matter who had fallen. A fellow racer, a crew member, a total stranger. That was who she was and what she did. Hey, I called for help, Matt's audio guy said. Zack shouldered his camera. It's the show, Jace. We all have our jobs to do. Yours is to run. Run, Jace. Millie's soft voice haunted him. It's what you're good at anyway. He couldn't move if he tried. She was right. He'd always run away. Until she came into his life. She hadn't let him run. She'd challenged him. She'd demanded the best from him, and he'd given it to her. Or had. Until fear got in the way. More than once. Not surprising. He'd been running since he was eight, ever since his father left. Millie gave him a reason to stand still. To stop reaching for what came next and finally live. Jace couldn't change the past, but he wasn't about to make the same mistake. Everything he knew about her, everything they had experienced as teammates, showed him they belonged together. She might not think so, but he would take that chance. He couldn't leave her again. Not even for a million dollars. Another burst of steam spewed from the crater. You up for another try? Millie asked Matt. If you are. His voice sounded forced. I don't want you to hurt yourself. I'll be fine. And she would be. She'd taken chances. She'd risked her heart. And even though the ending hadn't turned out as she'd hoped, Millie would do it again. Not tomorrow. Not anytime soon. But someday. Rocks tumbled down the slope. Had help arrived? She turned. With a determined expression, Jace slid toward them. Ash covered his blue clothes. Her heart, her poor, foolish heart, leaped. What are you doing? His gaze held hers. I'm not leaving my teammate. Her breath caught. But, the race. He shrugged. She'd wanted to believe. She'd wanted to hope. Now, she did. Her insides tingled. He hadn't let her down. Helping Matt had been more important than the money. Thanks, dude, Matt said. That's some cut. Jace knelt next to Matt. 
but you'll have to come up with something better the next time you want to be alone with Millie. Funny guy. Matt grimaced. I'd laugh, but it would hurt too much. Come on, Freckles. Jace winked. Let's help this bad boy out of here. Jace. Her voice cracked. What? Emotion threatened to overwhelm her. Thank you. Together, she and Jace struggled to bring Matt up the steep incline. Zack and Ryan finally put down their equipment and helped. Between the four of them, they could get Matt on the trail. The emergency response team will be here soon, Matt's camera guy said. He needs to finish the race first, Millie explained. Jay shot her a questioning glance. You go, she said, full of love for him, wanting Jace to win. We'll be fine. He shook his head. I'm not leaving you again. This time, she believed him. Come on. He put a supporting arm around Matt. Let's get this show on the road. They hiked up the trail with two camera crews ahead of them and another, Zack and Ryan, behind them. It was a long, slow, and tiring trek, but Millie wouldn't have had it any other way. She glanced at the dome building up on the volcano. Suddenly, pieces broke off and tumbled down. Look at that. Amazing, Jace said. She nodded. Everything about this race has been amazing. They reached the Johnston Ridge Observatory that was built into the side of a mountain. People milled about on the first of two viewing decks. A third was below them. The familiar-looking cache around the globe banner fluttered in the breeze. Excitement lifted her fatigue. There's the finish line. Jace removed his arm from Matt's shoulders. Can you make it the rest of the way? Yeah. I want to finish on my own two feet, Matt said. You two go ahead. Are you sure, Matt? She asked anxiously. Positive. His eyes met Jace's in masculine understanding. Go, man. Run. I'm not running anymore. As Jace clasped his hand to hers, Millie's heart pounded. Can you guys give us a minute? Matt smiled with wry resignation. You're determined to win the real prize, aren't you? Yes, Jace said. Right. Well, I'm out of here. He limped away, followed by his camera crew. Go on, Jace said to the remaining film crews. Show's over. Are you kidding? Ryan asked. No way, man, Zack said. This is through the roof rating stuff. Why not? Jace muttered. The crew grinned. Millie stared at him. I can't thank you enough. I know what you gave up to help Matt. I didn't stop for him, Jace said. I stopped for you. Me? He tapped the tip of her nose. Yes, you, Freckles. Millie wanted to hope, she wanted to believe things could be different between them. Then why did you vote to race alone? Someone I know once told me I was afraid, but I didn't believe her, he explained. Turns out, she was right. I realized I needed to be brave like her and stop running away. What changed? You. He caressed her face. You're a special woman, Millie Kincaid. She forced herself to breathe. Special like a teammate or friend. Neither. Millie didn't want to read more into what he was saying. What were you thinking, then? You want me to spell it out? She tilted her chin. Yes. I deserve transparency and truth. Okay. He laughed. You're strong, gutsy, smart. I've met no one nicer, more nurturing, or generous. You care about everyone. You act so serious sometimes, yet you can be as playful as a kitten. At times, you might be shy, but confidence radiates from you. Her heart overflowed with joy. Do you want me to go on? He asked. That's enough. For now. There is something else I want to say. What? You taught me to stop chasing the material prize. To forget about the appearance of success and want the real thing. He took her hand. You are the real thing. And, I love you. The air whooshed from her lungs. I love you, Millie Kincaid. He kissed the top of her hand. 
I fell in love with you during the groom, but I was too scared to realize it. I've spent my entire life taking care of people. Then you come along. I thought I'd need to take care of you, too, but I was wrong. You can take care of yourself just fine. That's because you taught me to believe in myself. It was her turn. All those things we did during the race. Having you there to cheer me on helped me overcome my fears, gain confidence, and trust again. He brushed his lips across hers. You made me realize I've been taking care of everybody because I wanted to be needed. But really, all I needed was to be loved. Jace looked at her with a self-deprecating smile. Now I know what it feels like to risk rejection on national television. What are you talking about? He let go of her hand and went down on one knee. She gasped. I'm not proposing yet. But I'm on my knee begging you to give me another chance. His voice sounded heartfelt, full of sincerity. I messed up. You, me, the entire world when the show airs will see how many mistakes I've made. But I believe in you and me. In us. You're a keeper, Millie Kincaid. I want you to be my girlfriend. We can get to know each other and go on more adventures or just be homebodies. Whatever we decide, we do it without the camera rolling. Her joy overflowed. She would take another chance. I like the sound of that. Good, because I want nothing more than to find myself back in this position at a later date. So would she, except. One step at a time. I agree. Millie held out her hand to him. We have a race to finish. He clasped his with hers and stood. Together. Together. One thing first. He kissed her long and hard. She hoped he always kissed her with such hunger and passion. She heard clapping and pulled away. That must be our cue. Ready, Freckles? Millie nodded. Zack moved closer to them, but she didn't care. What she had with Jace was real. Being on camera wouldn't change that. Nothing could. Jace laced his fingers with hers. Together, with Zack and Ryan, they walked to the observatory platform. Colt and the other racers, minus the pink team, stood on either side of the finish mat. Jace and Millie jumped on the mat at the same time. Millie and Jace, Colt said. You are third. Who cares what place we finished? Jace laughed before raising their joined hands and kissing Millie's. We won the best prize of all. Colt stared at them with a puzzled expression. What prize is that? Leaning into Jace, soaking up his warmth and strength, Millie grinned. Each other. Epilogue. A year later. Once upon a time, Jace Westfall had been the last man on earth that Millie wanted to see or talk to again, but she'd been wrong. He was the only man she needed. The only man she could picture herself spending the rest of her life with. The only man she loved. And he was the groom, her groom, in every sense of the word. A few months ago, on a spring day at a park in her hometown, Jace had dropped to one knee as he had done on Mount St. Helens. This time, however, he'd spoken the words she dreamed of hearing. Marry me, Millie. You're not only a keeper, you're also the love of my life. Please say you'll be my wife and make me the happiest guy in the universe. The same elation when she'd said yes surged through her now. On their wedding day. She and Jace were tying the knot today. Millie fought the urge to squeal. Instead, she giggled with delight. A breeze toyed with the ends of her hair. Waves rolled gently to shore. She inhaled the sea air, waiting for the queue to walk toward the arch, covered with beautiful flowers, where Jace, wearing white pants and a white shirt, stood with the officiant. His outfit matched Millie's simple white dress. Neither of them wore shoes. Her toes sunk into the warm sand on Maha Island. They'd agreed to marry and honeymoon in Seychelles, a destination wedding with no guests. They planned on having a reception later, but today was just for them. Despite an offer by Pete and the network to film the wedding, she and Jace wanted an intimate ceremony with as few people here as possible. They'd hired a photographer. 
Fans from around the globe had cheered watching her and Jace fall in love during the race and later congratulated them on their engagement. They'd received so much support from people they decided to share at least a part of their wedding day with them. Select photos would be sold to a magazine for an obscene amount. Millie preferred to think of the payment as a donation to her former school and the new one where she would teach in the fall. Yes, she was moving to Pennsylvania. Several clients had signed on at Jace's company and his business was now on solid ground. His mother continued to work for him, but his sisters had found other jobs, enabling him to hire more experienced employees that had helped turn things around and gave him more free time to spend with Millie. She loved his mom and sisters and enjoyed the family dinners and gatherings with them. Despite Jace's business success, he'd offered to move to Oregon. Millie, however, was too practical to have him do that when his family lived in Pennsylvania. She was no longer in contact with her father after he called her out for her actions, especially for giving Jace on the show so the decision had been easier for her to make. She explained to Jace how she could teach in Philadelphia, but if city living didn't appeal to her, maybe they could find a quieter suburb or town to live. He'd contacted a real estate agent who would help them find the perfect location where they could buy a house with a large yard for their future chocolate lab named Hershey. A harp played the opening strains of the processional song. Anticipation raced through her. She repositioned her hands on her bouquet, a half dozen gorgeous blossoms and the tin flower he'd given her during the race, loosely tied together with a ribbon. That was her cue. Millie walked toward her groom, wondering if her feet touched the sand. She was happy he hadn't proposed during the show. They'd needed the past twelve months to be sure of each other and their future. And she was. She had zero doubts about Jace or marrying him. As she came close, his smile spread, lighting up his face more. Beautiful. Millie fought the urge to throw herself in his arms. So are you. He held out his hand. Ready? Am I ever? She laced her fingers with his. I love you. I love you. Affection flowed from his gaze. And I can't wait to see what our future holds for us. Me, too. She squeezed his hand. Let's say, I do, so this dream, come true, can keep going. Thank you for listening to The Groom. A Keeper at Heart Romance. Book 1. Written by Melissa McClone. Text copyright 2020 by Melissa McClone. Production copyright 2023 by Melissa McClone.